Welcome, my name is Chris Sakura, and I'm going to step you through exercise one in Inventor 2023. In this release, there are um, some significant improvements that I could see um, as far as the interface looks a little bit cleaner and such. Um, what we're going to build today, our goal is what you see up on the screen, this part. And I do this for all my exercise one lessons for all the different systems I use. Um, so we're going to take a look at how that's built and basically what you can see here we have a couple blocks that are built as well as um, let me turn off the ray tracing here we're going to shell out the part and we're going to put some chamfers on that's the green area here those are angles we're going to put some fillets on and that will be about it then we'll take a look at the labs so let's get started first go up to new and you can select standard eye part. Now, since I'm in the United States, I'm using the, the US template here. There is metric though, if you wanted to use metric. I'm using um, ANSI, uh, basically uh, the inch standard. So I should say Imperial. So go ahead and hit create. Now on the left here, we have the model browser. They just call it the model tree, I guess now. But if you hit the little plus symbol next to origin, you'll see that there's YZ, which is the right plane, XZ, which is the top, and XY, which is the front. That's the plane we're going to sketch on. So if you go this method, you can select it, and right here we could click on Start a Sketch. Otherwise, you could go up here as well. You'll notice there's 2D and 3D sketches. We're not going to do any 3D sketches in this particular lesson. That's great for piping, tubing, and uh, structural steel, but uh, for what we're building, we don't need that. We're going to actually make 2D sketches and base our models off of that. So if I were to select this 2D sketch, it starts to sketch automatically on the front plane because I have that selected. So now here you can see our, under the sketch tools, we have an array of different lines, circles, arcs, rectangles, and such. We're going we're gonna to stay easy today and uh, go with rectangle. Go ahead and select rectangle. Now move your pointer to the center point of the screen here, and you'll see you get the little green dot. Now you may actually have different colors than I do, and I'm going to go into that in just about two seconds. First, let's build this first rectangle. So you click when you get the green dot. If yours is a different color, that's okay. Just make sure you get the dot. And now drag it to the upper right corner, and then it gives you these dialog boxes for width and height. Notice the 0.57 on mine. That's actually the width. We, we want that to be three inches, so type in three. Oops, accidentally hit two. I'm gonna backspace. Now hit the tab key on your keyboard to move on to the height. And you'll see it automatically spread out the width. And now we can type in our height, which is only five inches. Hit enter. And to center it, just hit front on this block here. And now it centers it and fits it at the same time. Now, before we go any further, I, I promised you we're going to take a look at the options and how to set up your screen to make it look, if you want to make it look like mine or, or customize it for yourself. Go up to File and go to the Options menu. Now, unfortunately, because uh, it's a little bit, I'm, a, I'm on a 4K screen and the scaling is a little bit different on my on mine here. I'm trying to record at 1080. It's a little bit large but as you can see here there's this is the heart of inventor if you want to change virtually anything this is where you're going to find it for right now we're just going to focus on changing the screen colors and such but if you go to colors here you can see i have mine set to presentation and the theme is light um, by default i believe they go with millennium you'll see there's high contrast actually it might not be millennium i can't remember what the default was now but i i like to go with presentation simply because I am presenting and it's just easier to see on the screen for some of my students. Now once you select that there are some additional options down below. You can have it set to one color, gradient, background, and there you can see the preview which is really nice of uh, whatever one you want. Uh, you could even put a background image in there but let's just go I'm gonna go with one color this is purely up to you if you want to use that or not. Now, there are these uh, enabled pre-highlights and enabled enhanced highlights. I'm going to go ahead and select those. Usually, if you have a pretty good graphics card, that's what you go with. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to try and remember to show you. I just got the new Radeon Pro. As you can 
can see here, it's the W6400. It just came out, and I think I got it for 250 bucks. And it's a professional graphics card. It's great for CAD. You don't need it for Inventor, but um, I like having professional graphics cards. It only has four gigabytes of RAM. It's okay for gaming, not, not, not great for gaming. You wouldn't really want it for gaming. It's really for CAD, for professional use. But anyway, let's uh, now go over to display. And under appearances here, you, you could use the document setting or use the application setting. So let's say we go with the use application setting and you go to the settings here. Some of the things that I like to do is to get a highlighted edge. So for example, model edges, you can have one color. I prefer them to be in black. You might not want that color. You could change it right here. You just click on it, but that's what I'm going with. And then you'll see the visual style. What would you like to see it in by default? And there's realistic shading, shaded. What I had up earlier was, I believe, realistic shading. But notice that there's all these other options here. Shaded with edges is probably the preferred method. You could turn on ground shadows, object shadows, ambient shadows. I do like having those on. Again, if you have a good graphics card, definitely well worth it. You could go with the projection of um, orthographic or perspective. Ground reflections, ground plane. I don't really like the ground plane all that much, but it's not bad. And enable ray tracing. There's all these fun things you could set up in here and just have fun with it. Go ahead and hit OK, but try not to set too many today just because it might look completely different than mine by the time you're done if you change it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply. That's all I wanted to show you there, but be aware we will take a look at that in more detail in the future. Now getting back to our model. Let's go ahead and we're going to now go to 3D model. See this preview here we have? Let's go to 3D model and go to extrude. Now I'm going to go ahead and go up here to this home button because by default it always brings me to that front view orientation and I bet you there's a setting somewhere I could adjust that with, but I'm not going to go looking for it right now. But as you can see here, we're at one inch thick. You have the ability to grab these arrowheads and drag them for conceptualization purposes but I'm going to bring it to 5, 0.5. You could type in the explicit value as well, 0.5. You don't have to type in the double the zeros afterwards. If, it's, if you know they're zeros, just type in 0.5. It's a lot easier. Okay, and then over here, there's some additional options. Uh, sometimes this is truncated up here, but if you click on it, you could see these options. Hit OK. Now we want to go ahead and sketch on this surface. Go ahead and select that face. Now, notice when you select a face, you get some options. You could edit that extrude that we just created. So that would be like, let's say we wanted it one and a half inches versus 0.5. You could click on that and edit that. You could edit the original sketch, the three by five, and change those numbers. You could uh, share the sketch. Basically, it's kind of like a copy. And then create sketch. We're gonna go to create sketch. See the little green plus symbol? Select that. Now, I'm gonna center it again, and I'm gonna to proceed to go to rectangle and highlight this lower left corner. When I get the dot to turn green, I click. And when I say clicking, I'm clicking with my left mouse button 90% of the time. I will always be sure to say I'm right clicking when I use that mouse button. I'll usually say it twice, just to, so you know. But when I say click, I'm generally referring to just clicking on the left mouse button. Okay, so I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna drag this over to the right. Now you can see it's locking in at three inches. I could actually, um, stick with that. I could click on the edge, but then I lose the ability to add the dimension for the height. But let's go ahead and do that. When you click on the edge, it creates a relationship to the right side. So both will expand. If you, we change that three inch dimension on the, the lower part, both of these will expand. You can break that just by typing in a dimension for the three inch for the second entity. But let's go up to the dimension tool here. And now click on these points of this rectangle because we want to dimension the height. Drag it to the right and click to center that dimension and type in 1.5. And remember, you don't have to type in 1.500. Okay, hit the green check and it should adjust. We could have dragged that even up further and found the midpoint if that's what we wanted, but we didn't want that. Let's go ahead and hit finish sketch or you could go directly to 3D model and extrude again. Now we see the preview update. Sometimes you have to click on the face that you want to extrude. In this case, there wasn't anything else to extrude other than this. And again, we want it at 0.5, so that's a good distance. Hit okay. 
let's go ahead and add a hole. Now there is the hole tool, which is really nice. It has counter sinks, counter bores, all that fun stuff. But we just want a basic hole, and I'm still teaching you the basics on how to add and remove material. So with this hole, we'll actually do it the manual way, which is still pretty easy. Select this face, and again, we'll go to Create Sketch. Now notice I'm not using the planes. You don't need to use the planes if you have flat surfaces to select. Go to Create, click on Front, go to Circle, and click right over here and drag out a circle and make it 0.75 for the diameter. Let's go to Dimension, select the center point to the top edge, click on the left, make that one, and then click on the center point and click on the left edge, drag it up, click, and that will be one inch. And I'm just hitting enter after I enter the value. And now to scroll up on that, I'm using the wheel. And I can focus where I want to scroll to with the wheel. So if I wanted to scroll on that one inch dimension, I just keep scrolling towards it. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to front. And now we're ready to extrude that. So if we hit Finish Sketch, the nice thing about that is it kicks you into an isometric view. And then you could go ahead and go to Extrude. Now, with the Extrude, not only does it add material, but it has the option to remove material. So take a look here. You could either flip it or go to Cut. And it's, it has a little bit of AI built into it. So watch when I go to Cut. See, right now it's pulling forward. Go to Cut and it knows to reverse it. Now, I've seen it before where it gets a little confused if it's a, little, if it's a complex part. So just be aware, sometimes you might have to make sure you select, flip, and cut. But let's go ahead and one other thing. There's something called design intent. And with parametric modelers like Inventor, SolidWorks, Creo, they all are kind of the same. You want to um, be sure that you make the model to where it's easy to be edited for the next person or even yourself later on. And there's certain, they're not rules, but they just are helpful hints. So for example here, we see that this is going 0.5 deep, which is the thickness of the model currently, but maybe there might be a change that comes down and change always occurs in engineering and design. They're always making changes. They're thickening things, thinning them out, uh, what if this changes to 0.75 for the thickness later on? Someone changes it to make it more durable. That 0.5 depth is no longer valid. It's not going to go through anymore. So if you want it to be through all, go over here and find the through all button. That will ensure, just by selecting it, even though it doesn't look any different right now, that will ensure that that will always be a through hole. So go ahead and hit OK. So that's a little lesson on design intent. I usually tell students, don't think too much about it early on, but I want to just start planting seeds. And that's going to make you a better modeler later on down the road. But don't, like just for right now, model the way, the way you know as quickly as you can, and then build up those skills. <clears throat> All right, let's now, uh, we're going to use the fill tool. Now there's the fill tool up here. You could hit the F key, or you could literally click on an edge, and the fillet tool comes up automatically. So you could select this edge and you could hold mul control for multiple edges. Oops, I'm sorry. Not, um, shift, not control. Okay, now go ahead and hit create fillet here or you could hit the one up top. And you can see it's at 0.125 currently. Try and push that arrow in and you can manually adjust this again for conceptual work. Let's go ahead and type in a value though. Just type in one hit enter. One inch radius on both of those. Don't, don't add any on the other sides. We have other plans for that. Now, we have the chamfer tool. Now, for a chamfer, basically, that's an angle. So it's a little different than a radius. A lot different, actually. Now, we could click on that, or we could use the quick launch tools, just like we saw earlier. So we could click on this edge here, and hold shift, and click on this edge and then go to Chamfer. And 0.125 is what we want. Notice there's three options here, distance to distance, distance to angle, and two distances. So if we're on a 90 degree edge, uh, 
and we have them equal, it's going to automatically come out to 45 degrees. So we're just going to go distance, to, and that's what we want, distance of 0.125 of equal. Go ahead and hit OK. And so very quickly, we're putting together a very neat looking part here. Now, let's see how to rotate. Hold the shift key down and your middle wheel. The middle wheel, remember, was for zoom. But if you push it down like it's a button and hold it while you're holding shift, watch what happens. You could rotate, or the, it says pivot right there. And that's dynamic rotation. You can use this as well, the um, rotation cube. You could click on different facets of it to get different orientations and views. You could click on the home button, it brings you to isometric. Let's go ahead and rotate that a little bit. Have a little fun with it. Take a minute, pause the video if you like, and just see how it rotates. Take a look at some of these tools, like there's pan, there's uh, zoom all, zoom free orbit, things like that. Take her around. Okay, hopefully you had a little fun there. Let's go ahead and we're gonna shell this out now. So to shell, you could pre-select holding shift the faces that you want to remove or just go to the shell command and just proceed to select the faces you don't want. And you see it opens up. It has the best preview of the business as far as I'm concerned. I love their preview here. Uh, and we're gonna keep it at point one thick. Go ahead and hit OK. Now let's go back home, up there, and let's go ahead and let's prepare this for some rendering. Let's have a little fun with some colors and such. Now let's say we wanted to change the colors of the, cha the chamfer. Go ahead and find the chamfer. You could select the faces individually on the actual part, or you could select it from the model tree over here. Now look at this, you have materials, if you go to default here, they have a wonderful selection of materials. So for example, um, I'm going to go with gold in this case. Or actually there's gold metal, which is even better. There we go. And you can see it gives us this nice looking sheen. And if you're not getting that, I'm going to show you how to get it in just a second. Now, let's say I want the whole part to be changed. Go up to the top of where it says part two. And let's go over here and find something. And you could use you can put anything you like on here. I'm going to go with, let's see, usually like a, a chrome is really nice. Let's find chrome polished. Look at that, they have chrome polished blue. Oh, I'll try that one. Oh, it's a little interesting. And there's copper. Again, have some fun. I'm going to go with just chrome. All right. Now, so you've seen how you could actually apply different colors and such. Let's just do the whole by itself, select the whole, and let's say we want that to be, um, I'm going to go with the polished black. Let's see what that does. That's uh, just a darker chrome. Let's go with this blue here. Oh, uh, Control Z will undo that if you get the wrong color. Make sure you select that face, so Control Z. Or there is undo that's up here, by the way. And there's redo, too. One more time. Uh, let's go with copper. There we go. All right, so now let's even take it a little bit further. If you go to view, you'll see visual style. Hit the little arrow underneath there, and you'll see there's all these different visual styles. Like they have sketch illustrator, watercolor. But let's go with realistic. Okay. I'm not liking that copper. Sorry. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to go with try that. Oh, that's that's interesting. Looks like an oh, it's a texture. Very cool. All right. Now, when you're in visual style, again, we're, we have it such realistic. You could go to shadows, turn on all shadows and reflections check that little box and the ground plane I'm not a huge fan of but under here if you go with perspective that gives you a vanishing point makes it look more realistic so just like a room gets smaller the further you are away from the, the back wall that's perspective so that's what it adds without it it doesn't look very real okay and then look at this you have the default library 
Let's go with cool light. That gives it some interesting shadow effect. Not too bad. Kind of like that. That's looking pretty cool. All right, let's take her around and find something that you like in there. And then finally, ray tracing. Now for ray tracing, you can see here you have low, draft, and high. And the longer you let it go, the better it's going to look until it gets all the way to the end. So you can make some really neat looking effects. Now you might notice that it goes flush here, especially with chromes and such. A little trick, and I think it's probably in there, but I haven't found it. Some systems have the ability to select like an edge, and you could put a little break, broken edge on there. I'm going to break that edge uh, like 0.01, so 10 thousandths of an inch. And now when we render it, it looks a little bit more realistic because now that edge is broken like it would be in real life because it's that would be near impossible to get it that close. And you could break other edges too. That's a manual way, but I believe there might be a setting in there. If, if one of you knows where it is, go ahead and put it down below in the comments. All right, so now we've basically seen how to make a rendering. And those of you who are in my class, basically at this point, this part is done. And so what I'd like you to do is you could do a couple things. You could do a, uh, if you hold the Alt button and hit Print Screen on your keyboard, you could grab a, a shot of that, drop it into Microsoft Word or LibreOffice. Uh, in fact, I'll do that. Alt Print Screen, or yeah, in that case, it only selects the what we have up on the screen. And now I'm gonna go to, I'll go to Microsoft Word. I have an old version of it, version 10, but I'm gonna go ahead and name this. this is, Exercise one, enter, control V, and it drops it in. Now, to make a nice portfolio, just go to crop here. And you could go ahead and crop out what you don't want to see. So maybe you don't want to see all that stuff there. And now you could drag that out and you have a beautiful cover page for a rendering. All right. <clears throat> Now, you can also just save this as a PDF, but let's see, I don't think, let's see, export file in PDF file format. Let's try this. I don't think it's gonna ray trace it. Yeah, it's not. And I'm gonna put this on my desktop. And where did it go? All right. Let's open it from here. Okay, so it's a little grainy, not great. That's PDF, but can't expect much more than that. All right, also, if you're curious about like a training guide, I do have a training guide and here's how to find it. If you go to vertanu1.com, V-E-R-T-A-N-U-X, um, it says it's not secure. I don't do any transactions on it, so I didn't bother to buy the security for it as far as um, for transactions. So that's why that pops up. But um, basically you just go over here to instructional manuals, and find the Autodesk Inventor, and it will pop up as a PDF, and you could download it, you could print it out, I don't care, it's free. All these are free for all the different systems. The part files that we're gonna use, you'll see are in there too, as we move forward in the training guide, exercise five, exercise six, nine, so on and so forth. And even the exams, they're all in green here. And then the videos, you'll find the video library and you just go to Autodesk Inventor Basics, and here's the library. And as you can see, I'm making this video right now. I have 2022, I have 2021, and a whole selection of videos. It's a whole course. It's literally a college course. If you take all these, you could get a, a <coughs> college credit if you apply for it. Okay, so um, the training guide I already have up here, and here's what it looks like. As you can see, this is from 2021, so I need to update it. But 
really there's not a whole lot I'm seeing that um, I'm gonna have to update it. The interface still is pretty similar, some little changes, but you could still this is still a very valid um, training guide for this software. So if even if I don't get it done, use the 2021, you'll be fine. But as you can see here, some of the icons have changed a little bit, so those need to be updated. But the uh, dimensions are there. It's great for notes. All right. Anyhow, those of you in my class, we now are going to do the labs. Now the labs, you'll see here, try, uh, after finishing this, try lab one. Um, also, by the way, I show you this last image here. That's as far as you have to go when it comes to this um, video. But the fillets and things like that that I showed you, that's just, that's just added value to sharpen your skills a little bit. But this is what I will typically grade on. Okay, but our next part, as you can see here, and is this. So we, it looks like the letter F, it's actually sideways. If you download it, you'll, you're actually able to right click and rotate this, but I'm not gonna download it right now. But you can see it's a two by three and a half inches and we have these uh, steps here. Let's go ahead and try and build that. Go to new, standard I part. It should remember your settings, by the way, from what you set up earlier. Now watch this, if you go to start 2D sketch, you didn't see this earlier because we pre-selected a plane out of this origins box. But here you can select the XY plane, which is the front plane. Most of the parts in my training guide are started, they, we, I do start them on the front plane just for ease of use. There are a couple that are on the top plane. Now you might ask like, well, what's better? Um, what I tell students typically, and I usually have a stapler on my desk, I don't have one today, but if you hold the stapler up on the, the side of it, that actually gives you the most bang for the buck. It's like, a, looks like this. And so basically you could draw that whole profile and extrude it like we did and you get a lot out of it. Versus if you were to rotate it to the very front of the stapler, it's just really a rectangle. You couldn't get much detail. So essentially the stapler, what I might think is the front view is really technically like the right view. So you could select the right plane, sketch it on the right plane, and then it gives it to you in how you would maybe consider what front, top, and right is. Okay, but otherwise, I just, sketching everything on the front plane or what is the XY plane is just fine, as long as you understand spatial capabilities in here. Okay, so let's move along. So I'm gonna to go to the line tool. I'm gonna draw a line out. Oh, let's go straight up. That's gonna be two inches, enter. And then this next one, according to the print, is one inch across. So I'm just gonna go across here. Now, I'm using the line tool. If you remember, we used the rectangle tool before, so this is kind of new to you. So one inch across, and then it goes down one inch. Notice the 90 degrees, make sure you get that 90 degrees, that's good. And then we could go across here. And then it's uh, 0.75. Or you don't even have to do it this way. You could just eyeball it, like, Okay, it looks like it aligns to that. This one goes up here. This one comes down here. This goes across, down, and then connect. Now to add those others, we could add them exactly as we see them if we like. Like I could go to dimension, select the line. Notice I didn't have to select the endpoints of the line. I selected the whole line in this case. Click, that's gonna be three and a half, 3.5. Stay away from the midpoint. You don't want to dimension to a midpoint necessarily in this lesson. Click here, this is gonna be 0.85. Now I'll click on this line to this line, and that's already one. Now here's what's interesting. Look at this, there's a, an adding this dimension will over constrain the sketch. Let's think about that. This is cancel. That's because this is already constrained to this, which is constrained to that. So by adding this dimension, it's redundant, it's not needed. So that one inch dimension is not needed. You can do a couple things, you could leave it alone. You could click on this dimension, click on the line of it and hit delete, or actually just surround it. Oops, hit escape. There, hit escape and just hit delete. Now we could add the dimension we, we see in the print versus the one we added in our way. All right, and so the next dimension from here to here, 
Oops, I got a midpoint, but that's okay. That, that one will work. It's not really optimum, but let's go 2.5. We could hit escape. I'm a little lazy right now. All right, so now it's fully defined. One thing you might have seen, not noticed was the colors have changed. Let's control Z there. It's kind of hard to see, but th this line is black. That means it's underdefined. The other lines are dark blue. And so when something is underdefined, it means that you could grab it and drag it. See, it's floating. Versus the ones that are constrained, see this is constrained at two inches, it's not going to move if I try and grab it. And that's just clicking on it and then dragging it. But let's go back to the dimension tool and add that in from here to here. 2.5. <clears throat> we could even get rid of this dimension because that is not in the training guide, but it's okay. I don't really care how you decide to do it as long as it's accurate but the company you work for might watch a dimension in a certain way. So it's not a bad precedent to use what they give you in a drawing. All right, so there we have it. Now we're going to go to Finish Sketch. Let's click on the Home button there so we can see the whole thing. Go to Extrude, and it is uh, 0.5 thick. There, it's done. Now, if you want have some fun with it. I really encourage you to click on the edges, go to the fillet, you know, just go ahead and fillet some things. Enjoy it. Here you could use what I call Superman X-ray vision to get the backside. Hit OK. And now we could rotate with the, remember how to rotate? Shift on the keyboard and the middle wheel. You push it down like it's a button. Flip it around the back. Let's go to Shell, select this face. We can select that face too. Hit OK. Now look at that, we got a thin walled part. So very quickly you can make parts much more complex than they appear in my drawings. So, and I would recommend that. Have fun, make it look good. Because the more detailed they are, they're gonna look good in your portfolio. Basic parts don't look all that great in a portfolio. So I really recommend adding these types of things. All right, next part. Let's take a look at the training guide here. So we've, we're done with L1, and you would save that as L1. And those of you in my class who are going to put it into D2L, make sure you save it as a capital L1 as a PDF. I'm dropping in. Okay, the next one here we have is this part. And it's pretty much the same parameters as the first part we did. So three inches by five, but it's centered, has a center cutout here. It's one and a half inches thick overall half inch plate at the bottom and then uh, we have these holes that are half inch in diameter and space three quarters of an inch off each edge and you can see little symmetric equal symbols there so it's it's symmetric equal on all sides well from left to right at least so let's start new standard eye part create go to start sketch select the I'm going to go with, just to show you, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the top plane, which right here is actually, they list it as the XZ plane. Select that. And it really doesn't matter again, but I would do it if, I'm, if that's what I'm doing here, I would follow that. Now this is a center part. So I'm going to show you a little trick here that I haven't showed you yet. Use, instead of the two-point rectangle, try using two-point center. You start at the center, lock it in, click and drag it out and now it's supposed to be three tab by five enter go to the top there oh and I just noticed it's rotated it's okay all right now let's add the circles add one right around here stay away don't touch this center line or else it'll lock it in so stay away from the center line just um, this is going to be 0.5 Enter, and now let's go ahead and add some dimensions here. So from this point to this edge, 0.75. From this point to this edge, 0.75. Now, those of you who might not have had an actual drawing class on how to make drawings or lay out a drawing, be aware you try and center them as much as possible like this and get the larger dimensions up above the smaller ones and pull out any of these other dimensions that appear like such. 
And you try not to overlap the lines too often. Okay, make it look nice that way. Um, just like goalposts, if you're trying for a soccer game to hit it, you try and set shoot for the center. Okay. All right. Now, rather than draw all those, which you can, and add dimensions, I'm going to show you a quicker way. So go to the line tool, and exercise two really deals with this, so I'm giving you a preview. So with what you know, you could do this without what I'm about to show you, but I'm going to show you the cheat on how to mirror. So first, go to the line tool and draw a vertical line to the origin and a horizontal line off of it. Notice I didn't draw them all the way out. Oops. I only got one done. I hit escape before I finished the other line. So right about there. There we go. Now, after you hit escape on your keyboard, click and select both of those and go over here to center line. It converts them. Look at that. See dashed lines. They're center lines now. Those are what we use to mirror things across. So watch this. Select the circle that you want to mirror across. Go to mirror. And now click on mirror line and select the horizontal. I'm sorry, the vertical center line, and hit apply. And it should mirror it over. Now look at all these little symbols. Those are symbols letting you know of their symmetry symbols. Means that whatever this, if this ever changes, 0.75 here, this will change with it on the opposite side, just like a mirror. Okay, let's try this again. Go to select, select this circle and this circle. You could window around them too, like this. Oops, I deselected them. There we go and then go to mirror line, and this time select the horizontal mirror. Hit apply. Done. Now watch this. Let's prove it out. Double click on this dimension here. Let's change it to 1.5, and they all adapt. Control Z, as in zeta, to undo, and we're ready to extrude. All right, I'm gonna go to finish sketch. Notice how it's showing it and at this perspective now, versus because we sketched on the top plane, like a tabletop. Go to extrude. Select this body here. It'll extrude up. We're going to have it go the full distance of 1.5. I'm going to show you. Oh, darn it. So I must have just typed in 0.5. Not a problem, though. Click on this. Remember, there's edit extrude. Put the one in front of it. Hit enter. Easy as that. Okay, now there's a couple strategies. You can model this a dozen different ways, by the way. This is just one method I'm showing you. You could come in from the side and draw a little rectangle in the center and extrude it through. Or you could come in from the top. Let's do that. Select this face, start a sketch. We already have the center there. And so drag this out. And we know it's going to be 3, so hit Tab. And then this is supposed to be 1.5 according to the drawing. Go to Finish Sketch, go to Extrude, let's change it to 1, and then flip it. Now let's see if we flip it, if it knows to cut it. Did it. The AI is pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit OK. All right, that's the part. That's all you have to send to me, those of you in my class. Now, does it look good for a portfolio? Not so much. Let's dress it up. Go ahead and select this edge, hold shift, select this edge, this edge. And, you, and again, use your discretion. Do what you'd like to do here. And my Superman x-ray vision is not working over here, so I'm going to have to rotate, which is fine because I was already holding shift. And hold shift again. And when this pops up, this is nice too, as long as it's showing that edge. It didn't do what I was hoping to do there. That's okay. Go to the fillet tool. Push those in. It can make it look pretty cool. It can make it look like some sort of socket plug. I'm not liking the one inch. Let's bring it out 0.75. And if you can't get it, just type in the explicit value. There we go. Hit OK. Now try chamfer. Select this edge here. And we'll go ahead and hold Shift. This edge. Chamfer. 0.125 looks pretty good. You could even countersink these. Watch this. Hold Shift and select those edges. And <coughs> you could go and hit OK. All 
right, so let's shell it out. Let's change it around. Let's go to shell. Select this face here. And what the heck, let's select this face, this one, and this one too. Let's make it look a little exotic. Go to home. All right, you could also go and select the part up there. And let's go, I'm gonna go ahead and just select, let's see what this expanded metal looks like. Whoa, wow, that's actually pretty cool looking. Yeah, I'll keep that. All right, so now we go to view, visual style, realistic. We could go to perspective. Wow, that's looking pretty neat. And visual style, oh, we already have realistic. Okay, um, now another thing just to show you here, if this ever happens to you, this little button, try clicking on it once. It minimizes the icons, it makes it more optimal. Click on it a second time, they almost, they all disappear. Click on it again, they're really gone. And click on it again, it brings everything back. So that is a way of adjusting your interface, however you like. Uh, a more seasoned user might not need to see all these, all the text, so they might turn that off. And you can see over here you have minimized to tabs, panels, tiles, so on. Okay, also user interface. Click on this. You could turn off um, the view cube, that's right over here, the navigation bar. Um, there's many toolbars, let's see what that is. No, I'm not seeing. <coughs> um, and the model browser, if you want that turned off, for rendering maybe, but it really is handy to have it on. So if you ever turn it off, you can turn it back on that way. Okay, let's try the ray tracing, see what that looks like. Holy moly, that's pretty darn cool. Okay, so there you have it. There is a, a very beginner's class first day, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and see you next week with exercise two. Welcome back. I'm Chris Sikora, and I'm going to guide you through exercise two of Inventor 2020. Actually, yeah, 2021. So uh, what you're looking at the screen right here is actually our goal. And that's to create what looks kind of like a wheel. Uh, and then we're going to add some little blades on it like, using the rib tool. And we'll explore some other techniques here, do some patterning. So let's begin. Let's go to New, or File New, and go ahead and select Part. Now, hit the little plus symbol next to origin. Now, there's a couple ways, like I didn't show this other technique to you earlier. Like we see that we have the three planes, like XY is our front plane, XZ is our top plane, and XY is our right side plane. But you could go right here to start 2D sketch. Now, if you hit the little arrow, there's start 2D sketch and there's start 3D sketch. Now, start 3D sketch, that's great for as a tool for like wiring or um, when you're making piping, things like that. But we're actually going to use, or even a structural steel too. But instead, we're going to just stick with the 2D sketch. And when you do that, it brings up those three planes that you see here. And actually, the XZ plane is the one we want. So go ahead and select it. Okay. Um, now, uh, and, and actually, I just realized that wasn't the one we wanted. So here's a good tip. Let's go ahead and we're going to exit out of that. So hit Finish Sketch. Let's try that again. Go to Start 2D Sketch. And actually, we want the XY plane. My mistake. So go ahead and select the XY. Now, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to draw some lines. Go to the Line tool and hover up above this line here, uh, as high as you could get almost. Like in this case, I'm about 0.6 on the Y. And X should be 0, 0.00. Just go ahead and click and then drag down and connect. When you get the little green dot, it means you're snapping to the origin. Click, drag it to the left about um, maybe uh, two inches or so, or one and, one and a half, or I had one, one and a quarter. And once you got that, you can go ahead and hit escape after you click. So we have those two lines. Now what we wanna do for one of them is we wanna actually 
turn that into a construction geometry or a center line. And you can do that if you just click on it and then go right up here, there's a center line. Now, technically for Revolve, we don't need a center line, but for consistency's sake, it's not a bad idea to just click on it and change it to a center line. That way there's no mistake later on if someone's editing the part. It's always good to have some sort of construction geometry. Okay, now let's go to the line tool and make sure that that is not still on, okay? Just in the event that you hit it out of order. Okay, now move your pointer over this edge here and like I'm at a minus 0.11-ish around there, that's fine, maybe a little bit further out. Click, drag straight up. We don't know the exact dimension for this, but it's gonna be as high as we can get it. In fact, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit with my wheel. I'm gonna uh, scroll forward with the wheel so I could get almost an, an inch, like 0.8-ish is pretty good. And make sure you get that 90 degrees, but don't type in any value. Click. Drag across here. Now this one does have a value. And you could go ahead and just type in, uh, go straight across here. Make sure you see the 90 degrees. But while the dimension is highlighted, like minus 0.266 over there, whatever yours is, go ahead and type in 0.4 and enter. Now go down at an angle like this. And just um, about three quarters of an inch and like mine is at around 110, 115 degrees, that's fine. Don't touch the center line though. Go ahead and click. Now drag across, and you could actually zoom out a little bit with your wheel. I zoomed in and out a couple times there. And this is gonna be about an inch. Go ahead and uh, make sure it's horizontal. Click, and then drag straight up, um, less than an inch. Click, drag across. Now we do know this dimension, this is gonna be point to five. So make sure it goes straight across. And then go all the way down here to the bottom and make sure it snaps and it looks vertical. You should get the 90 degrees there. So click. And now hit escape. Now we're going to add, uh, actually we'll mirror this across. Now go to the mirror tool up here and you could select each individual line that you want to mirror or you could do this. You just hover above it click and drag a fence to surround just the geometry that you're looking to mirror. Release. Now click on mirror line and select that horizontal center line that you made. And then hit apply. And it should mirror it across. If it didn't work for you, you might not have selected things properly. So maybe cancel this out, hit escape a couple times and go to mirror, make sure select is selected. Select those individually, maybe it might be easier for you and then go to mirror line and select that horizontal line. Okay, I'm gonna hit done. Now we could put the rest of the dimensions in. Now, if you're wondering where I'm getting these dimensions, it's in the training guide on Vertani 1. So if you go to V-E-R-T-A, and as a Nancy, U-X, and then one.com, and then you could click on instructional manuals and go to an Autodesk Inventor, the green button, and it will bring up the training guide. And then the training guide, you just want to get to page 23. And this is where you can actually see our dimensions located right here that we're going to use. Now I'm going to drag that over to the right on my second screen. If you have a second screen, that's great. Go ahead and drag it over there. Um, and I'm going to proceed to put these dimensions in. So the first dimension, let's go to the dimension tool, is between the center line, the vertical center line, and the vertical line just next to a parallel with it. Click. Drag it over to the right here and up a little bit, and it's going to give you a diameter. It's Because it's a center line, it will automatically give you that diameter. And that's really nice because later on in, when we uh, make the drawing, it will automatically show that as a diameter because eventually this will be revolved 360 degrees. Okay, so with that, it's going to be 0.75. Hit enter. Now go ahead and click. Uh, let's actually add this dimension between this line and this line here, and click over here to drop that, and that one's going to be 0.25, and select this line to this line here, and it's gonna be two. And we could now put in the angle, click on this angled line to this vertical line right here, drag that down, that's gonna be 18 degrees. And finally, this point to the vertical center line, drag that up, that's gonna be two. 
And the last dimension should be this outlandish line here uh, to this vertical center line. And that's going to be five. And that's going to be the overall diameter of our wheel. And now we're ready to go to 3D model and revolve. Now, go ahead and select this profile to revolve. And that's the first thing it's looking. Now, you see these little blue lines under here? That's the indicator. Whatever there's a blue line underneath it, it's indicating whatever you select on the view screen, It's that's the input. So the first thing was the profiles. I selected this profile right here. Now, sometimes it divides it into two, depending on how long your center line is. So just be aware that could happen too. Uh, just select both profiles, make sure they're both shaded like this. Now. See that blue line under here? If it's not there, click in that selected axis and select the vertical center line. And it should spin it around that as its center 360 degrees. Go ahead and hit OK. All right, now let's go home. The little home button up there brings us to isometric. OK, now we have our wheel. Let's add a little bit of detail to it. So go to the fillet tool, set the radius to 0.1 and select this edge here, this edge here, this one right here, and find with the x-ray vision that you have, um, that's built into the software, click on this edge. I just call it x-ray vision. It's a selector mode for behind edges, which is really nice. Not all systems have that. Um, then go ahead and select this edge here, this edge, and if you can, these are a challenge, without rotating the part. Now you can rotate the part if you like, but this is good practice. Get this edge right here, which is again x ray vision. And then finally, um, we want this one down here. And again, if you want to rotate, I'm just going to shift, hold shift, and rotate with the middle wheel. Hold that wheel down like it's a button. And you can select this edge here. If you want, you could go ahead and select these two. Like click on this inside edge, but let's make that one a little smaller. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Um, I need to add that later. Make sure it's back to point one. Okay. Um, now, if you want to deselect that edge, hold control and deselect it. Now, all those are good. Let's hit click to add, and we can add additional fillets for different sizes. So, this next group here, go ahead and select. Let's make it 0 0.04. Now select that edge, and you can see it's going to be smaller. And you could get this edge up here. Now hit click to add, change it to 0.5, and get this edge here. And if you want to use your x-ray, do that, or just rotate it and get this edge right here. And then hit OK. And so now we've added all those different fillets. Now if you didn't get them all, you could always pause and try and get them or hit. Remember, there's an undo button up here. If you ever get any wrong, hit undo, try it again. Follow my lead. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the ribs in. So select this face right here and go to sketch. Now, you could use the arc if you wanted them arched, but I'm just going to use the line because it's just simple. And go in, let's see, one, two, three, four, Five, maybe six concentric circles from the center out. Like right about there, that's good. Click there. Now drag this to the next concentric circle that you come in contact with, and it'll snap. Now let's hold shift and rotate. You'll see basically, um, if you hit escape, you can see we drew that little line segment right there. Notice it's not touching the edges. For the rib tool, you don't need it to touch the edges. In fact, sometimes if you're touching an edge, um, I've had weird things happen where it didn't like it. So just be aware um, they don't have to touch the edges. Okay, now that I have that, let's go to 3D model and rib. Now the profile, go ahead and select that edge and you'll see right away it starts to add that rib. Now you could actually add additional things like there's the thickness of 0.1. We're going to keep it at that. There's um, draft and we'll keep it at top and we'll just set the draft to, let's put in um, three degrees and hit enter. All right. Now draft, if you zoom up, you can see it widens as it gets lower. So um, that's so it could pull out of a mold easier when they mold it for manufacturing. 
Okay, now we're going to uh, mirror that to the other side. So go ahead and select the rib. I prefer to select it from the model tree over here on the left. And then you could go to the mirror tool. And now it's looking for a mirror plane. So we actually want the XZ plane, which runs right through the center of the part. And then go ahead and hit OK. Now let's just double check, hold shift and rotate. You should be able to see it's on both sides. Now we can pattern that. So now uh, hold control and select the rib and the mirror from the model tree. Go to circular. And now it's looking for a rotation axis. Go ahead and just select the outside face here and set it to, like, see, we have six there. You can set it a little bit higher, maybe eight. Uh, just to have a little fun with it, put as many as you like. Actually, try not to put too many. It could actually lock up the system if they're if they're overlapping, um, or it would. I should say lock it up. It will just uh, take a while. You'll have to think about it, and then it might say it failed to do it. So, anyway, go ahead and hit OK. And now we can see we have the patterns there. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to enhance this even further. We're going to put in like little scallop cuts here. And just want to show you how easy this is. We're just having a little bit of fun, be aware. So go ahead and click on the X, or I should say the Y, Z plane over here in the model tree and go to sketch. Now, so it's easier to see, go to view, go to visual style. And this gives us X-ray vision. It's the shaded with hidden edges. And now we could see in there a little bit better, maybe not so hot, but it's okay. Uh, let's go to, first of all, go to, uh, click on the sketch tab, go to line, and right at this origin, see that yellow dot in the middle? When you get the green dot, click, drag it straight up, and then hit escape. We need that as our axis of revolution, uh, for the pattern, or no, I'm sorry, axis of revolution. Now I go to circle, and find this midpoint right here, click and drag on a circle, and make it one inch. Now find this edge, now you're not gonna locate a midpoint between the middle to the side. So just uh, on X and Y, get them both about where they're about one inch. So Y should be about one inch. Uh, right about there. Uh, you know, let's actually get it out further. Let's go about 1.375. There we go. Y should be about 1.3 something. Click, drag it out, and again, make it one inch and enter. Now align yourself to that over here. See how I get the line of inference directly above my pointer? Click, drag this one out and type in one. Now we could actually add a constraint here of equal if we wanted to. That's another option, actually probably even better. In fact, let's uh, click on the dimension here after you hit escape, hit delete, and click on this one, hit delete, just to show you what it's capable of. Now go to equal right up here and Click here and there, click there and then here. Notice the little equal symbols pop up. Now they're all equal. So that's another thing you could do instead of having three different dimensions guide them. If you, if you know they all need to be the same all the time, why have three when you can have one? Again, design intent. Okay, now let's go to 3D model, go to revolve. Now the first thing, see the blue line under here is looking for the profiles. Select now. I'm going to rotate. Actually, I'm going to go to the home button here so we can see it better. Click on these profiles. Now, see, mine are broken up into halves. Um, so, you because of the references that were located, that's okay. Just click on all those so they highlight and change color in the center so we know that their volumes are going to be uh, accepted. Now, click in this select axis and select that vertical line. Notice we didn't draw it as a center line. It accepts it just as a vertical object line. Object lines are solid. All right, now it looks like we have these inner tubes floating in there. Watch this, for Boolean as output, right now it was set to join. Try selecting cut, and it will remove the material instead. Hit OK, and now look at that. Let's go to view, go to visual style, and go back, uh, let's go to realistic or shaded with edges, either one's fine. All right, now dress this up for your portfolio. If you remember, we started a portfolio in the last exercise. 
I'm using um, LibreOffice. Now, I don't know if I saved it last time. I, I actually don't think I did. Oh, I did. So I'm going to go ahead and select and open that. So that was from last week. So now we're in E2. Um, what I'm going to do is we'll, we'll dress this up a little bit. Now, if you go to, instead of default here, a really neat thing is if you go with a chrome, like chrome polished, it looks pretty cool. All right, and then you could also, you could select actually the revolutions over here and then go to uh, the little arrow where it says chrome and go and find, like I'm gonna go with dark green, but you could go with dark red, dark blue, whatever you prefer. It will color those surfaces for us, gives it a little bit more uh, depth now. And then finally, instead of orthographic, turn on a vanishing point or perspective is what it is. Now we're ready to, um, I'm going to go instead of default IBL, I like the one or two lights. They, I really like how those look. Uh, one light looks like that. Two lights uh, looks a little different. looks good. And now under visual style, go to realistic. And that even looks better. But if you want to make it look even better than that, hit ray tracing. Now, it seems to me that the ray tracing, since the last time I've done these, uh, last time I worked with Inventor made videos was 2018. I believe it, it's greatly enhanced. It actually looks really nice now. Um, you can see there the uh, image looks much better. Now, what I was really impressed with, instead of the, the chromes outstanding, but if you go with like a glass or um, plastic, like polycarbonate looks really good. Let's see. Um, there we go, polycarbonate clear. I was really impressed with it. It captures a lot of uh, effects there. Now over here in the lower right, you can see my ray tracing set to low. If you set it up higher to draft, it's gonna take longer, but it'll actually look better. And there you can see it rendering. And the longer you let it run, the better. Now, again, if you have a faster microprocessor or maybe something slower, the more cores you have makes a difference. So if I hit Control Alt Delete here and go to Task Manager, I could bring up the Task Manager and go to Performance, Open Resource Monitor, and actually see all my CPUs going. And you can see they're all running at 100%. And I have a total of uh, 32 threads. Um, it's, this is actually a 16 core processor. If you're wondering what it is, it's the, um, and you can see it's running there. It's the Ryzen 9 3950X 16 core. So this is a pretty uh, decent machine. Uh, I, I've spent maybe $1,500 on it, which is pretty expensive, but uh, you could get some great performance with very inexpensive machines, even machines that are almost a decade old still uh, will work okay as long as you have Windows 10 64-bit and plenty of RAM. Minimum RAM is four gigabytes. I, it runs really slow with that. I recommend 16 or more gigabytes. Yep. Any modern processor though, it's gonna run pretty well. Okay, so um, with that, you can see some of the neat effects. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off ray tracing and then I'm gonna go back to visual style and turn to shade with edges. And actually, I'm going to turn off polycarbonate because it just looks a little. Um, I'm going to go with silver instead. Oops. There we go. Okay. Now, going back to the training guide, after you finish this exercise, uh, our task here is lab two, and there's quiz one. Okay, so lab two here is to make this bolt. And remember, I'd like you to try it on your own if you can. Watch my video if you get stuck. That's the recommended way to do it. But if you want, you can you know, do whatever you want I, uh, if you're working on this from home. So let's go to New, Standard iPart, Create. I'm going to go to Start 3D, a 2D Sketch, select the XY plane. I'm going to draw, We uh, when we look at the print, the overall height is two inches and with a shaft of 1.7. So click, drag this up. You could uh, make sure it's vertical, type in two, hit enter. 
and I'm going to hit escape there. Let's see what else. Uh, I'm going to go to front to zoom to fit. I'm going to go back to the line tool and zoom, actually zoom out a little bit. Click here, go across here. Um, this diameter is supposed to be 0.5, so we're drawing one half of the bolt, so it's going to revolve around. So in this case, it should be 0.25. Drag this up. This one should be 1.7. Across here, this will be another 0.25, because 0.25 plus the 0.25, multiply that by 2, you're going to get a 1 inch head on the bolt. And then this next one is 0.1 in height. Hit enter. So it's vertical. So we have our general dimensions here. Not exactly like they are on the print, by the way. I'm just doing a little math. But now we could go over here to the um, three-point arc. Click on this point here to this point. And you could put in the actual dimension of 0.75. Or you could actually lock that in vertical. Um, 0.75 is general for the dome on there. Okay, so now we could go to 3D model, revolve, and I was looking for, see the red band there? It's just looking for the edge. So zoom out here, and it should be this edge that you want to revolve around. Hit OK. All right, now let's go to. Um, Start 2D sketch again, and in this case, I'm going to have to hit the origin. And this time, I want it on the we'll go with the YZ plane again and draw this one. You want a center line to mirror across, so draw a center line. See how I clicked on center line up there, draw it peeking out like that. Turn it after you hit escape, turn off center line. Now we want to put in this information. Okay, so now we're going to put the little slit inside there for the screwdriver. So go to the line tool. Make sure, again, that that one is turned off. You don't want the center line in this case. And you should be able to see, get with the x-ray here, a little bit above this line here, this edge. Click and drag it across. And this one's going to be, uh, if I recall, 0 0.05 across. Oops, and I got something I didn't want, it snapped. So I'm gonna hit undo, and let's try that again. I'm actually gonna start up here. So way above here, click, drag this across. There's no dimension for this one, just make sure it's 90 degrees, maybe a quarter inch or so. Now drag this in, click, and then connect here, and then hit escape. Now you can see the line is through there, as long as it's straight and you're in good shape. Let's go ahead and select that geometry, go to mirror, and now select the vertical center line. Oh, actually, you have to click over here on mirror line and then select the center line and hit apply. Now, if you really want to see in there, go to view and visual style and change it to shading, uh, shade with hidden edges. There, now we can see it. And that will enable us when we go back to uh, the sketch tools to dimension it. So the dimension from here to this bottom edge is 0.15. And then from this point, to this point is going to be 0.1. And let's bring up the drawing just so I make sure I'm doing this. So uh, 30 degrees and the, yeah, the slope was 0.1 at the base centered. So from here to here, that's going to be 30. All right, I'm just going to hit finish sketch. And I didn't really have to hit finish sketch, by the way. Uh, it's just a force of habit sometimes. And now profiles, first thing it's looking for, we click in that little area there. Now, we're going to have it go both directions right here. And then you want right here through all. OK, and unfortunately, the through all is not both through all. So let's go back to this option here and let's go to cut. And just make sure it's uh, going far enough to where it's cutting through it. Give yourself enough clearance and hit OK. And there is a little chamfer on the bottom. So if you go to chamfer, it's going to be 0.03 and distance to distance. So click on that edge and hit OK. And there it is. Now we're not going to learn how to put the thread in. They do have some clever thread tools and things like that. That's more of an advanced thing. I'm not going to cover it in the second exercise. But uh, you can see the thread tools right up there.
that uh, completes this lab. So for this one, you want to make sure, again, you know, if you want, just dress it up a little bit. You don't have to do this. Uh, if I go to, let's go to engine turn. Oh, no, I don't like that. We'll go with uh, polish. Eh. Again, choose whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but just make sure it looks pretty decent for your portfolio. Go to view. Go to perspective and then visual style, realistic, and maybe go home. And now we could actually turn on ray tracing. And again, you could dress it up a little bit more than that, like add a little, some enhancements and such. And when you get that, do an alt print screen. And we could go to our document here and start dropping those in. And then hit control V as in Victor. And I click on this, go to the crop image, and just drag that in. Whoops. Okay, now we can move that over there. Now we still have to get an E2, which I still have here. And down below here, you can see it actually keeps the parts there. There's my original one. There's one I, I'm going to grab for my portfolio here. Rotate it in such a way that you like it. And again, realistic ray tracing is going to make it look fancy. And if you want, you could pause it. Otherwise, it'll just keep running till it looks better and better. I'm going to pause it. Alt print screen. And right over here, control V and then crop it again. Or crop this one, I should say. Oh, I keep grabbing the wrong one for the header. And you can do this with Microsoft Office too, remember. All right, so there is, uh, again, for our portfolio, looking pretty good. Now let's do the quiz. Now the quiz, um, I'd like you to do this on your own. Don't watch this video and, until afterwards. So go to New, Standard I Part, Create. We're gonna go, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the XZ plane start a sketch and we could use because uh, let me show you what the quiz looks like by the way this is what it looks like it's a six by three block with four holes in it it has a circular boss centered and there's a big through hole in it and here's all the dimensions so I'm gonna go through this rather quick so rectangle two point center, center point that is and so we have six hit tab by three hit enter and I'll go click on top there. Let's go to the line tool and turn on center line. And right up here in the middle, click, drag it straight down, click, drag it across. Oops. Hit escape. So we have those for our mirror lines. You're going to go to the circle tool right about there. Stay away from any geometry. We're going to 0.5. And I'll go to dimension and locate the center. To this edge over here this is going to be 0.75 center to the top edge 0.75 and let's try uh escape there okay lay the dimensions out so they look decent now we want to mirror that across so we could go to mirror first it's looking for the circle then click on mirror line select the vertical center line hit apply now you could do this, you could click across, selecting both, go to mirror line and select the horizontal center line, hit apply and done. Finish sketch. Again, you didn't have to do that part. Let's go to the home button and select these segments here that you want. And it should be one inch thick, hit okay. Now go um, select this face. Notice I didn't draw in the boss or the hole yet because that's done as a secondary feature. Can you do it that way? You can. It's just that um, I just didn't feel like doing it. So I'm going to go circle and 2.5 for the diameter. Actually, let's verify that. 2.25. Good thing I checked. So I'm going to hit escape, double click, 2.25. And go to 3D model, extrude. And this only goes uh, 0.75 in height. That one's hard to see on the print. I will admit that. Go to fill it and let's put in 0.25 and there's four five edges one two three four 
five. Hit OK. Now go to chamfer and 0.125, actually that's correct. Just select this edge right here and hit OK. Now if you do those out of order, the edges aren't going to look right. So that's the order you have to have. You have to do the fillet first, then the chamfer. You can sometimes move these up and down because this browser is actually a history timeline. So you can move things up and down. But it's almost easier just to hit undo until you get rid of the chamfer and then put the fillets in then put the chamfer back in. There's a lot of little tricks, that's just one thing. Now I forgot the hole, let's select this face, go to sketch, the hole in the center should be 1.25, hit 3D model, extrude. Now you're gonna flip it and make sure it's through all and hit okay. And that's it. Now, if you wanna get some extra credit, select this face, Go to sketch and I'm going to show you something that's um, more advanced. Now we're going to go with text and you could just, um, oh, we have to put a line down, the second line. And actually construction uh, really works well here. So I could like say, let's say I want it right about here. Okay. Now construction line is what you could lay text on. So you go to the text tool. I think you could lay it on the center line too. Maybe it is a center line, I can't remember. Oh, here, let's go to geometry text. There we go. Okay, so I selected the, the little line that I drew with the construction. Let's turn off that construct. Oh, turn it back on. Okay, now um, for our text, go ahead and type in here, first initial, last name. Okay, and hit update. And you should see it right there. Okay. You can actually change the size by just selecting it here. And you could don't go with bold. That sometimes messes it up a bit. Let's see if you wanted a quarter, not quite a quarter, but uh, and hit update. Uh, it's too big. So I'm going to go back to 0.125 and hit update again. Oops, got to select it. There we go. All right, hit OK. Now this quiz is not worth that. It's only worth 10 points. And if you're wondering where all the points are, by the way, in your training guide, you could actually find, and those of you who are taking the class will get this too. Uh, there's actually, let's zoom out of here. Oh, I guess it's not in the book. I will provide you, uh, those of you in my class, the point structure. I mean, here you can see the point, um, how the points are broken down. Apparently, I didn't put it in this version of the training guide. Those of you in my class, I'll send that out to you in an email. So keep an eye open for that. But anyway, um, this will be an extra 20 credit points if you could do this. So that's worth a lot more than um, the test, actually. Go to 3D model, go to extrude, select the text. And if you want it embossed, like where it's raised, just leave it as is and put in a distance maybe of 0.02 and hit enter. And there it is. If you want, you could flip it and cut it, make it engraved if you like. But if you could do that, I'll give you extra credit points there. Now, if you could actually get it to where it follows this curve in here, I'll give you an extra 25 credit points. And you'd have to look ahead into exercise uh, or lab three in the video to actually see how that's done. So that, uh, that's why I'll give extra, extra points if you can get it following an arc. Okay, now uh, the way I'd like you to present it to me is just like so. I need to be able to see this information here. So I want you to actually do an alt print screen and you could drop it into a new text document. Just control V, make sure. Uh, so if your name's on it, then you're in good shape, but that's extra credit. So you don't have to have it there, but make sure you put in your name and then you just go to file and give me a, do a save as, and you want it as a PDF. Um, which I'm not seeing here. A Word document would be fine, like a XML. Any of these would be fine. 
I am uh, seeing PDF. Anyway, if uh, if you did if you have PDF as an option, that's preferable. Word documents fine, and just send this to me because I need to see the feature tree. Just make sure you did it right. And that concludes this exercise. Welcome back. I'm Chris Sakura, and I'm going to step you through Inventor 2021 with exercise three here. As you can see, this is a forged ratchet body that we're going to design inside Inventor. We're going to go through some new tools and tips and tricks as well. And, um, and then we'll cover the two labs. Now, as you can see with this part, let me, there we go. What we're going to look at building is the head of the ratchet. That's this part here. And with that, there's a recess. That's this green area here. There's also going to be some uh, holes. I should say the pocket here, and then two through holes. And then we're going to fill it, the outer edges. And then we'll build the transition section. Now, what's interesting about the transition transition section, we're going to build a plane or create a plane that's offset from the top plane. So right about here is where the center of our part is. We're going to offset it four inches to the back. Then we're going to go ahead and draw a circle on there and extrude it up to next. And then finally, we're going to build this handle section. And then we'll take a look again at engraved text, how to put your name on there or whatever you want to engrave. Now, be aware that any of these models can be 3D printed once they're done. It's just a matter of just going to File, and you can do a Save As. Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry, Export. And then you'll see there's CAD format. And then under the CAD formats, some of the typical ones here, the, the most common that I've seen over the years is STL. It works with even older 3D printers as well as new ones. There are some other ones out there that uh, you could look up if there's any specifics that they require. But typically, an STL file is going to get you to any 3D printer. And you would just save it at that point, and then you could export it to whatever software is used for what they call slicing that into a bunch of layers and then builds it. All right, let's begin. Now, if you're wondering as far as the training guide goes, let's just bring that up. And these dimensions will be found on in the training guide. So you just go to vertani1.com. So V-E-R-T is in Tom, A-N is in Nancy, UX1.com. And then you're going to go ahead and go to instructional manuals and Autodesk Inventor. And then just scroll down, and this lesson begins on page 28. And this is exercise three. And so we're going to build this head that you see here, and here's the dimensions on it. And then we're going to add draft to it as well. So let's begin. Go to New, Standard IPT, hit Create, and now go to Start. 2D sketch. Now, if you want to have it on a photo rendering of it laying down on a table, you could build this off of the uh, XZ plane. Or if you want to have it standing right up, you could build it on the front plane. It just depends on what, however you prefer. Go ahead and select that face and or that plane. And in this case, I went with the X, the front plane, which is actually the uh, YZ plane. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and go to the line tool, and I'm going to draw a line, a vertical line right here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that I could get it almost one inch in height. Now, normally I would turn this into a center line because we're going to use it to mirror. Inventor doesn't require you to do that anymore. So um, rather than turn it on, I don't. But if you work at a company and they want you to have construction geometry or center lines, be sure to use use that method. Inventor doesn't require us to do that, so it's just an extra step I don't we don't need to do. I'm going to go to the line tool again, and then over here in the lower left corner, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag out a line, and just around three quarters of an inch, but don't put in any dimensions, and have it at a slight angle, like mine's at 107 degrees. So click, and then now hit escape. Now we're going to go to the mirror tool, and it's important to note that this technique we're going to use in the lab later today, and uh, for the next lesson, the following day, uh, 
exercise or lab four. So just remember this technique and it comes in handy. Very little trimming is involved. Okay, so uh, select is selected. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that line. Now I'm gonna click on mirror line and then select the vertical center line or the vertical, it's really an object line here, but it's acting as a center line. Hit apply and you'll see it will mirror it across there. You could hit done. Now we need to put some tangent arcs. So hit the little arrow underneath here, make sure tangent arc is selected. Click on this bottom point here, drag it under and around and make sure you get the green dots to lock it in, click. Try it on this side, click on this one, drag it up and around and then you get the green dot, click. Let's go to dimension, dimension the bottom at 0.6, dimension the top arc at 0.75, and now dimension the two center points. Now the center points are a little, might be challenging for you to see. I see them just fine, but I know students over the years, I've been teaching this almost 10 years, um, sometimes I don't know why they just I have a hard time seeing those two. So just be aware of those two center points, click on those, drag it to the right, and make sure you're clicking on the center point for the arc, not the center point of the, the origin. Okay, so take careful note what I'm clicking on here. Okay, I'm going to drag this to the right click, make that 0.75, and now I'm going to hit escape. Now what I want to do is I want to add a relationship. I want to get this point locked into that origin. So you could do this. See right here, this is the actual coincident constraint. It's going to merge those two. So select this point down here. Select the origin now, that's the center of the crosshairs, and click. Now I'm going to hit escape again and just straighten these dimensions out so they look a little bit nicer, that's all. Later on, those dimensions could be used for the drawing too. You could retrieve them easily. Go ahead and hit, uh, you don't have to hit finish sketch, but I, I just have a habit because of other CAD systems, they do that. Go to extrude, and from here, go to mid plane, which are symmetric. Make it one inch. And now we're going to add a taper. Now tapers are typically added. Uh, we're going to add minus seven for when something is molded and it's pulled out of a mold. This is actually um, a drop forging. Drop forgings are for steel parts like you've probably seen ratchets or hammers that are drop forged. It's very, very strong. And what it is, it's uh, molds that have the impressions and then they take a hot ingot of steel and they compress it and it sets up the grain inside to where it's very strong. So anyhow, but you need to have draft on those. So minus seven and hit okay. Now I'll select this face and start a sketch. What we need to do, we're gonna learn offset for the first time. Now for offset, if you have sketch geometry up, already up on the screen, you don't have to do this next step. But when you just have solid geometry, you have to go to project geometry, select the surface, of the topology that or edges that you want to have offset. But in this case, you could just select this face right here. Now you could go to offset and see how it created that yellow geometry. Now watch this, you click on that edge and I could drag it in. Now you'll get that little dimension to the right of your pointer. We want it to actually be dragged in by 0.125. Go ahead and hit enter. And now you have an offset. Now let's go to 3D model, extrude, select that inlay there, click, and now flip it. It should go to remove or cut. And now we're going to go ahead and put the depth in at 0.125. Hit OK. And there's no draft on that this one because this is going to be uh, machined after it's been pressed in the mold. OK, now we could select the floor of that recess that we just made and go to Create Sketch. Now go to the Circle tool. And you could get to the center point of this bottom arc really easily because that's our origin. Click there and drag it out and type a point seven five. And now the way to wake up the center point for the top arc is you just hover over this edge, but don't click, just hover over the edge and all of a sudden you'll see the little dot appear. Move your pointer over to it. When you get the green dot, click, drag it out and type in one. That's gonna be one inch. Now, this next step, Inventor does not make you do what we're about to do. We could actually just go to Extrude and select the profiles. But uh, some companies that you might work at might want you to clean it up as best as possible beforehand. And so we're going to learn the Trim tool because Trim does come in handy from time to time. So go to Trim and notice the uh, fast key is X. So go to Trim. Now, there's two elements of Trim inside here. 
you just, if you want, you just click on the geometry you don't want and it will trim up to the next intersection. So like right here, see this? You get the little dashed line, click. Now the next one is, is if you just hold your mouse button down and start scribbling through whatever you don't want and it just removes it. So it's really clever that they have that built into one tool. Okay, let's go to 3D model, go to extrude, select that pocket and flip it. And the depth of this is gonna be 0.75. Now, if you rotate, holding shift in your middle wheel, select the floor of that pocket, go to create sketch, and let's draw in a circle right there at the center, and it's gonna be 0.35. Now, let's draw the next circle, and if you could remember, how did we wake up that center point? Think about it. How did we wake it up last time? Move over to the edge and just hover over the edge, don't click, and it wakes it up. Now go ahead and click on that, drag it out at any dimension. Don't make it the same, just actually make it a little bit bigger, but don't add a dimension. Now watch this, we'll substitute. Since those are supposed to be both 0.35, we can now go to the equal constraint right here and select the circle for the 0.35 and select the other circle. And now look at, there's a little equal symbol next to them. Let's go to 3D model, extrude, select both profiles, flip the direction and select through all. Hit OK. Now let's go to uh, fill it and make sure the fill it set to 0.125. Select this edge right here and then select this bottom edge over here. Just those two for right now. It should look like that. Hit, hit OK. All right, the head is done. Now we want to create that plane so that we could draw the transition section diameter and extrude it up to the head. So here's how to do that. Hit the little plus symbol next to the origins folder and find the plane. In this case, mine is the XZ plane, which runs horizontal through the head. So go ahead and select that XZ plane. We want to offset that. Now watch this, go find the plane tool right here, hit the little arrow, and the very first option is offset from plane. Notice there's a whole array of tools here. We're gonna cover several of these over the semester, so just be aware we're just starting off here. But offset from plane. Now it wants to go upward in a positive direction, so grab the arrow or type in negative four. So if you type in negative four, you'll see the preview down below. Zoom out if you don't see it, and hit the green check. Now we could select the edge of that new work plane we created and start a sketch on it. Now it's gonna go parallel to the screen. Yours might be rotated. Remember you have these options up here. You could rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, let's go to circle and at that origin, click and drag on a circle, make it 0.5 and hit enter. Now you might see some geometry like that sometimes appear. That's just, it's creating relationships behind the scenes so that it could snap to it in the event that you wanted that to occur. We didn't need that though. All right, let's now go to 3D model and extrude. Now, instead of the typical here, notice there's three other options. There's this one that we're looking for, two next. Go ahead and select that. It knows to go up to the next body, in this case, the head, and it stops. It doesn't go through it. So go ahead and hit okay. Now let's hide this work plane. Now, sometimes you wanna hide things and sometimes the, the easiest way is just to hover over what you wanna hide. In this case, the edge of the work plane, make sure it highlights, right mouse button click, right click this time. We don't use the right mouse button very often. And we get this wheel and we get a lot of options. Look on the wheel at about the four o'clock. You'll see visibility, uncheck that and the plane disappears. It's still in the model tree right here, but we have it hidden basically from sight because we don't. We just don't need to see it. You could leave it on, it's not gonna hurt anything, but I just like cleaning up the screen. Okay, now let's go ahead and select the XY plane and then go over here to sketch. Now I wanna have mine rotated. I don't like looking at it from the side, so I'm gonna hit this little uh, counterclockwise button and then I'm gonna zoom out we're going to make the handle now. Now I'm going to show you an awkward way to make the handle. Most people would go and take a center rectangle and lock it into the center and you can do that. 
but I wanted to show you some of the constraint tools here. So this one's kind of going to be weird, but you'll get to see some tools and it might look at those gears working. So go ahead and click on rectangle. And over here on the right, floating mount right there, click and drag out what looks like the handle, make it one inch wide, and then hit the tab key by four inches in height and hit enter. So now we have the, the handle parameters. We gotta get it over though. Now here's the little trick I'm gonna show you. Go to the line tool. And does this save any time? Not really. Again, it's just to try and show you how relationships work inside Inventor. But go ahead, or constraints I should say. Go ahead and find the midpoint here with the line, click and connect to the origin, the center of the crosshairs right there, click. And now hit escape. Let's go to dimension, dimension that line and click over here to the right. You'll get a parallel dimension. You actually have to click and then click a second time. Make that 3.75. We have to make it a little bit shorter than the actual distance that we have offset the transition from, just so it builds into the transition because we have to add draft. Now here's, what's going to show you what I want to show you. Uh, we're, I want you to find this little tool up here, vertical constraint or I select that line right here and it moved it perfectly vertical located center. So sometimes it might be easier to sketch off to the right and align it later using some of those tools. Okay. Now we could go ahead and go to 3d model extrude and select this profile. Now we want to go both directions, so symmetric. Um, we do want 0.75, so if it's defaulting 0.75, just leave it. Now the taper, hit the little arrow to the right of that, and it should remember our minus seven degrees. So go ahead and select that again. If not, type it in. And by the way, if you add positive seven, it would actually flare outward. And the reason draft is added so it could pull out of a mold easier, just like an ice cube tray. When you have the ice, if, the, if there was no draft on the sides of an ice cube, if it were perfectly straight, it'd be very difficult to pull it out of the mold, which is like a matching box. So by putting draft in, you could let it release. It releases a lot easier. Okay, go ahead and hit okay there. Let's go to the fillet tool and leave it at 0.125. Select this edge, this one here, that one there and this one. So the length of the handle, and we're trying to uh, get that. Now, here's a little bit of uh, in manufacturing engineering. Fillets, they are for aesthetics many times. It gives it a, a nice appearance, rounded edge. Also for safety, you don't want someone on a handle section cutting their hand on a sharp edge. But when it comes to molding, or in this case, drop forging, fillets are put in so that the material can actually flow when they're actually squeezing it or molding it. And so there's a, there's another reason for fillets. And also arch, Roman art, archways, like if you've ever seen the aqueducts in Italy or Spain, those are actually, you see the archways and that actually is structural purpose. So there's a lot of reasons for fillets. In this case, this is more for molding as well as for the hands so it's not sharp. So aesthetics and mold and purpose, manufacturing. All right, um, now go down here and click on add, click to add and change this next one down below to 0.06. And now select these edges where the head meets the transition, shift and rotate these edges here. And then these edges around here. Oh, you know what? Um, because this is taking a lot longer than I would have liked, but um, the tangent edge is not being followed. If we would have put it on afterwards, we had, notice how we had to select all those edges. That takes a long time. A better strategy, let me go ahead and hit OK. Now, we didn't get the backside yet, but watch this. A better strategy would have been to hit OK and add them in separately. So we still have 0.06, watch this. It follows around the tangent edges. So there's two different strategies. One saves you a little bit of time. One actually integrates it in the same feature you get to decide what you want to do there. Okay, let's put the text in. Select this face of the handle, start a sketch, zoom up. Remember you have the ability to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. Now take the line tool and down here offset just a little bit from this edge and into the left. So like mine is X 0.25 ish, Y minus 7.4 ish. 
get around that area, click and drag it across. Um, and like mine is about 3.3-ish or 3.4-ish in length, and that's 90 degrees. Click, hit escape. That's the line that's going to have our text on it. And again, your company might have, might force you or want you to make that a construction line, which is easy to do. You just click on it, go right up here to construction or as a center line. But Inventor doesn't make you do that. Now we're going to go over here to uh, find geometry text. Select that line, and then this pops up. First of all, let's set the size to 0.45, roughly. You could change it to a half inch or make it smaller later. Now go down here and type in uh, type in part of your name. Remember, there's not a lot of space there, so keep it short. Maybe your initials. I'm going to go ahead and put in inventor. Oops. And you could um, select it and pick a different font as well if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to go with, I have a one on here I really like. And most people don't have it. Arrow, it's kind of a cool one. But uh, you can pick whatever you like. And you probably don't have Arrow. Arrow is one I had to add in. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and hit update, and then you could see if it fits or not. In this case, it's fitting perfectly for me, but if it's not fitting perfectly, if it's just your initials, you might want to center justify right here. You could click on that, or you could write justify. Now, if you're doing molding, if you're making an engraving in a mold, you could hit inside and it will flip it around, or I should say change the direction around or both. Go ahead and hit OK when you're ready. Now let's go to 3D Model Extrude select the actual text and this time we want to have it engraved so it actually cuts out so flip this direction put in 0 0.02 and make sure right here cut is selected cut is going to remove the material making the engraving hit ok and there it is all right now that completes exercise three, but now there's the two labs, E3 and E3B. So let's take a look at those. Now, in the training guide, that just ends after the exercise three chapter. So if you scroll down, you'll find the drawings right here on page 35 and 36. Now, I've shown you if you download it, you can actually rotate it then. So if I click on download here, I'm going to hit open with Firefox, and now I could go back to that page 36, and I could also hit this little arrow here and rotate counterclockwise. There, now we, could, we don't have to turn our head. I've seen a lot of students slant their head, and that's got to hurt your neck. You don't want to do that. Okay, now you can see this is very similar to the head of the ratchet. In fact, this incorporates almost every single thing we've done in this exercise three. And it looks like a different part with the exception of the head. So let's begin. Let's look at the parameters here. So we're looking at uh, 0.6 tangent edge, 35 degrees on the side. So it's dimension with angles versus we dimensioned by a distance of the height um, before. So it's a little different than 1.5, but there's no tangency in these corners here. So we're, we don't want tangent arc there. We're going to use a different type of arc, and I'll show you that. Then we're going to, once we get that all dimension two inches apart, we're going to go ahead and extrude that thickness is 0.61. And then it's going to have draft of 16 degrees. And then we're going to add this fillet, these two fillets here. We'll add the smallest one first, the largest one later. And that actually goes against 90% of the time. You actually want the larger fillets put in first and then the smaller ones. So let's go ahead and build this. Just go to new. Standard IPT, create, and start 2D sketch. And you can just draw it on the XY or the XZ, whichever one you prefer. Okay, now I'm going to take the line tool like we did last time with the head of the ratchet and get it up there. Remember, this is going to be about two inches, so might as well get it about two inches just for the perception of scale. Hit escape, go to the line tool again. Now down here, draw it out a line almost almost two inches, maybe less than, at, a, at an angle like this. Click, hit Escape, go to Mirror, select that line, and then go up here to the Mirror Line button, click on it, and select that vertical line you drew. Hit Apply, now we've mirrored it across. 
Now we could go to the tangent arc tool. Bottom gets a tangent arc, just like that. Hit escape. Now this next one does not get a tangent arc. So instead of that, let's try the three point. Now for three point, you click on this point and then this point, and then you could bow this out and see how you could have it be a little bit larger. You don't want it to be smooth. This almost looks like the Alienware head for uh, Dell computers. Okay, so now let's add the dimensions as it specifies. So this bottom arc is 0 0.6. This, uh, these two lines here are 35 degrees. Let me just verify that. It might be 35 or 34. That's 35. Okay. And now this is going to be one and a half. And the distance between centers, click on both centers, is going to be two. Now be careful. I see a lot of students dimension to the origin. Stay away from that. What we're going to do with that, hit escape, and now go to coincident constraint and select this bottom point to the origin. And now it moves it there. Hit escape. You can move these and relocate them so it looks a little bit nicer. And now we're ready. Let's go to 3D model, extrude boss. I'm going to go to isometric here. And this is supposed to be 0.61. Hit OK. All right, go to the fillet tool. Now, generally, I suggest start with the larger fillets, go to the smaller ones. This one, because of the complexity of this corner, it doesn't like it that direction. So this first fillet, we're going to put on the front edge, and that is 0.25, and then 0.5 for the other one. So right here, set, set this to point, whoops, 0.25. And we might have to actually hit OK. Now I could go to fillet and then 0.5 for the next one. And I just realized I forgot to add draft. But that's OK. Hit OK. So we have this. It's not right just yet. To fix it, click on the extrusion in the model tree. Right, right click. And you could go over here. And right here, you'll see this, this option here is to edit the actual extrusion. Let's click on that. And then here with taper, this is going to be 16 degrees. And probably, uh, you don't have to type a negative all the time, but look at how it's flaring out. Instead, you could just hit flip direction and it puts the negative in front of it for you. Nice little thing it does there. Hit OK. All right, now we're looking more like the real part. Now, uh, let's go ahead and put the through hole in. Start a sketch on the surface. Go to the circle tool. And remember how to wake this up. Hover over the edge. There it is. Click on it, drag it out. This is, I believe, one inch, but let's verify that. Yep, one inch through. And now we could go to 3D model, extrude, select that profile, flip the direction, make sure it's through all, and hit OK. Now let's make that little cutout for the keyway. Select this face, go to extrude. This one, uh, we could do our little trick again if you wanted to. Um, we could make that little box. We'll make it two, hit tab by 0.25. And I'm gonna hit escape. I'm gonna just drag that over here. And then our little trick was this. And again, you don't have to do it like this. From the other geometry we've drawn, you all seen how to do a center rectangle from last week's lab. But anyhow, we could go ahead and just click on that. I'm just doing this to show you. There we go, we've aligned it. And now we just have to put in the dimensions. And it's 0.25 from edge to the center point. So let's go to dimension. So from this to this, or we could have just dimensioned that line, actually. I don't know why I just didn't do that, 0.25. And that's it. Now, notice it's just going to cut air there, so it doesn't matter. That's why I just made it two inches. I just didn't want it to cut into the top. 3D model, extrude, flip direction, 0.25 deep. No draft. All right, now for the back side, select this face, start a sketch. Now we have to use the offset tool. Now the offset, as we saw earlier, this one's going to be 0.1 with 16 degrees of draft, and it's cut in a quarter of an inch. So let's go to project geometry, select this face. Now go to offset, select the outer edge, drag it in, 0.1, hit enter. Go to 3D model, extrude, select that geometry, 
We could even select this because we're going to add draft. Select that center to close it off because this is going to actually remove material. We're going to flip it and it's going to go 0.25, which that's what it's defaulting to, which is good. And then the 16 degrees, minus 16, there we go. Hit OK. And it is brass as specified. So up here under generic, find brass. Should be alphabetic. There we go. Soft yellow brass. And now the text that runs over the top, you could select this face, start a sketch. Now you could use the, uh, let's go with, uh, not, not circle, actually, let's go to center point arc. Hover over this edge, locate that center point. We haven't used this one yet. Drag it out. And right about here, like my, I'm at about 105 degrees at uh, point, let's get it in a little bit, maybe 0.65. Click and drag it across there then hit escape. Now click on that, go to geometry text and go ahead and type in whatever you want on there. Center justify it, update it, and center justify didn't do what I'd hoped for. Let's see, straighten it out, hit the apply. Um, let's hit this one, update. Okay, none of them are really, yeah, the center just is not working. So we could probably put in Let's see here. Let's put in 345. Yep, 45 degrees at the, as a start angle. All right, that helps send it. You might have to put in a different one. All right, hit OK. Now click on that text. Go to 3D Model, Extrude. And if you want it embossed, just have it go up 0.02 or if you want to flip it, cut it, flip that and select remove or cut, I should say. Hit OK. And now it's engraved. And remember, you could go to view, visual style, realistic. Uh, apparently, this is not a polished brass. Let's see, maybe if we render it with ray tracing. Nope, not a polished brass. That's no fun. Let's turn it off. Uh, let's see if we could find, oh yeah, it's a satin finish. There, I think there is a polished brass. So if we find, might be under P. Let's try gl glossy gold. Oh, whoa. Okay, anyhow, you could take around, find it. I think there's a polished brass somewhere in there. And that completes lab two. Just go to file, save as lab two or L2. All right, the next exercise is like a, a dish frisbee type of deal. So looking at this one, let's uh, take a look at the guy here, lab 3B. We can see here the overall height is one and a half inches. There's a hole in the center of one inch, so it's going to be offset from the left of the center, a half inch, of course. 2.25 parallel lines that are an angle of 25 degrees and there's a stair there's a little step and then a fillet of half inch and everything is 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 and then 0 0.375 so let's, let's let's do this one go to um, let me, new standard eye part create go to start 2d sketch and you can do this one on the xy Again, it really is up to you where you want to put it. I'm going to go ahead and put in a center line here using an object line. And we know it's supposed to be about an inch and a half. So I'm going to zoom up, zoom out. There we go. Hit escape. Now I'm going to go to the line tool. And out here, about X should be about minus 0.25-ish. Because remember, it's going to be, uh, actually, it would be twice that 0.5 because it's a hole. So about 0.5-ish. Minus 0.5. Click, drag out about that height at an angle. We'll put the angle in later. Click, drag this out horizontally. This one, uh, don't worry about that dimension just yet. Click, drag this down. Make sure, look at that. As I snap, see the little box to the right of my pointer? That's parallelism. We want that. Get that down a little bit further. Right about there. Click, drag this out pretty darn far. Make sure it's horizontal. Click, find parallelism again. Click, drag that in, and this one kind of dives in a little bit deeper. It doesn't align itself to the other parallel line. And then this one goes down, click, 
and then close it. Now let's go to dimension. To dimension these, don't dimension by the lines, actually dimension from like here to here. And then this is going to be 0.375. Oops. And the overall height, let's dimension that first. And that's going to be 1.5. And then from here to this bottom line, it's going to be 0.25. From here to here, 0.25. And then let's take a look at that drawing again. 0.25 for that bottom one. So from here to here, 0.25. And from here to here, I think that's 2.5, but let's verify. Yep, uh, 2.25. Okay, now we need to get that in down here. So let's click here and go to coincident and that point to this line here. Darn it, uh, I didn't want that. Hit undo. I wanted the actual edge. Uh, what we can do, let's try that. Let's see. Coincident, but we don't want a point. We want the edge. There we go. To this point. There we go. All right. So just be careful. Don't do point to point or else it will move it over. This actually just drags it down. Now, from this point to our line, oh, darn, I forgot to turn that off. Hit undo. Sorry about that, folks. All right, dimension from this point to the line. And notice it's not giving us a diameter. That's because I, I made that as an object line. It's If it had the dashes in it, which is a center line, it would know to make it a diameter. So actually, we might want to do that. Let's click on this, turn on center line. So I hit escape, selected the line, went to center line. And now I'm done with that. Now I could go ahead and go to dimension, click on this point to this line. There we go. And make that one inch. And now there is a fillet that belongs in there, but what we're going to do, we'll put that in as a feature. So I go to 3D model, extrude boss. Oh, not extrude boss, sorry, a revolve. There we go. And because it was a center line, it automatically detected it. So we're in good shape. It was the only center line in there. And see, it's revolving. Hit OK. Go to the fillet feature, change it to 0.5. Select that edge and hit OK. Now, what's better? Fill it as a feature or fill it as a sketch tool? Well, what's more efficient is actually for the computer or for the resources on the computer. It's actually fillets that are put into the sketch. Every additional feature you have actually takes up more resources. We're talking small amounts these days, but back in the day when I was first using 3D CAD, it might take five minutes to put that fillet feature in, and then every time you rebuilt it, it would have to do that. So it was more efficient to draw it into the sketch. The problem with that is when you're drawing things into the sketch, it makes the sketch much more difficult to control. Um, until you're more advanced, I don't recommend putting too many of those features into the sketch. Um, but right now you can just put them as uh, optional uh, features, as uh, true features, 3D features. Okay, and that concludes this exercise. Welcome back. I'm Chris Sikora, and I'm going to step you through exercise four in Inventor 2021. This exercise deals with what you see up on the screen there. Um, some of its review as far as making these uh, revolve features that we see here for this hand wheel. But uh, what we're going to learn that's uh, interesting here is the sweep tool. Now, the sweep tool is the very first of the tools we're going to learn for freeform design. Freeform design basically enables you to create pretty much all the other non-prismatic shapes that are out there. Like, for example, a prismatic shape is just a box or a sphere or radius, whereas uh, freeform shapes are more organic in nature. Like if you wanted to design uh, something that looked like a leaf or something, or a car body or an airplane, that's where we're starting to get into with sweeps. And this is a very basic sweep but they're very useful. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. First of all, go to new standard IPT and hit create. Uh, go ahead and click on start 2D sketch, select the XY plane. Now, 
if you're wondering where we're going to get this information from, as usual, we're going to the Vertanu1 webpage, V-E-R-T-A-N-U-X-1.com. And from in here, just go to the instructional manuals and you'll see the Autodesk Inventor in the green there. Go ahead and click on that. It'll bring up the, the manual. And here you could actually get to page 37 to the beginning. You can see the dimensions that are right here. We might do it a little bit different than what you see here, but uh, we'll still use the dimensions. Okay, so let's start off with the rectangle. And notice the rectangle I picked is just a two point. So click on this origin when you get the green dot, drag it up and make that one inch for the width. Hit the tab key and go ahead and type in three for the next one. And now you could click on front here and it should give you uh, what we're looking at here. Okay, now what we're gonna do is hit escape and I wanna show you a new tool, a tool we haven't yet used. We've used chamfers and fillets but we haven't used a sketch chamfer yet. And so a sketch chamfer is found right over here. Sometimes you'll see fillet or chamfer. Hit the little arrow to the right of uh, fillet if you don't see it, and chamfer should be below it. Click on that. Now here you have the ability to set a distance to distance, angle to distance, and so on and so forth. We actually want this to be 0.25. We're gonna leave it at distance to distance because this is a 90 degree angle, it's gonna come out 45 degrees. So go ahead and select that vertex there and it should automatically put in the chamfer. And you can see the dimensions and the FX means that they're tied together. So if one changes, the other one will update as well. And it's not a bad idea to pull out some of these dimensions just from the standpoint of making it look uh, organized and easier to read. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put like a little a radius here, a circle. So go to the circle tool and locate yourself uh, right about here. Notice I'm inferring to the 0.25 top edge of the chamfer. And right in the middle that your Y should be about 1.7 ish. Click, drag it out and make it one inch. And now let's go to dimension and dimension the center position of that to the bottom edge. Drag your dimension to the left and make it 1.75. Now, to locate it, we could actually use a constraint here. If you click on vertical constraint, select the center point of the circle to the top vertex of the chamfer, and that aligns it and it should constrain it. Now you can see below here, it says it's fully constrained. Now, we haven't really talked about fully constrained too much in, this, uh, in the previous exercises. Fully constrained means that you've added all the dimensions and all the relations necessary to where there's no more needed. Uh, and essentially that is what you typically want before you go into production with something. Uh, but initially though, when you're just working on conceptual work, it's all right to basically not put all the dimensions in, but later on you might want to add those and relations and constraints. So I'm going to go ahead and hit escape here. I'm going to drag this dimension out a little bit. Now, Inventor doesn't make you trim this information out, and we've learned the trim tool last week, so we're going to leave it. We're going to leave it as is. Now we're going to go to 3D Model, and we're going to go to Revolve. Now let's click on the Home button up here so we can see what's going on. First of all, remember here, the blue line that's looking for selected profiles. So click here, here, and here. This negates us needing to select the trim and trim that stuff out. Now then click on select axis and you can use this right edge of the model as the axis and hit OK. Now in the book, you'll see that I dimensioned with diameters and such, and that's because I used a center line. Uh, as I'm seeing now, not as many people are, are using the center line because it's just uh, more efficient maybe to do it this way. And, uh, but note that the center line, as I showed you in exercise two, is very crucial. And your employer may or may not want you to use that, those center lines when you're revolving around, just for the point of having construction geometry and understanding what's going on. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and let's select the little... Okay, and so from here, we're gonna go ahead and hit the little plus symbol next to the origins folder and find your X, Y plane. Click on it, and then you could go right here to create sketch.
Okay, I'm just going to center it a little bit with my wheel rolling it in and out for zoom. And what we're going to use next, if you hit the little arrow underneath line, you'll find splines. There's control vertex, interpolation, equation curve, and bridge curve. Now, um, the difference between control vertex and interpolation is basically interpolation is a much stronger control than the, uh, it's just easier to use especially those who are um, very artist. Uh, it, it gives you these control handles that are easy to manipulate. However, for new users, I find that the interpolated spline is actually easier to master initially for the first day. So we're not going to look at the control vertex, but, uh, but note that that is probably what most professionals use for freeform design. But let's go ahead and use this uh, spline interpolation. Move your pointer to the center, and you'll see you can infer to the center, but not really the center of the, the hub in the middle. So right about there, just click. Now drag this out and maybe uh, infer to this edge, and you'll see the center point appear. Click on that, then click on this point, and now start dragging it up. And I'm just clicking and adding points, and these control points are going to make my curve look interesting. Eventually when you get uh, maybe about a half dozen, six different control points that I've added and it looks similar to mine, go ahead and hit OK. Now if you don't like what you see, all you do is you grab these points and you could smooth out the curve or make it more dramatic, however you want. But you don't want it overly dramatic, so just be aware that that can um, lead to some geometry that's difficult to sweep along. You don't want it to tie itself in a knot, per se, and then have the solid do the same. It will it'll fail to actually merge in many cases. So once you have that the way you like it, notice I didn't use any dimensions. Just kind of visually, just have a little fun with it. Get it how you like it. And go ahead, and now we're going to go to uh, Finish Sketch. And what we're going to do, we're going to create a plane. And this is my favorite plane tool. Because with this plane tool, you could create a plane virtually at any any angle going anywhere. And it's really, it's just based off of, it's a perpendicular plane to a curve. So what you could do, you could hit over here on this uh, plane tool up here, and you'll see normal to curve at point. That's the tool. You don't necessarily need to select this in advance. You could actually control select the end point where you want the plane and then the curve that it's attached to and then go to just the plane at the top and it'll create it. But let's go normal to curve. Click on that point and then click on the curve and there's our plane. So we just created a work plane. And again, that's my favorite because imagine you could draw lines anywhere and then say, um, I want that, a plane perpendicular to that end point. So, all right, now that we have that, let's go ahead and select it, select the edge of it and go to create sketch. Now yours might rotate a little bit different than mine, that's okay. Go to the circle tool and get to the center of that. And when you get the little yellow dot, click and drag out. And we're just gonna make this 0.5. Now, because I'm letting you have carte blanche on how that curve's looking, if you have a very tight curve, uh, it may fail to sweep a half inch diameter circle. So if you have that issue, because I'm not there to actually see what you're doing, uh, my recommendation might be to either smooth out the original curve or just make the circle smaller so that you could get past it uh, and maybe make it 0.25 or 0.125 if that fails. And usually one of those will work. Just from my experience teaching this as long as I have, just seen a lot of students um, have a little bit of a challenge there because we didn't use a dimension. Okay, let's go to finish sketch. We didn't really need to hit finish sketch, but um, anyway, let's. I like to hide this work plane. So if you remember from last exercise E3, if you right click on the edge at the four o'clock wheel there, turn off visibility and then that hides it. Okay, now we're ready. Let's go to sweep. And it automatically had my profile selected for me, apparently because that was the last thing I drew. If yours doesn't have anything in here and if it's red, mm -hmm. click in there to get the blue bar and select that circle. But now uh, I didn't have to do that, so I'm going to go click over here and you can see the blue bar is underneath. Oh, actually, I clicked on it a second time and turned it off, so be careful. It's like a light switch. So make sure you have that blue bar underneath there and I'll select the curve. 
and you should be able to see the curve sweeping along into the model. Go ahead and hit OK. And that's the sweep. And look at how it has that freeform shape. All right, now moving along, we want to pattern this. So go ahead and you could select the feature right here on the surface, or you could find it on the model tree over here. Go to circular, and we're going to set this uh, the rotation axis. I'm going to select this hub. What's really kind of neat, um, I always like to point out a strength that CAD softwares have whenever I make videos for the different ones. And this is one that I really like is it allows you to select any cylindrical face, even if it has a, a radius around that. So it's a complex face. That should do it. Not all CAD systems can do that. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and put in, let's put in three instances, 360 degrees, hit OK. And so we've just created our circular pattern. And, and we learned circular patterns with the rib tool in exercise two. So that's not really anything new that we've done there. OK, let's now move along to the XY plane and go over here and start a sketch. Now I'm going to click on front to center it. Go to the circle tool and find the midpoint of this edge over here on the left. Click and drag on a circle, make it one inch, type it in. And now go to the spline tool, hit the little arrow underneath spline, and go back to a line. We're going to draw on at the origin here, click and drag out a vertical line, hit escape. And that's so we have an axis of revolution. Now let's uh, rotate this around. Let's go to 3D model and revolve. So it automatically selected our profile again, which is nice, and it's just looking for the axis. So go ahead and select the center and hit OK. All right, now there are other ways to get an axis center where you don't have to draw it. You could uh, show a sketch from an earlier sketch that was in there and use the edge and things like that. But um, I just wanted to show you, sometimes it's just better to create a fresh one. OK, let's go to the fillet tool and set the fillets to 0.25 and proceed to select all these edges here. And you can use the x-ray vision. Oops, I, eh, I didn't really want it on that edge, but that's okay. Suppose I'll just get the other one underneath the two. And we can select these edges. And we, we won't select the bottom edge because I have plans for that. All right, so we've got some fillets in there. Now let's go ahead and rotate it to the, the bottom side. Now I want to show you the hole tool. We've seen how to cut holes just by drawing a circle, going to extrude and remove the material. The hole tool here is actually very, very nice. Uh, I was just using it today, and with some of the updates since the last time I used it, it's getting up there. It's pretty strong. So um, let's try it. The hole tool. Now, notice you have simple hole, clearance hole, tapped hole, uh, tapered, so like for national pipe thread, and you have counterbore. So let's go ahead and let's put a tapped hole in. So select tapped, and then select counterbore. Now notice here you have libraries, ANSI and ISO libraries, metric and uh, English. Let's keep it at a quarter inch, and actually look at this, the designation, quarter 20 UNC. If you hit the little arrow, UNS, UNEF. So you have all the standards. And this is why I was just like really impressed with this recently. They did have this functionality in it before, but never has it been so easy to use. It's really quite nice. And your classifications, as well as the termination, like let's go with the distance. And the distance right now is mine's defaulting 0.75. I'd like that. The thread, we'll have it go a half inch. And the rest of these parameters, pretty much that's just due to the uh, selecting quarter 20. I didn't really change anything. Now, go ahead and select where you'd like to put it. Now, here's the thing. You can put them anywhere just by clicking on points and then putting dimensions in to locate it. But let's say we want to uh, specifically get it centered. First of all, set it off center a little bit, like right here, just click. And you can see a nice preview there. Now, go ahead and grab that center point and drag it to the edge. And actually, there it is. It, it just uh, highlighted the center. Let's get it on center there. And when you get the green dot, release it. 
And if you want to, you can make any changes you want here too. Go ahead and hit OK. And as we go up, look at that, it actually has a cosmetic thread. That's something you can actually see it. Cosmetic threads are used generally. They're just an overlay, a texture that appears to be like looking like a thread. And the reason you want to use those typically for common ones like this is, uh, you know, UNC 20, uh, quarter 20 is because to have real or true threads cut in there uses a tremendous amount of system resources. And usually you have, you can have hundreds, if not thousands, tens of thousands of little screws and holes. And you don't want to have those as real geometry because each one of those is broken up into a collection of polygons. Each polygon takes up bytes of memory. And so it uh, really drags the system down. So that's why cosmetic threads are desirable. There is the regular thread tool. So if you're making something that's a unique thread, for example, um, like for a bottle or something, that's where you want to put in a real thread so you can get it in there and then mold it or whatever you need to do. So uh, anyhow, that's, that's it for that. Okay, so that's exercise four. Now, I usually do like you to enhance it. You don't have to really enhance it much more. I'm just going to go over here and select... Um, I just like to go with like Chrome sometimes and maybe add a little surface that uh, stands out a little bit differently than the rest of it. So I'll go with dark green. And then we could use this. Uh, we could go to view, turn on perspective. And again, I like to use like two lights or one light really gives it a nice shine. And once you have that, you could actually go over here to visual style, go to realistic, it even looks better. And to make it really look polished, click on ray tracing. And again, the longer you let it go, and if you set it to draft or hide, it takes a long time. I have actually 16 cores, actually 32 threads running right now, and it still takes a little bit of time there. So now that we have that rendering, we're just alt print screen. And if you remember, we've been keeping track. Those of you in my class, uh, IMT 110, I want you to go make sure you're using either Microsoft Office or this one here. I'm going to go ahead and start that. Apparently, I closed it without finishing it. And you can see this is what your portfolio should start looking like. I actually ended up updating a little bit and just going with the green and silver look uh, just because I really kind of liked it. But you could do whatever you want. I really encourage trying different things. Now, I'm going to control V to paste that. And now I'm going to go over here to the crop and drag that in, drag that one in. I can drag that over. So we have one of them done. Now the lab, there's only one lab today for this week. And the reason why is because it's a tough one. And I, I suggest trying it on your own, but feel free to watch my video here. I'm going to start it up in just a second. But, uh, Okay, let's turn off ray tracing. So here we go. Let's take a look at what it looks like. And I haven't modeled this in Inventor in years, so forgive me. Uh, I'm going to probably choke on it every so often trying to get it done. But uh, here I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. It's actually on page 46. I'm going to rotate counterclockwise. Remember how to do that? You have to download this first. And then you could click on it to open it and it opens up in the browser and all the different browsers have rotate differently. Like here, some browsers you could right click and rotate if you want. And that's just so you're not having to turn your, your head. This is a hard enough print to read, let alone at an angle. Okay, so we could see this uses the same modeling theory that we saw with exercise three last week. So in this case, um, it's a Raise 0.75 at the bottom. That's tangent on those edges, and then it uh, we have 23 degree angles off there, and then 115 degree angle off of that, and then we have a dome over the top of 1.5, and the distance between centers is 1.25, and distance between that corner and the bottom center is one inch. So I'm going to drag this over, and we'll build that right now. So I'm going to go new standard IPT create. And this is lab four. So I'm going to go now to start 2D sketch. I'm going to go ahead and do it on the XZ plane, which is the top plane. And I'm going to proceed with a line 
so I can mirror across. And we'll get it to scale. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And let's see, maybe about an inch and a half in height. That's pretty good. Hit escape. Now I go to the line tool again down here about y.5 and x minus 0.3 ish. Click, drag out a line about an inch long. Click, drag out another one uh, another, about a half inch and look, it's about 115 degrees. Remember, that's almost exactly what the print says. It actually is. So click, hit escape. Now I go to mirror and it's looking to select these two pieces of geometry. So I'm just going to window over them. Now I'm going to go to mirror line and select that line we drew. Hit apply and done. All right, let's go now to the arc tools. Go to tangent arc and down below here, click and drag this around and make sure you get the green dot to lock it in. The next one is not tangent. So we're going to go with a three point. Click here straight across, get the green point drag it up. And remember, this is supposed to be 1.5. So we could actually just plug that number in right now if we want to. All right, I'm going to hit escape. Let's go to dimension. Now, let's dimension from here to here. And this is going to be 115. And then from here to here, that's going to be 23. And then this bottom arc is 0.75. Okay. Now mine's updating pretty well. If yours doesn't update, you might have drawn something over scale considerably or under scale. And so it kind of uh, locks up a little bit. It doesn't lock up. You just have to maybe try put in a different dimension or just grab a point and drag it and maybe get it more looking like what it's supposed to be. Anyhow, let's uh, move these out of the way here. And have that 1.5. Let me get that hit escape here. Ah, it's making it tough for me to grab that little point. Not sure why. That's okay though. We could grab it later. All right, now I need to add some of those other dimensions. So I'm going to go back to dimension. This bottom center point to the top center point right up here. Um, actually, let's make sure we get the proper center point. I think we have two of them there. Actually, oh boy, it's hard because I. this is why it's not a bad idea to use actually a center line. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to click on this line and then change to a center line and then click off of it. All right, so now I can see that that's the point there. And Oh, look at that. I locked into it. I didn't realize that. Okay, let's uh, see if we're going to have trouble with that. Maybe click here to here. And this is some supposed to be 1.25. All right, it's not looking too good just yet, but let's see if we could click on this vertex to this center point, and that distance is going to be 1. Okay, it worked. All right, so I was getting a little nervous there. Like I said, I haven't done this one in a couple of years on this system, but uh, looks like we got it. All right, now we're going to proceed to extrude it, and according to the print, the extrusion thickness is right here. It's a half inch. So let's, oh, and also there's 25 degrees of draft. So go to 3D model, extrude boss. And we're going to go ahead and put in the distance of 0.5. And the taper is to be 25 degrees. Okay, now what I forgot to flip, I should have put minus 25 degrees. So easy fix. I just go over here. Right click and there's edit feature. And from here, I could actually hit this reverse switch. And there we go. And I put a little minus symbol in front of it. So it's a negative now. Let's go ahead and go to the fillet tool. And the fillet for this is called out on print and half inch. Select this edge, hit OK. Now there is a chamfer that goes along this edge. And we're looking at the print. It's 30 degrees off of the 25 that's already based there. And so, and also if we're looking at this, let's bring this up, the location is 0 0.181 off the bottom edge. So 0 0.181 by 30. So let's go over here to chamfer and we're going to go distance to angle. So 
0.181 and 30. Now select that top face and this edge. And actually, I believe I'm supposed to reverse that. Let me, uh, let's do that again. I think this face here and then this edge. There we go. All right, now we could go ahead and hit OK. So from there, we now have our uh, part ready to shell. We don't really have to put those other features in just yet. So let's flip it around and go to shell. And let's look at the print again. And the print, the typical wall thickness is 60,000, so 0 0.06. Select this back face to open it up and hit OK. All right, looking good there. Now we're gonna we'll put in those uh, cutouts. Select this face, start a sketch, and let's go counterclockwise. Get that line there. All right, from here I'm gonna go to the line tool, and I am gonna use the center line, just so I don't have that same issue where I can't tell the difference of what I'm looking at. So I'm gonna draw that, hit escape, then turn off the center line tool. That's the reason why I'm kind of avoiding it because in this software you have to turn it off, but you don't really have to use it to begin with. If you're an advanced user, you're gonna be fine. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, and let's see here. I do believe actually I might have, I guess we're okay. I think I, I, I should have centered this. I didn't center it. But let's, uh, we, should, we should be able to go back to that in a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna take the line tool and right up here, right in there, I'm gonna click and drag out a little angled line. Like so I'm gonna go ahead and go to mirror, select that line to mirror, and the mirror line is the center line. Hit apply, done. Let's go to tangent arc, the bottom here, and put that in, and then the top one here. And now we should add some dimensions to that. So the bottom arc is to be 0.1. The top arc is 0.2. And the distance between the centers on that one is a half inch. Okay. And now look at this. I went a little too quickly here. So I want to get that aligned. So I want it to be tangent actually. So I'm going to select tangent. Select that curve, and this one, that will smooth it out. So if that ever happens to you, I just went a little too quick, I think, and I didn't get the green dot like I'd hoped. Now we need to center the, the dimension. There's actually a bolt circle, and that bolt circle is 0.835. And so essentially, if we want to do that, we could. We could go to Circle and turn on Construction and highlight this edge until you see the center. And there it is. And 0.835. Is that right? Yep, 0.835. And hit escape and turn off that uh, tool. Turn off that tool. Now, actually, I'm going to go ahead and click on this with the right mouse button and change it to construction because it didn't make it a center line like that. The center lines are explicit to that. OK, and so in theory, um, oh, you know what? I was wrong on that. I'm sorry. We're looking at this one right here, which is a radius of 0.7. Okay, so technically we didn't need that one. Here's what we can do instead. Let's just go add a dimension. Since it's a radius, it makes it easy, actually. We could click here to the center point. And again, that was point, I just want to make sure, 0.7. Okay. There, now it's located. Could have probably even made that tangent to that top edge, but I'm not sure if that, when I designed this years ago, I, that wasn't my intention. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut that through. Now we could do a circular pattern of sketches. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple different tricks here. Let's go to 3D model, extrude, select that profile and these profiles. Reverse the direction, it should cut. Make sure it's set to through all and hit OK. Now that we have that, we look at the drawing here. 
they are 24 degrees off center from each other, and there's two on this side and two on that side. So let's go ahead and select that extrusion, go to circular, and the rotation axis, select this right here. All right, now you know we could go around and turn off individual ones. Let me just show you here. If we went with um, 24 degrees, oops, I didn't want that. Right click, edit feature, I didn't want to hit enter. So we have 24 degrees, and let's just go with three. Actually, it's just, that's per one. So we actually have two there. Oh, darn it, I keep hitting enter. Uh, edit feature, sorry about that. I had to right click, edit feature. Okay, so we see that there. Um, we have actually, we have fixed. Oh no, we don't want fixed, I'm sorry. We want rotational. And if we double this to 48, now in that theory, we can change it to three there, and then we've got it. All right, hit OK. Now, if we want to get them to the other side, now we could have gone all the way around with an array and figured that out, but um, I wanted to show you also you can mirror these over too. So if we select the extrusion, hold Control, select the circular pattern, go to Mirror. In theory, we should be able to select our right plane, which is the X, Y plane. All right, and the, let's see, did it get it? I'm not seeing a preview, no, it didn't take, so let's edit that. All right, so the features, we've got to select this. There we go. Okay, we just need those two selected and hit okay. All right, and there it is. Now we could continue on with the boss on the front here. Start a sketch, I'm gonna rotate this vertically. Go to the circle, now to wake this up, I just tap the edge, but don't click. Find that center point, drag it out, 0 0.868, was it 0.868, let me look. 0.835, oh. so double click on that, 0.835. All right, and then that's 30 thousandths in height, so we're gonna extrude. So 0 0.03. Now we want to put a cutout on there. And there's a little, there's an array of little holes. You know, here's what we're going to do with that. Select this face, start sketch. Let's get that rotated a bit again. Okay. And we're going to look at that print. And we can see it's a rectangle of 0.1 vertical and by 0 0.05 wide it's centered and it's located the base of it's located 0 0.371 from center so let's try that let's go to use a two-point center get right over here let it float drag it out and let's make that 0 0.1 hit tab by 0 0.05 Hit escape. Now we go to dimension and dimension this bottom edge. If we select this, we should be able to get to center. There we go. And click, and then this is to be 0 0.371. And then it's located. Now we could hit 3D model, extrude zoom up and select those two profiles, flip the direction through all, and hit OK. Now let's put some fillets on here. Now the radius is called out on here. You have to probably zoom up to see it. Let's see here. On a side view, there's a 100 thousandths on the inside. And then there's a, I believe a 30 thousandths radius, yep, around the outside of that. So let's go ahead and put those in. So let's get this fill it in first. And it's supposed to be 0 0.03. Select this edge here and hit OK. Now we want to keep it separate from this next one. So now I go back to fill it. This one's going to be 0 0.1. And it's going to just be this edge here. It's going to give us a really interesting looking effect when we're done. And hit OK. Right now we want to pattern that hole and that fillet. So let's select fillet three and extrusion 
4, holding control. Go to circular, the rotation axis, you can select this face. And again, because Inventor does it that way, it's rather unique actually. It's, it's a very nice feature to be able to select that filleted face that's rounded as a axis of rotation. Now the placement, let's count how many we have there. I don't think I have it on the print. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Hit OK. All right, this next feature, there's no dimension for because it's just a logo. You're welcome to make your own logo. You don't have to do the one I did. I did like, um, a, kind of looks like a Death Star, I suppose. I didn't put any dimensions on it, just like that. And then extrude, select that, and I'm going to have it cut down, but I only want it to cut like 0.01, just barely uh, recessed. Okay, let's flip it around this side. Let's get the inside now. Select this face, start a sketch. There's two concentric rings on the print, an ID of one. Let's uh, find that center. There it is. I just woke up that center. And uh, there's one. the OD actually is 0.6. And the ID is 0.1. You could do an offset, I suppose. Oh, not, I'm sorry, 0 0.0, 0 0.5. And then go to 3D model, extrude, select that profile. And let's look on the print, what that's called out right here. If we follow this along, it's 0.13. Okay, now the boss is select this face, start a sketch. This one in the center is much easier, so I'm going to go circle, and I have to wake up the center point. Now, normally I should have actually had that locked in there. You can see we could get by without it, but it is sometimes nice to lock into the origin. And I'm going to show you how I could go back and fix that if you wanted to. So I'm going to click here, and these are 0.125 if I'm correct. Let's again, look at the print. Another 0.175, three of them, and then there's a recess in it, 0.1 deep by 0.1 diameter. And there is draft on those, and I don't think I called out the draft, but we could put the draft on, that's fine. We'll put like one degree. So hit escape, it's 0.175. And let's draw another one over here. We're just going to eyeball that one. Now I'm just going to draw this one out, click, and then I'm going to hit Escape and Control select these two and go to Equal. That makes them both equal so I didn't have to add another dimension because we want them all to be the same. Now I want to get that over to the other side. Let's go to Line and go ahead and draw just a vertical line there to mirror across. I go to Mirror, select this. And then mirror line, select that, and apply and done. Now we could go to 3D model, extrude boss, select those three. And let's look at what the print calls out for the height of those 0.375. Oh, and I wanted to add drafts. So here's what you could do click on this, right click, and edit feature. And the taper, as they call it here. Let's just add like one degree and actually flip it so it's one degree minus one. And again, the reason for draft is so it can pull out of the mold easier. Now I'll select this face here, start a sketch. And there's these bosses that are 100 thousandths by 100 thousandths. So we could draw those in, I suppose, right here, point one. And then I'm going to make these equal. So now I could go to equal, click on that, click on that, click on that, click on that. So again, they're all the same. Go to extrude, select those, and they get recessed actually. So flip the direction, make sure it's set to cut, and it's only 0.1 deep, and we're not going to add draft on those. All right, now all that's left if you want to add those ribs and 
here's how I'll show you how to do that. I don't have any specifications for the ribs other than maybe the thickness. We'll talk about that. Select this face right here. and That's the floor of that recess. Go to Create Sketch. And we can have a little fun with this. Let's go to um, the Line Tool. And we could put one in right about there. Notice I'm not touching the lines. We'll put one in right about there. And then here, could right click, create line rather than always going back to that. And over here, hit escape. Okay, now we want to get these over there. So we could actually use this line as our mirror. So go to mirror, select these two entities here and here. Go to mirror line, select that, and hit apply. Now let's try. I'm going to rotate this, and we're going to go to 3D model rib. And you can select these. Now they're really thick. Now there is actually a, a rule of plastics that goes along with this. Now those deactivated because it's too thick. Um, there's a 60% rule. Uh, the overall wall thickness um, on this, if I recall, was about 60 thousandths. Let's say it was 100 thousandths, 0.1. You should make the ribs on it 60% or less than 60% of the wall thickness. And the reason why is because that those masses of uh, plastic, as they intersect vertical ribs with the flat face, will actually cause sinkage when it cools and it will sink make little sink marks on the nice flat side so it's not flat anymore so if you've ever seen a poorly designed part that's why someone didn't reduce this so the overall wall thickness if i'm correct was a 60 thousandths i could look at the print and make sure but i'm pretty sure it was so we'll make it like 0.03 i mean you know we can make it oh, we'll just make a point four we'll get within range 0.04 Okay, we could also add draft to those two. Okay. Or taper. Okay, and hit OK. Now I got really sloppy with those. I should have actually centered them, but again, I didn't have any specifications right off the bat. But there it is. That is our part. That's a tough one, and that's what you're going to see in industry. You'll actually get better drawings, hopefully. Actually, sadly, actually, I used to get really, really bad drawings from customers, but uh, not all the time. But that's it for exercise four and lab four. Be sure to save this, and remember, do your alt print screen. I'd like to see if you could give it to me. Either, either side is fine, whichever side you'd like for your portfolio. Let's say I chose this side here. I really kind of like the inside. Let's go with that. And then we could go to default, and I'm going to go with Chrome Polished. And then I use I usually like to add a little bit of an enhancement on some of these faces. And let's go with the green, dark green there. And then we go to View. And you don't have to do this part, all these little details I'm doing. Realistic, ray tracing, and instead of the default IBL, like I like one light or two lights sometimes looks better. Okay, and that concludes this exercise. Welcome back. I'm Chris Sikora, and I'm going to step you through exercise five with Inventor 2021. Exercise five has to deal with assemblies and uh, what they call bottom-up assembly modeling. It's taking parts that are already built for us and assembling them. Now, there's something called top-down as well, where that's actually building parts in the context of the assembly. Typically, when you make an assembly, uh, you use both methods. Uh, usually, you don't see one or the other exclusively, um, because like what we're doing today would be like for nuts, bolts, springs, washers, common off-shelf components that you could grab from something like mcmastercar.com or uh, even other areas on the web, um, different vendors and such. But um, so this is actually probably the easiest thing to do is to assemble parts. 
Uh, we will cover uh, later uh, some assemblies from the top-down method. Okay, so anyhow, let's get started. This is what we're going to build today. And you can see it has it's a U-joint and it has a crank here. And when we're done, we should be able to grab the crank handle and rotate it. This is just the simple, sim uh, the simple assembly imported without any mates. So uh, we're going to have to learn how to mate it so that we could actually get dynamic assembly motion from it. So let's begin. When you start off, go to the Vertanu 1 webpage. So V is in Victor, E, R, T is in Tom, A, N is in Nancy, U, X, 1.com. And then go to the part files and find the exercise five parts. Just click on it and you'll hit download. It should take a moment and it should appear in the bottom left or the upper right, depending upon what browser you, you are using. I'm using Chrome. Here. So now once I click on that, it's a compressed format and you can see all the files here. So now I can just click and drag to surround them all or control A, I believe grabs them all. Now hit control C and let's go to um, where the folder where we've been dropping everything as of recently. So we could actually, uh, I actually have a folder already created. I think we created this one earlier and right click here, go to new folder and go ahead and label this E5, then double click on the folder until it opens up, and then hit Control V as in Victor to paste. And there's the files. Now, if you go over here to this little display items within the larger format, you could actually see there's one image. The rest of them don't have images because they're imported. But let's begin. Now we could, uh, there is inside the training guide there too, by the way, if you wanted to go into instructional manuals, there are some basic instructions, not a whole lot. So this video is very heavily weighted on actually the video versus the, the training guide. Okay, so we'll begin with a new, and you'll see there's assemblies. So this is our first time working with assemblies. They're standard and well met. We're gonna go with the standard IAM, hit create. Now, You'll notice that an assembly looks just like a part file. Well, very similar, at least it has its own origin, has its own uh, planes, X, Y, X, Z, and Y, Z planes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to place, and then we're gonna find those parts. So um, I actually had them um, in Inventor 2021, and I'm actually gonna use the one out of my T1, but you would go to your E5, and this is the one I already had up, so. Okay, the first part you're going to drop in is the sheet metal bracket. So select the sheet metal bracket from the list, hit open, and you can just click to drop it in there. Now, if you want additional ones, of course, you can keep clicking, but we only want one, so hit escape. Now, the very first part that gets dropped in, or actually any part, needs to be fixed in some manner. So what I recommend doing here is right-clicking on the part. So again, right mouse button click, and you're going to find grounded. And for the first part, it's just a good strategy to ground it typically. You could unground it later if you want, or you discover that you didn't want that one grounded. But imagine like if you're assembling a model and you would want something that's kind of locked in, you'd be holding it, you could put all the other pieces in it. So that's the theory behind that one. Okay, click off of it somewhere. Now we're gonna go to place again, and we're gonna find the yoke mail. Hit open and just drop that Drop that right there and then hit escape. Okay. And now we're going to constrain this. So if you go to the constraints here, click on constraint, you'll see there's an array of constraints to pick from. What we're looking for, we're just going to keep it on mate, which is kind of a standard. This flips it in or out. Okay, um, but we don't need to pick that just yet. What we're doing, we're going to align the actual centers, but you can select the outer face and it will automatically pick the, the center axis for us. So when you see that axis like this, that's good. Go ahead and click. Now be careful of here because you'll see little points that appear, those little green circles. That would be if you wanted like a ball joint, kind of like your shoulder. We don't want that here. We don't want it to have that much range of motion. So don't pick that center point. In fact, zoom up until you hover over the surface and see the axis appear. 
and select that. And you'll see it will move over. It even does a little pop. Okay, hit apply. Now remember, you're always going to have to hit apply once you've done that. And now if you want, you could actually grab this part and drag it. Now you'll notice you could move your mouse left and right and it swivels and you can move it up and down and it actually goes right through the part. There is interference detection as well as collision detection, but uh, we're not going to see that just yet. What I'd like you to do is drag this down. And essentially what we're doing here is removing the degrees of freedom, if you haven't noticed that already, by selecting the faces that we're going to attach. So that being said, I'm going to hit um, cancel here and drag it down, actually, because I had a surface selected and just wanted to make sure that I don't have that. Okay, now I'm going to go back to constraint. And now we're going to want to constrain this surface right here. So get your pointer over that surface. And notice there's a little cross with an arrow. Go ahead and select that. That's a face normal. Now with your shift in your middle wheel, remember if you push your wheel down, move your mouse forward, and you can see the underside. We want to snap that surface coincident to this surface here. So click on this surface right there. Look carefully what I'm clicking on and hit apply. You could actually just hit cancel after you hit apply. And now let's take a look at what we've just done here. If we grab that part, you'll see it will swivel. So you can make small circular motions to get it to rotate. Get the, um, see that yellow key way right there? Get that facing forward of the bracket, not on the side where the bend is taking place. Kind of like what I have. All right, now let's go to place. The next part we're looking for is the spider hinge. Go ahead and select the spider hinge. Drop that kind of between the legs of the yoke. And you'll see the colors here. We want to match up those colors. So go ahead and go to constraint. Select the axis of this blue hole that's adjacent to the blue face. So make sure you get that like right here to either one of the blue holes that's on the leg of the yoke. Make sure you get the axis. Hit apply. Now. You could select this blue face here or this one, but then notice you're going to have to rotate around to get the other. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and select this blue face here on the yoke leg. Now I'm going to shift and rotate. And if you're not rotating it, you're probably not doing it right. You have to rotate it because that would mean you're selecting probably the wrong face. So just be aware. Now you want this one over here and hit apply. And hit cancel. Let's bring in another part. Go to place. And this time we want the yoke female. Now this one's going to be a little tougher because there's more involved, but we start off the same way. Now this one, we want red faces to red faces, with the exception there's a blue face uh, perpendicular to the red face. That's the face we want to lock in. So let's go to constraint, select the red hole. And again, stay away from the green dots. We're never going to use the green dots today. So if you get a green dot, stay away from it. Make sure you get the axis instead. And the way to make sure you get that is zoom up if you can. Go ahead and go to axis here. And then find this one right here and click on axis. Hit apply. Now I'm going to select the red face of the yoke female over on this side. Remember, if you're not rotating it like this, you're not doing it right. Okay, now go ahead and select this face. I mean, it's possible you're doing it right if you're an advanced user, but most likely if, if you're you're probably not doing it right. If not. Okay, go ahead and uh, hit apply. So we selected that red face to that red face. Now let's hit cancel and you'll see if you grab this, it swivels up and around. We want that little green surface kind of pointed down. It's a little bit hard, but um, get it down like that. Kind of finagle it a little bit, maybe zoom out if you need help. Go to constraint. Now select this face right here and rotate and get this angled surface here on the sheet metal bracket. Select those two. Now you'll see it won't move automatically. So what we're going to want is um, actually we want a parallel constraint. So hit the little arrow here and use offset as resting position. And the reason why we needed that one is because if we rotate, you'll see that there's a gap between it. Um, so in real life, quite often there's tolerances between items. So just, and there's something called tolerance stack analysis. Some of you, many of you engineers are aware of that. 
But basically, um, what we're looking at here, when you're mating, that offset is very commonly used. Um, also, there's an offset where you can put in a specific distance. In this case, the top of the assembly is holding it up, and so that's why there's that little gap. We had to help it along. So go ahead and hit OK. And now let's uh, go back home here. Now let's test this out. Grab this pink little surface here and drag it around. And that's dynamic assembly motion. Now, notice I call it dynamics. There's no kinematics right here. You, there actually is a module, and I believe in the professional version, if you've downloaded that, that has uh, kinematics and dynamics. And that there's much more to set up with that. But and we're not going to cover that in this class. This is a beginner's class. We're not going to look at that. Okay. Now we want to go ahead and bring in some uh, pins to fill this in. So let's go to place and find the red pin. Hit open and get that pin maybe right over here. Click and hit escape. We just want one instance. And let's go to constraint. Select the length of the pin shaft. Make sure you get the axis in the middle. To this, make sure you get the axis here too on the red hole and hit apply. Okay, now the next thing we want to do, we want to get that pin in inside there where the end face here is flush with the outside surface of the yoke female. So let's go to constraint and we're going to go with tangent. So select tangent. The reason why is because this end pin of the end, of end face is flat and this surface is circular. So select that face there. Now you'll see it might pop in or pop out on the other side, we see it right there. So that's where the solution, you could change it to inside. And there it is, hit OK. Let's try that again with a, a couple blue pins. Go to place, find the blue pin, hit open, click one, drop them there, click one, drop them there. And let's get those in too. So go to constraint, select the length, so you're getting the axis of the pin to the axis of the hole, hit apply. Now go to tangent, select this face here to this face, and change the solution to inside. Apply. Now let's get this one. I'm going to rotate around. Make sure you change this to just standard mate. Select the length of the pin to the hole. Make sure you get the axis. Hit apply. And now go to tangent, select this face. Boy, it looks like it's already tangent, but let's just make sure. and. Hit that, and this time it remembered the solution. So go ahead and hit OK. Now there are some holes under here for set screws. So let's go ahead and go to place, and it's just called fastener. Hit open, and rather small. I'm gonna drop four in, and I'm gonna go to constrain, and I'm gonna constrain the actual flat face with the socket. Oops, right there, that face to this face. And then I'm gonna hit under solution, flush, and apply. Now I'm gonna try it this way first, and then you can see I have, I'm gonna have a little difficulty here, so I'm gonna hit cancel. I'm gonna grab the edge of that and just drag it close to the hole. All right, and there are other methods too in this software that I'm not gonna go through right now, but go to uh, constraint and now we could select the axis to the axis here. Okay, let's try a different method. Let's try the axis first to the hole and change the solution so it flips and then hit apply. Now select this flat face here to this face here. And uh, let's see, did it not capture that? Let's, let's cancel out of there for a second. Okay, I'm gonna try that again. Go to constraint, select this face to that face. And it's interesting that um, it's not going flush. There we go, let's just go ahead and hit the solution change there, so flush. And we'll do that again, constraint, select, oops, uh, I think I selected something else. You could try and hold control, deselect it. If that doesn't work, I just hit escape 
because I'm not sure what I selected there. So I'm going to select this face here, that face, apply, and then this face to this face, and then go flush. One more constraint, select that face to this, apply, and I'm going to pick flush immediately just so I don't have to go back. And there we go. All right, so the set screws are in position now. Let's introduce a subassembly now. Now, a subassembly is nothing more than just another assembly put inside of an assembly, so they call it a subassembly. Those of you who um, are new to this. Okay, so let's go to place. And the way Inventor handles it is it just it looks at it like it's a part almost. But here you can see there's the handle. Um, this is a sub subassembly. And the reason I know that is if I hover over it, it'll say, inventor assembly, but also the little symbol is like that L, three little blocks that form an L that's indicating more than one part. So that click on handle, hit open, and drop that up here, and then hit escape. So this is its own little assembly, and I'm going to get that closer there. Let's go to constraint, select the outside. And notice you don't have to select the faces that are actually going to contact if it's concentric. As long as you get axis, you're in good shape to this axis. Hit apply. And I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel out so I can drag this up. Now to get it to really work, you, you actually have to make the key just like you would in real life. If it, if there's no key there, it's just gonna spin without uh, without any joint between the two. So go to constraint, select this flat face. Now be careful. There's a radius yellow face. You don't want that one. You want the one I'm clicking on currently. Now I'm gonna rotate here, and there's the flat face right there. Hit apply. And now finally, we're going to do a distance mate. So the offset, go ahead and set the offset to point zero one, and select this green ring. Now you have to zoom up to it. Make sure you get the surface, and then rotate around and get this surface right here. And we set it to point zero one, and you'll see there's a little distance. And again, in reality. There's always little tolerances between things. Very seldom do you see. There are, there's always coincidence too, but just be aware this is um, why we're learning that. So hit OK. Now we could go to the, go to home. And you know, I think I want to see the back side. I'm going to click on this little corner up here. There we go. Now I'm going to click on the handle and everything moves. And that's dynamic assembly motion going on right there. Again, there's no friction, there's no moments of inertia. Those things aren't there. It's just to simulate uh, dynamically what's going on. It's actually pretty neat that it's able to do that. Okay, um, that completes exercise five. Now, lab five, which is in the book, let's go to the instructional manuals here, and inventor, and scroll down. This is on page, just finished on page 52. We're moving here, and this is uh, a Bluetooth headset. It's scaled really large, so just be aware it's a little bit big. But anyhow, we need to assemble all those parts. As you can see here, there's the top, and that was lab four. I actually give you that model finished. You can't turn that one in, though, as your lab, so just be aware of that. Um, but you could use it for this. It's really nice, this one. You could actually test your lab model to see if it fits. It's not going to fit perfectly, by the way, because I didn't give you all of the little slots on the inside. But it should actually look, from the exterior side, should look pretty accurate. Okay, but uh, we, we're going to assemble the enclosure. There's a circuit board. There's batteries. There's a battery uh, cradle. And then there's a light pipe here, or light frame, whatever you want to call it. And so here's what they look like all assembled. So let's begin. We first have to download those files. So if you go back to the uh, Vertanum 1 part files, you'll find Lab 5B parts, download. Down here, if you're using Chrome, it'll appear there. You can just click on it. And Control A will select everything inside there. You could actually right click and cut them out if you don't want to use additional memory resources. And now you could go, let's see, 
documents and our inventor 2021 folder. And I'm going to create a new folder for L, capital L5. Now, it's a good strategy with assemblies, if you can, to try and keep them in their own folder versus all over the place. Because um, if you ever have to send this to someone, you could just send them the whole folder, compress, zip, just like I, I have online here, and they have all the parts because you, they really want to have all those parts typically. You don't just send them the assembly. The assembly file itself is just kind of a shell that has all the parts uh, working inside of it. Okay, so let's um, get over here. We'll go to new and standard IAM, hit create. And again, give this a shot on your own, but if you're stuck, go ahead and watch my video here. I'm gonna to go to place and let's get out of the T1 here and go to L5. Don't select the image, that's all the parts in, already in the assembly. But uh, let's start off with the L4 rear bezel, which is the base. Just click to drop it in. And remember, uh, hit escape, now right click on it, and you want to ground it. Oops, let's try that again. I might actually be in edit mode there. Okay, I accidentally double click on it. I was in part edit mode. Just right click. Uh, you just double click on the top where it says assembly two, if you did what I did. Okay, and now down here we'll find grounded. That locks it into place. Another thing you could do is actually you can mate the, with constraints, the planes front top and right to the front top and right of the assembly. So there's different things or to other parts if they're there. Let's go ahead now, go to place. Let's get the circuit board or PC board as it's called. Drop that right there. We only need one copy. Go to constraint. We want this face here to be constrained to Oh no, we don't want that face, sorry. Um, hit escape. We actually want this face here to touch the circuit board backside. Okay. And hit apply. And then concentric, uh, you could see this right here. You could align this boss to this. Make sure you get the axis apply and then we need to align one of those holes because watch what happens if i hit cancel here it's swiveling around so any one of those holes should do as long as they're true aligned uh, truly aligned just like this to that and make sure you hit okay all right so the circuit board's in place let's go now to place and the next thing we want to put in is the, let's see here. Light frame. Well, we can bring the light frame in. Actually, let's bring the light frame in later. I believe we want the battery shield. Yep. And just drop that right about there. And then we want to mate that to the outside of that rubber insulator. So go to constraint, select this concentric face, see how it grabs the axis to this outer face. Now you'll figure out if you did it wrong, if you select the wrong concentric ring, so I could tell if you're doing it right. Okay, hit apply. And then let's um, drag that up. We want this bottom face to that face right there. Oops. Try that again. Bring that up. I hit escape and then we'll drag that. Go to constraint. So this face right here to the bottom face. There we go. All right, now we're gonna put in some batteries. You don't have to have that rotated properly. I, I never put in any parameters for that. Okay, so the battery cell, hit open. Drop that right about there. And let's go ahead and mate that up. Go to constraint this face here to the underside face of the battery. Hit apply. And then the concentric faces. So this face here to the outside face there. And hit OK. OK, so now we want to pattern that battery. We want a stack of four total. 
So select the battery. First hit escape a couple times, make sure you don't have anything selected. Go ahead and select the battery. It should be highlighted here in the model tree. Now go over here to pattern and you wanna to go to, and here's where you would select if you need to select the component. Now you would click on that and select the component the components. Let's go to rectangle uh, right here, the column direction, select this edge here and make sure it's pointing up. If it's not pointing up, here's the flip direction. Okay. Now set this to four because it counts the one that you have. And then the distance is 0.06. That's the battery thickness and 0.06 hit enter. And there's your stack. So we just created an assembly pattern. Okay. Now we could bring in another part. Let's go to assemble and let's bring in the connector. The connector goes right on top of that. So we'll go to constraint. Select the top of the battery to this surface here, apply, and then this surface here to this surface. Hit OK. And now we can bring in the light pipe or light frame, as it's called here. Hit Enter, drag it right there. Let's go to Constraint. And we could, um, now yeah, we better, we better get that in there. So this little surface here is going to go to the underside surface there. So let's get under there and select this space. Okay. Hit apply. Now the, get the axis of that to the axis of this Hit apply. And let's see, is that completely constrained? No. See how it's floating. So we need to get that last one in over here. So just go to constraint, select this to the, the hole is fine. Hit OK. All right, our light frame is there. Now we're going to go ahead and place the cover. Now this is where you could try and find, uh, grab your L4 and see if it fits. But I'm going to go ahead and select the L4 front bezel, hit open, drop that right there. Go to constraint. I'm going to select this face here to that face. Hit apply. And then let's see this face here to, I should probably get, there we go, to this face. Okay, now I'm going to hit OK because I can't really see very well unless I drag it out there. So basically, it was the radiuses to these surfaces. Now we'll go, uh, just drag it up and go back to constraint. And we want this surface here, that little top surface of that thin wall to touch this surface here. And this is what you don't have on your L4. So my apologies. You would just do these surfaces instead, but um, I wanted to try and keep it rather simple on the drawing. So I didn't put that in there, but overall you'd still be able to check to see if you're, um, Part fits in there well. Okay. And that, oh wait, let's uh, take a look at how to explode this. Now with this software, you have parts, assemblies, drawings. We're going to cover drawings the next class period, but there's also something called a presentation file. And this is for exploding your assembly and showing how it's, you can animate it. You can do a lot of really cool things with it. So what you do, as you save this, and I'm going to save it inside the L5 folder. I'm going to call it L5. And I'm going to hit OK here. All right, now we could go to File, New, Presentation. Now it brings us into a new area here. And again, we've got to find, just to find Inventor, go to L5 and the L5, hit open. And here we're in the presentation now. Now this is where we get to explode it uh, and create an animation too if we want. So there's tweak component, select the front model, grab the manipulator handle and drag it forward. And you can put in an explicit value. Let's make it four inches. Now go to tweak, I hit enter there. Um, now I'll select this here. And again, I'm going to drag that forward. 
green check, tweak, grab this, and drag it backwards, maybe about five. Oops, minus five. Enter. The circuit board. Oh, let's go to tweak. Grab that arrow. Make sure you're grabbing the Z arrow for that. And maybe two and a half. Ah, shoot. I keep forgetting to put the minus in there. Oh. <coughs> All right. Um, let me just drag it manually. I don't know why it's not. I must have another digit in there somewhere on this end. Uh, if you see what I did wrong, go ahead and mark it up in uh, the YouTube video comment down below. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just drag that there. And now we'll spread this out. Like, uh, Let's go back to tweak. Drag that out like so. Tweak to the next part. Drag that out. Tweak. Tweak, tweak, and we'll bring that one forward a little bit. Normally, I don't like to have that out like that, but we could actually um, hit tweak and get these two again. So I could click on this and this. Oh, hold control if you're going to grab them both, and then drag those forward a little bit. Hit the green check. Okay, so there we have our exploded view. And we could go ahead and uh, move on here. There's animation tools in here and things like that. If you want, go ahead and tinker with it. I'm not, it's, this is a beginner's class. I'm not going to make you do that just yet. So I'll just make sure you save this. And it'll save it as L5, but that's fine. Just see how it's the presentation file. It's an IPN versus an IAM which is an inventor assembly file. So it knows the difference. And you just hit yes to all, hit okay. All right, now we could go to um, back there. And basically that's saved. So later on for our drawing, we could do more with that. I'll go ahead and just show you the animation here. Here's the animation bar, as you can see below here. Let's zoom up a little closer and maybe let's go home there. Okay, now if you wanted to animate this, see right here, this is actually the timeline bar. At any point, you could see how it, what it's doing within the range of time. Now, when you get it to the end, go ahead, I notice here there's play. Let's go ahead and play current storyboard and you could see how it will explode. And so it's showing us the exploded steps. This is very useful if you explode it the way that you intended to assemble it and vice versa. It gives someone some, uh, you can make assembly instructions essentially on video. All right, and that concludes this exercise. Welcome back, I'm Chris Sikora and I'm gonna step you through exercise six in Inventor 2021. Now, as you can see there on the screen, we're gonna learn how to make a drawing. Uh, the parts already built for us, but you could take any of the parts that we've built thus far and make a drawing just like this. And you, you see, we're going to have an isometric shaded. We're going to have a section view, detail view, an auxiliary view, front view, top view, right view. Then we're going to learn how to put some dimensions in. Uh, we're going to learn how to annotate a little bit, like put a note in and things like that. And so let's uh, let's begin. First of all, you want to go to the Vertanu webpage. V is Victor, E, R, T is in Tom, A, N is in Nancy, U, X, 1.com. And then go to part files and find exercise six part in the green column. Click on it and you'll see it will download. And once it downloads, you could go ahead and click on it again and um, it should launch automatically because it's an individual part. It's not, it's not compressed. So you could just click on it and it'll launch inside Inventor. It might take a minute or two, depending upon if you've launched Inventor yet or not. But let's begin. Go to new up at the top here. And actually what you'll see is you'll see your model there. Now, if you want, you could change the appearance of your model. I actually put in aluminum polished, but it's up to you. 
But however you want to show it, uh, you can do that. Also, you could select the material there if you'd like that too. But let's, um, once you have the model up, go to New and make sure you're in English. And down here, there's ANSI I drawing. Hit Create. Now it's going to bring up a D size by default. Um, many times D size are very popular. And when you print it out, you could scale it down to fit on 8.5 by 11. So a B size if you wanted. But we're going to actually, I'm going to show you how to change that. So hit the little plus symbol here on the model browser. And you'll see there's sheet formats, borders, and so on. So um, what we're looking for, if you hit sheet formats, we're looking for, look at that, there's an A and there's a couple C's there. Let's go with the A size uh, ASM. Just double click on it. And now right here, it's going to, it should see your part, your E6. Now, if, you, if it doesn't, go ahead and browse right here for it and find the E6 part. And then it will use that to open this up. So hit OK. And we get this, uh, it's an 8.5 by 11 sheet. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we want to get this to its isometric state. So double click on that view. Now look at that. This is what's really pretty cool about this software is that you actually can like click on the front view. You can rotate it just like you've been doing over the past several weeks. Let's go to the home view, which is the isometric view. Now, also this pops up when you double click on that and you can change the scale. And the scale for this right now is going one to one. There's an algorithm built in that automatically measures the front, top and right view to see if it can fit in there. And if it can, it's going to try and make it one to one. But we're going to go, we're going to add a lot of things in here. So let's go ahead and just go to a half scale and hit OK. We're going to leave that shaded. You could grab the edge with your pointer and depress your mouse button and just drag it to the upper right corner. Now let's go up here and we'll explore base. Go ahead and click on base. And again, it gives us a scale of one to one. Go to a half scale for that. And then right over here, select hidden lines removed. And then under display options, select tangent edges and foreshortened. Now, not all companies that I worked at did this, but uh, one that I worked at, we always did this because it was just a nice courtesy for the guys out in the shop. Because what happens, these tangent edges show up as object lines, which are solid and bold. And sometimes when they, the fillets and rounds intersect each other, it looks very complex when in fact it's just a blend inside there. So I used to have to go to the front office and have, wait 15 minutes to talk to the engineer when I was a guy working in the shop. So just as a courtesy, I always like to turn those on, but you don't have to. Go ahead and hit OK. Now drag this over to the lower left and let's proceed to go now and try projected. Click on projected. Drag off a right side view way over here, click, and then a top view right here, click. And that's all we want for right now. So what you have to do is you have to right mouse button click and find create and select it. Okay, so that's the thing to remember. After you drop the views, you have to right click. And many times inside drawings here, you're going to find we're going to have to right click to apply something. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and remember also when we double click on these, you have the ability to change its, the styles and such. These two are based off of this front view. That's why we didn't get that option. So if you change this front view, the others will update. Let's go now to auxiliary view. Now auxiliary view, um, I've had a couple issues with this today. Um, and what you do is you select that. We want to get an auxiliary view off of this flange. So click close in proximity to that edge of that flange. And then make sure the edge turns red and click again. And now you should be able to drag off this. If it doesn't work for you the first time, don't worry. It took me like three times. It's very sensitive. You have to pinpoint with pinpoint accuracy. You have to get the tip of your pointer on that edge ahead of time and then click once, wait a second, and then click a second time once it's red and it should work. Um, it seems a little temperamental as far as I'm concerned. I don't remember it being that difficult, but maybe you're not having an issue. So that's good. All right. Now we want to make a section view of this view right here. So I just clicked on the view. Notice the view border turns on. You don't have to pre-select views necessarily, but in this case, I just want to make sure that that's the view, that view is pre-selected. And so find section. 
Now hover to the center and then glide directly to the left so you get that little inference and you're outside of the boundary of the actual wall there. Click. Now just drag it straight through. Don't stop at the middle. Unless you want to, you could have it dart out the side, but we're going to go straight through cut here. So all the way through and give yourself a little space to the right there too. Click. Now notice it, it's a line chain. This is where you have to right click again and find continue. All right, now it gives us our section view and we could locate it. Just let's drop it right up there. Um, click. And now if you zoom up to that, let's see some of the options here. We could double click on that uh, cross sectioning. And here we have a library of different cross sections. You could adjust the scale and uh, put it on layer, things like that, which we haven't really talked about. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we want to get a uh, detail view of this region here. So find detail view, click on detail view. And right in the middle here where my pointer is, click. And then while you're there, you could change things. We do want it to be one to one. It's going to double the size, so that's good. Um, and the identifier is set to C, and that's fine. Click and drag this out to envelop just that little area there. Click again and center this and click to release it. And there's your detail view. Now you could actually move the little C and locate the center a little bit different and watch it will update. So if you want to recenter it, it's some pretty neat technology. Okay, now to zoom to zoom to fit right here. Let's click on that. So there we've added most of the views. You'll see there's other views out here like break, slice, crop. Um, let's show you what crop does just a, for a quick second here. What you do, you could click on here and you could click on um, crop and select a section and then it crops it. Okay, I'm going to hit undo. Um, there's also breakout, a break. We're not going to get into that. Those are a little bit more advanced. They're not very hard. If you want, go ahead and tinker with them. But uh, again, this is an intro class. I don't want to go into every single feature just yet. All right, so now that we have that, let me drag this down a little bit. Now we're going to, the second segment is actually adding annotations. So find the annotate tab. Now let's zoom up right here and let's say we want to put in center mark. So right here, you'll see this is a center mark tool, center bisector. So you could click on this edge here, this edge here, and it puts in the center. And you could do the same over here, click on this edge here to that edge. So if you wanted those, there's more tools in there too. Let's uh, zoom up to this one. Now with this one, go ahead and we're going to go with the center pattern and see there's a whole pattern here. So what you want to first do is start off with the center and we want the uh, center kind of big. So let's get one of these tangent edges, click on it. You'll see there's a center mark. Now locate every subsequent point of the centers of these and you'll see it starts to create the whole pattern. All right. And so I was just clicking on those. Now let's go to text and down right here in this box, just click. And now here's the editor type in your name and here notice you could change any parameters that you might want. You can hit okay and then uh, hit escape and then you could drag that. So that's the note tool. Now there's text with the leader too. You could click on that and add note. Let's go ahead and try that text with leader. And um, let's go ahead and click on this edge here and then right click here, continue. And we could put uh, do not paint. So like just to just throwing a note in there just off the top of my head. All right, move it along. Now we're going to take a look at the dimension tool. Click on dimension. Oh darn it, with this, notice how it disappeared. I forgot to right click. That's why you want to make sure you right click and add things because uh, I didn't do that. So let's click here to this point. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on dimensions. We just hit OK here. Uh, notice when you do drop a dimension in, you could actually put in for that specific dimension tolerances, tolerance display. So let's say I wanted um, symmetric. And we'll put in point zero 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 five, and 
can hit OK. And now if we want to see that actually in, uh, let's hit Escape. I'm going to right click on that. And if we go to Precision, we can set that up to 3. So you could adjust individual dimensions that way. Now you can also take dimensions that were in the drawing. And this sometimes is actually more beneficial than putting them all in again. So there's actually retrieval right here, retrieve model annotations. Now when you click on this, you have by default it's selected feature or selected parts. If it were an assembly notice, it's grayed out because this is only a part. Now what you do is you just click on a surface of the model and it will bring up all the dimensions that are relative to that surface. So this, this case was like the front plane. Anything that was drawn on the front plane has dimensions. And what you do is you go through and you just click on the dimensions you'd like. So like I, I like that one, this one here, I'll take that. And let's see, and that's about it. I think that's all I'm going to take. I don't need to show you every single option here. Hit apply and then hit cancel. So now we have dimensions that were brought in from the model. Remember how first day, exercise one, I said, layer dimensions out how you would like to see them. That's the reason why. So if they're laid out nicely, it's a lot less work to have to do. You could actually just drop them in. There's a little bit of movement, but for the, for the most part, it's pretty good. Now beware, not every dimension could be added through retrieval because remember there's constraints. There's uh, that, those relationships like parallelism, equal, tangency, that we're not going to see on here. So that's why sometimes dimensions have to be added manually too. Okay, now um, we see this dimension right here and that actually is better suited up in that view. So what you can do, you can right click on a dimension. Rather than re-adding it, you just right click and there's move dimension, fourth one to the top. Select the view you want it in and there it is. And you have the ability, let's say you want to drag that out the little green balls you could uh, move. And this one's not letting me get much further than that edge. That's a default setting in there. Okay. So you could actually move dimensions from one place to another, provided that that plane is parallel to the plane that the dimension originated from. If it's perpendicular, it usually won't come over. All right, so that, um, again, this is just the basics. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other options. There's symbols for welding. You have um, datum. So if you click on datums here, let's say you want a datum on this edge, you can put a datum and then any additional information and notes that you want to add. Here's uh, gd &T, uh, for a feature control frame. You click on that. You could also attach it to dimensions and such or um, it has a leader. And there's just a, a lot of different tools that you'll see here. If you, if you have parts lists, we'll cover that with the uh, midterm and coming up. And then there's also ordinate dimensions, uh, baseline dimensions. We're not gonna go into all those, but I do wanna fix this again. So let me fix that. Remember the trick here, get one of these edges and every point in sequence go around and then right click and hit create. That's what I neglected to do. So don't forget that right click is crucial. All right, so that covers the basics of making a drawing. Again, we're not covering a lot of dimensioning because you've all been dimensioning for the past four weeks um, on uh, things. So it's really, there's not much difference there. Okay, let's take a look at the training guide here and down here, your uh, exercise or the lab for this week is to recreate this. So I'm going to download this and that's on page 63. Let me click and open that up. Type in that 63 up here, hit enter, and now it can rotate. And from here, now we just want to recreate this model. 
Okay, sometimes on my drawings, I actually put duplicate dimensions, which goes against what you're supposed to do in the real world. Just remember that. Um, some of them, like you'll see a reference dimension, and it's I put these in to help students out because I've had students try and get hold of me over the weekend, and they were trying desperately to get these things done. And so um, note that sometimes you don't need all the dimensions that I have in print, but uh, and typically it's the gray ones that you don't need. But if you didn't add constraints in a certain way, the same way I did, they might be necessary. So just Look at that. Okay, so we see here uh, the overall height is 0. 0.6. We have 0. 0.35 width and 0. 0.25 for these little segments, 45 degrees, and this is three inches across here. It gets extruded four inches from there, some half inch radiuses here, 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 and here, and then shelled out everything on the back. All this one, two, three, four walls gets selected for the shell, 50 thousandths wall thickness, typical. Then we cut in these little segments here. You'll see 1.5 to, to the theoretical sharp corners because there's fillets put in there. So let's begin. First, I want you to build the part from scratch. So go to standard I part, hit create. Now go to start sketch, and we could do this from the XY plane. Go to the line tool, and the very first line we could draw in, uh, let's draw it this direction, and there's two and a half inches. And we could draw this up, and I don't think I have a dimension for this one, but that's okay. Let's uh, zoom out, actually. And then this goes across, and then this goes up, and this one's 2.5 as well, and that was supposed to be horizontal, but I'll fix that. And then this one comes down and then this comes across and we want to get parallelism. See the little parallelism that uh, appears and then close that up. All right, let's fix this. So to fix this, we could just go over here to horizontal, select that line. And let's add a few more dimensions here. So from, uh, we have from here, here, we'll add that one in just to show you three inches. That will negate us, I believe, needing the other dimension that was there. And I'm going to bring up the drawing again. I'm going to carry it over here. All right, so we have 2.5, 3. Let's see, maybe we still do need that one, but 3.5. Okay. And 45 degrees from here to here. And then from the sharp corner to the top, it's 1.75. Oh, actually, let's give the full height here. This is six. And this is 2.75 from the top. So from this point to this point, it's 2.75. All right, now it's starting to look correct. We can move some of these out and hit escape just to align the dimensions a little bit better. Yeah, we'll get that one in, why not? Just put that there for now. All right, so um, we still have, actually that's it. Okay, so with all the dimensions, like I said, there are certain dimensions. If you use them, you're not going to need the others because it's constraining it. So uh, we're good. And it says fully constrained down below here. Bring that back in because we want to use this for the drawing. All right, let's go to finish sketch. And I'm going to go to the home button and I'm going to extrude that. Now it's a symmetric part. So whenever it's symmetric, select symmetric. And it's going to be four inches. Hit enter. Let's go to the fillet tool. And remember, there's the 0.5 radiuses. There's one, two, three, four. Hit OK. Now there's a chamfer, 45 degrees by 0.2. So go to chamfer, 0.2. Oops, got two decimal places in there. Don't want that. Uh, and it is specifying 45. We could technically do equal distances, but let's do distance to angle at 45. There we go. 
select that edge, or that face and that edge. There we go. All right. Now we just need to shell it. So go to the shell command right here. And it was 0 0.05. Oh, darn. Now I hit enter. And this is very common in class. Now, if I try and shell it again, it's going to error out again because it can only shell it once. Because technically, it's already shelled. The shell is in there. You can see right here. So we have to edit that. So I'm going to click on this, and there's edit. I neglected. Got to click on remove faces. One, two, three, four. Hit OK. So don't forget to do that. It's easy to fix. You just click on it, go to edit, and you should be able to. If you right click, the edit button pops up right below it. So you could do it either way. All right, now we're going to go ahead and go to the origins, go to the right, uh, no, the XY plane, and go to sketch. Or actually, we could sketch right on the surface here. Let's go right here, sketch on this surface. All right, now I'm going to just, um, oh, drat, actually, wrong side. Let's hit finish sketch. Select this face here, start a sketch, and click on front. There we go. We want to make it look just like our drawing. You can see right here. Okay, so we have that uh, parallelogram. So let's go over here to rectangle, and we don't have a parallelogram, but we can still make one with just a regular rectangle tool. So let's click here, drag this out like such. Um, I'm not going to add any dimensions on it just yet. Now I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to delete that. Actually, parallelism is right. We don't want vertical though. Let's see. There. Oh, that's coincident. Horizontal. There. We don't want perpendicular. So Click on that perpendicular symbol right there and hit delete on your keyboard. Now we could just move it a little bit like a parallelogram. All right, we now go to dimension, and those are sharp corners currently. So it has to be 1.5 across. So from here to here, 1.5, and the height is 0.25. And the angle is 45. So from here to here, it's going to be 45. And now we can locate it. And you have to look at the other view for location here. Oops. So it's 0.25 off of this corner and one inch off the top edge. So let's go right here from here to here. Make that one. And from here to here, be 0.25. All right, now uh, that we have that, it's fully constrained. We can see that down there. Also, the color is subtle, but you can see it. And now we're going to go, and let's try sketch fillet. And the fillets on here are going to be. 0.06 on all four corners. From here. Oops. Try that again. There we go. All right. And now we could pattern that with a sketch pattern, or we could pattern it as a feature pattern. Let's do it as a feature pattern. I'm going to go to extrude. I'm going to flip the direction and select through all. Hit OK. Now I'm going to select that extrusion and go to rectangular pattern. And we already have the feature selected. So now it's the direction. Select this edge for a vector. And we need to have one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's 
distance pattern. Six by 0.4. And there is the model. Now we'll save the model. And this is L6. And from here, we could now make the drawing. So go to New, Fancy Drawing. Now, they actually do have the different sheet sizes that you can pick right here, which is nice. Um, let's go with the A, ANSI, and hit Create. Now, it didn't see our document, didn't pick it automatically. So let's go to Browse and hit Open, because they're, for some odd reason, usually it's pretty good at picking up the part that I just saved. I don't know why I did that. Kind of odd. All right. Double click. Go to Isometric. We do want an Isometric view in there, but it's a little too big, so we'll go to quarter scale and get to the border, drag that up. Now go to base. Now the drawing, this is, uh, the drawing was actually made on landscape for the book, but we'll put it on this format, which is um, portrait, and that's okay. All right, now we're gonna set this to a quarter inch as well. And we're going to try and replicate as best we can. The display options, oh, it already remembered foreshortened, so that's good. Let's take a look. Okay, so we have the side view, the side section view, top. All right, let's do that. So click here, go to projection. We need a top view, and we need this view here. And then right click, create. Now we want a section view for this. So click on that, go to section, find the midpoint and go a little bit above it and click and drag it straight through. Then right click, continue, click to drop that. And there's our section. Now let's make this a little bit more defined. Double click on that little line there for the hatching and let's increase this. Let's see if we put two, uh, actually not two, sorry. We're going larger there. Uh, we want 0.25. Okay, so it's a little bit better there. You can see a little bit better. All right, now to bring in uh, the detail views. So select this view, go to detail view. I don't know if you really need to select the view to be honest, but I'm, gonna, I'm just doing it. I'm gonna drag that out right about there. And we'll just drop that up there. And now we can drag these down, make a little bit more room. And we could add our dimensions. So let's try the retrieval. First of all, let's go, oh, that one. Oh, that's good. Actually, let's just get rid of some. Oh, we want this, that, that. I guess we could put these ones on here. They're fitting, so. And that one. Yeah, we'll put that on too. All right, hit apply and cancel. And then we can move and locate those. And hit escape. Come on, work with me. There we go. All right, we could go and fix it up a little bit later, make it look better. Let's get this one in now. So again, retrieve. Now remember, you don't have to use retrieve. A lot of companies actually don't. Where I worked at, we did, and it was very nice. You can't always get every dimension, like I said, but it's well worth it if you can. There we go. All right, I like everything on there. Hit OK. This one I'm not a big fan of, so I'm gonna click on this 135 and hit delete. And I'm gonna put my own in. I'm just gonna to go to dimension from here to here. Oh, I picked the point instead. Let's try that again. From here to this edge. There we go. And get it right in that little window there. Oh, 
Okay, you could lay them out better. Take the time to do that. Just so they're not all on top of each other. Okay. And don't forget your name. I'm actually going to put the, uh, well, I'll put my name in. And E6. And that's it. And that concludes this exercise. Welcome back. I'm Chris Sikora, and I'm going to step you through exercise seven for Inventor 2021. Now for my SIM class, essentially, this is what they call computer-aided engineering, or CAE. We're going to do a stress analysis on a bottle opener, and that's what you're seeing up on the screen right here. It's animated, and we could actually see where stress is occurring on the surfaces. And it helps us to determine whether or not our part design is valid. And uh, usually, if you're going to do this, it's good to have the, uh, the the mathematical knowledge so you can actually do some hand calculations just to verify it. This is, as long as you put in the uh, good information, and this is actually even more detailed than what you can do via hand calculations, the typical hand calculations, that is. All right, so let's get started here. This is a bottle opener, and you can see um, I have it animated. We're going to learn how to do that. And if you're wondering, this is in the training guide, which if you go to the vertanu1.com one page, V-E-R-T-A-N-U-X-1.com, go to instructional manuals and you'll find the inventor manual, the green one right there, bring that up and then get to page 69. Now here you could actually see our design we're going to keep it quite simple. We'll actually even make it more simplified than this. And we're going to start off in metric two, just so we could get uh, megapascals or MPA, as you see here, for our units versus PSI. So let's go to new up here and make sure you go to template, hit the little arrow here, English US, and then click on metric and then find the standard MM I part. Now you could create it in inches and then change it over. But that's in there too. If you ever need to do that, it's just under um, tools and document settings and then units. And you'd be able to change it right here. So just be aware if you wanted to build something in inches and then convert or vice versa. All right, but let's get started drawing that. Now the geometry in the book, the train guide, you can see here it's a half inch in height, two inches across, and then the rest of it we'll just have a little fun with. So click on Start 2D Sketch, select your XY plane, and go to the Line tool, and right at this origin, click and drag it up. Now, remember, we saw it was a half inch versus this is metric. So let's go ahead and type in 0.5, but type in IN for inches, and hit Enter. And it automatically does a conversion for us. See, it's 12.7. Let's go ahead and go across here. Make sure you're at 90 degrees. And we're going to type in, this is supposed to be 2 I N, so 2 inches. Hit enter, and there it's 50. All right, now for the rest of this, we could just click on front here and close it up. And I'm going to give you some freedom to make your own bottle opener here. So click here, and maybe about 4 millimeters in, like so. Drag that in, about maybe 8 to 9 click. You can follow perpendicularity or an angle, or if you want, put a fillet in there, but um, we'll talk about that in a second. When it comes to geometry like that, you don't always want. Um, go ahead and drag this out. Connect here. We'll make a small little jaw here. Click, and then bring this up about there. And again, you have freedom to do what you want here. And I'm going to make the area where the finger is going to pull up on it. So I'm going to put this nice little angle right here. Click, and then there, click and close that. All right, so I line chain. Make sure that these points are here. Those of you who are still new to Inventor, you gotta have that, that line in there, even though it doesn't look like it's needed there, it is. Okay, 
Now, the question comes up, feature or defeature? Now, defeaturing is very common when you're working with computer-aided engineering, or in this case, a finite element analysis. And what it does, finite element analysis, breaks up your model into a collection of polygons, whether it be triangles on some systems, some could set it to a four-point rectangle. Uh, um, but anyhow, when it comes to that geometry, mathematically behind the scenes, it calculates what's called nodes, or the elements which are the corners of each one of those polygons. And it, as a whole, it could actually calculate where the highest amount of stress is going to occur and whether or not, depending upon material information you put in, if it's going to be a valid design, if it's going to be too weak and possibly break or fail, and or if it's going to be over-engineered. Maybe it's too, too much material. You could reduce that. Now, do I want to put the little hole here for the key ring? We could. Um, most people would tell you, anyone who's done this for a while would probably just leave it off. Or if it's already modeled into the part, which that's mostly the case, it might be suppressed. But we could put it in. Um, back, the first FEA analysis I've ever done was back in 1995 on a computer that was uh, equivalent. I mean, your, your wristwatches now are more powerful than that computer. It was a, a Spark Station. I can't remember which version, but it was very expensive and it had 24 megabytes of RAM. So very lean. We did something not all that dissimilar to what we're doing today, an analysis, which today, by today's end, is very simple. And it's going to be able to do this within seconds. Um, but it took eight hours to do back in those days because it takes up a tremendous amount of system resources when you do finite element analysis. So it's good to have a hardy computer when doing this. But uh, to, def to keep the features off not only helps keep it within the boundaries of your hand calculations to match up because if you've ever seen the engineering books it's all math of course and they're generally dealing with two-dimensional planes when you're doing something simple like this or what's called a linear analysis and linear analysis is desirable for simple parts such as this other parts not so much you might want what's called non-linear and that's an advanced stage we're not going to cover today but um Anyhow, so let's go ahead. Uh, we're not going to put the fillets in because they're just not really necessary all the time. If it is a structural fillet, then yeah, but we don't really need it on this one. So let's go to 3D model and go to extrude, select this profile, and have it go symmetric. 10 millimeters is fine. Hit OK. And again, we could we don't need to put in any of the fillets. You could, but you don't need to. Just it actually slows things down. All right, now we're going to set this up. So we go to, uh, first of all, let's select the material. So up here, this is your actual material library. And if you look this up, uh, you'll see there's plastics and all sorts of things. Now, each one of these materials has a rating um, that you could look up. You could actually Google them, and you're going to see, like, for example, we're going to pick an aluminum, and we're going to pick 6061. Now, 6061 aluminum has uh, some variants. There's T6, there's T4, there's the way they're hardened, they're, they're uh, and essentially uh, if they're age hardened, things like that. This one is your basic 6061. If you were to look it up, um, we'll, we'll actually see what it's going to give us here, but let's click on aluminum. Now go to environment and click on stress analysis. Now those of, some of you may not have stress analysis. Uh, it comes with the student license for home. So you should have it as long as you install the Inventor Professional, which has all the modules. Now, the educational licenses typically have that too, but I found the college that I teach at, quite often our IT department just goes with the basics. They don't install everything, and I found that it hasn't been installed before. So I would check on that with your IT department if, uh, if that's the case, but uh, it just might not have gotten loaded, and they should be able to load that up for you. Go to Stress Analysis. Go to Create Study, and here we could give a name to this study if we'd like. Um, there's some parameters in here I don't want to go through because they're pretty. Some of them get into more advanced techniques. Um, we're going to go ahead and actually just stick with the defaults that we see here. Go ahead and hit OK. Now let's go to Assign. Now 
we already assigned a material, but this is where you could change that. You could go to materials and see a much more detailed catalog of these materials. As you hover over them, you'll see the, the part adopts the visual properties or characteristics. But we see there's different types of uh, 6061, but this is the one we picked. Um, and it's already up there. We're just going to double click on it and you'll see its identi identity. And like I said, um, 6061 in its basic, basic form is aluminum, magnesium, silicone. It's an alloy. It's pretty strong, much stronger than a typical aluminum, like a 10 series. Um, we're going to go to, there's appearance, which you could adjust if you want, but there's physical. And you'll see there's uh, lots of information in here. And you could customize this and make your own materials if you have a variant of it because they don't have every single material in here and i believe you can probably find materials library online maybe for a purchase i'm not sure um, but anyhow here you could actually see we have um, yield strength and tensile strength and so on and so forth and depending upon your calculations this is in psi um, you could actually do the conversions if you like psi into mpa on google and get that feedback on what that is. But uh, typically, um, when it comes to yield strength for 6061, if you're talking NPA, it's between 100 and 100 and uh, about 130 or 125, I believe, uh, without doing the hand calculation. If you're going, if you're talking 6061, which uh, is a T6, for example, that's considerably higher. That's 275 megapascals. That's the limit. Now, when I give you those limits and you look those up for megapascals or PSI, essentially, um, when we're talking about that, we're talking about yield. Yield doesn't mean it's actually breaking uh, or rupturing. It actually is typically an indicator that you've bent something beyond its limit of flexibility, and it's going to what they call the elastic limit. And you've gone into what they call the plastic range. And once it's in the plastic range, it's not bending back. So we refer to that as failure if it doesn't bend back. So if you pull on something like, let's say, you know, this is a metal and I pull back and it bounces back, you've not met yield yet. And whatever the yield might be, like in this case, it's 3.989 for the yield strength in PSI. Now, uh, once it gets past that or hits that or gets past it, if you bend it, it doesn't bend back. It stays permanently bent. And so again, that's why they call it failure. It doesn't mean it broke, um, but it did bend. And just be aware when things bend, many of you in engineering know this already, if a, it uh, gets strain hardened, especially if it's a, a metal. And strain hardening, you'll find it's difficult to bend it back, and then you've just created a whole nother issue. So moving along here, we're just gonna keep this as is. If you want, you could do the, that conversion on there. Um, but we know it's over, 100, around 100 or over that we're looking for, uh, if you're talking MPA here. Okay, now let's go to, uh, let's see here, we want fixed. Now the constraints are what you want to add, and I typically like to add them first, you don't have to, but the constraints are like how it's going to be held, where is it going to be the immovable fixture, and this is with linear analysis, um, you have to count, figure out where. Now, on a bottle opener, the whole thing is really in a dynamic state moving, but there are some areas that probably have the force applied more than uh, others. So we know that this surface here is where we're going to be applying the force. We're going to be pulling up on that. But the jaw is uh, an area of interest because that the very top of that is actually on the top of the bottle cap. So that might be a good place to actually put our fixture. Uh, could you put it on the underside? Um, I've talked to a variety of engineers over the years, and it's like, oh, some some say, yeah, you know, some say, oh, it'd be more comfortable on top. Uh, there, it's not always just black and white. It, there's actually variables there that you have to consider. So I'm going to go ahead and just select that face and hit OK. Now we're going to add the force. Now notice there's force, pressure, gravity, um, and there's all, all subsets to things that you could apply. But let's go to force right here. And you'll see the magnitude, how much in Newtons. Now, those of us in the United States aren't used to dealing with Newtons. When we step on a scale, we're used to seeing pounds. And so what we can do is a conversion. And that's why I had Google up here. 
you could type in like, um, let's say we wanted to test 10 pounds uh, for this to pop open that top. So 10 pounds of force. Uh, and see 10 pounds is equal to N. You can type that in and it'll give you here 10 pounds is equal to about 44.48 newtons. So let's go ahead and put that in. 44.48. Okay, and hit enter. All right, and now we have to select the location. So the location is right on that surface there. Again, our finger is going to be under there pulling it up. Hit OK. Now we're ready to um, run the analysis. Now, there is a mesh value that we probably want to tinker with here because this is a very small part. Go ahead and hit simulate and we'll first take a look at what it's going to do. Hit run. Okay, and we see the simulation there, but let's take a look at what the mesh looks like. Now the mesh is the collection of polygons, in this case triangles that it's using, um, which each, all those three points are nodes or that's part of what, why they call finite element analysis because there are elements. Um, and you can look up that more, more detail if you like. I'm not going to go into it right now because it, it goes on. I mean, people get degrees in this, so just be aware. It's not something that you just learn everything right away. All right, so we see here, these are very large polygons. And sometimes you might want a little bit more detail than that. In this case, we're getting an average of 36.83 maximum MPA. Now remember, we're, our limit is well over probably 100 uh, for the megapascals on this material. And again, we could look that up if you ever type in, um, there it is, aluminum 60, 61, we're looking at megapascals here. And then here's just some averages. Um, the tinsel strength, you'll see here 124. That's not saying yield strength, so yield is usually below the tinsel. But um, we're at 124, so approximately. All right, but let's adjust this a little bit. I want to get a more detailed interpretation of what's going on here. So that's where the mesh comes into play. And you could go to mesh settings here. Now, if we look, it's at a hundred thousandths um, for the average meth, uh, uh, element size. Let's squeeze that down a little bit. That's a little bit on the big side here. And we'll put in point, let's try 0 0.02. Okay, in the minimum element size. Um, let's go ahead and put in point Zero one. Now this is probably too much detail, but let's go ahead and see what happens here. Hit OK and run the simulation again. And look at watch the polygon count. It'll increase dramatically. Okay, now not only did we jump from almost 40 to 89 max, but it's pinpointing the regions that are experiencing it versus the blue were really well in any range. And um, in this case, just that little area there, we're starting to see some red. So there's really not much going on here as far as uh, it's very strong, i.e. it's very strong. So even with the mesh set to a finer detail, we could see that. So as you can see, mesh is very important. Now we could go to animate here and hit play. And you could put in how many steps if you want it really smooth, put in 30 if you want it. 10 is fine, that's good too. And you can see as it's bending. Now, it's important to note that this is an exaggeration by default, unless you set it up differently. And you can see this is the adjusted display and it's set to X1. But let's see the actual movement. The reason they go with, them, with that is because in many cases, you wouldn't even really see the actual movement. Like here, you can see it's very small, it's barely moving. So that's why you'll see them exaggerate it. And also you want to see what direction it's moving. Is it actually twisting or contorting, excuse me, in such a way? So that is something of interest. Now, speaking of the displacement or the actual travel, you could see by double clicking on displacement here, just how far it is moving in a visual spectrum analysis. So here we see um, in metric, it's only moving 12 tenths of a of a millimeter, so it's barely moving. That's why they you have to why you have that exaggeration on there. And so let's turn it back on. 
And you'll see if you adjust it even more, you can see it moving. But for the analysis purposes. Okay, so, but still, um, we're not going to talk about first and third principle stress, but let's talk about safety factor. Now, safety factor or factor of safety is a way of testing your model to see if it's within limits. Now, um, each industry has their factor safety that they typically use, like the automotive industry uses a factor safety of three, that's time, times the amount of strength that they would want or endure. And here we're actually seeing the 3.09, it's hitting right at that. So that's actually a valid design if you're designing it with that intent of for the automotive industry. Be aware though that like the aerospace industry, remember they have to launch things into the air and the heavier it is, the less efficient it is. And so they might actually work off of a 1.5 factor safety. So this is twice that. So it might not be desirable. So you know, well, you know, it's too thick. Let's thin it out. Let's change it. Um, but let's go back to the von Mises stress here. And let's talk about whether or not uh, this is a valid design as far as it's structurally sound. It's going to be within our limits, easily within our limits. But if we're looking at around megapascals, about 125 or so, um, that's way up here. And this maximum of red that we're seeing, it isn't bad. That's actually, that's fine. We're not even reaching that limit. So essentially when that's getting bent, there is no, um, there's no yield occurring where it's actually bending and not bending back. Everything is going to flex right back into its shape. It's only moving that 12 tenths of a millimeter. So um, it's a very good design. However, it might be over-engineered. And if it's over-engineered, that's money. Okay, you have to balance that. Now, safety should always come first, but cost should come second probably at that point. So we might want to thin this out. And so you could go back to the modeling here, go to 3D modeling, and um, you could actually make changes to it and then update it. So if we were over here, um, we're still, oh, I have to turn off finish analysis, sorry. Um, we can now go over here and we can make changes like um, if we were to edit the sketch. Let's see here. Click on that sketch. Now I'm going to drag this up and make it thinner here and there. And actually, let's do it in all areas and see what happens here. Okay, much thinner. Hit finish sketch. Now we could go back to the environment stress analysis. And let's go ahead and hit simulate. That's going to remesh it and calculate. I'll hit run. All right. Now we're starting to see some issues here. We're at 382. And remember, about 125 is our yield. So something might be bending. Although, look at the colors. It's bleeding through. So it's blue right there. It's actually not bleeding through. So technically the core is still intact and probably just surface transformation where you're getting that yield to occur, probably. But let's look at the uh, displacement. And as far as displacement goes, we're now seeing it's moving almost a millimeter. So turn off adjust and go to actual. So it is bending a little bit, but boy, we're actually not doing too bad here even as thin as the part is getting. Let's take a look at the uh, safety factor. And the safety factor here is well below, probably if, if we're looking at a safety factor of, um, if we want for automotive, if we were supposed to be staying at a safety factor of three, look at our 0.72, not good, so it fails. All right, so there's a lot of those different variables that you have to take into account when you're looking at factors of safety. And so just be aware um, when you do that, uh, there's, a, there's liability involved here. Someone, in this case, most likely no one's going to hurt themselves, you would hope. But when you're designing something for a car or train, plane, you have to take into account these things. And also imagine the amount of money you could save by 
designing it so it's not using as much material. Multiply that by a million parts that you might make and how much you, like if you remove 3% of the, the material cost, it's a lot of money. So again, safety should always come first, then look at the actual ramifications of a cost. And that concludes this exercise. Oh, actually I meant to show you, typically what you want is, uh, sorry, you want to report don't, and I want to show this is really nice. You could it, usually you don't just leave the model as is. You create a report that someone could read, and it has all the information. So click on report here, and you can put in any sorts of information like the, the author, um, the part, the company name, whatever you're doing there. And there's properties and studies. You could customize it. Just hit OK here and look at what it's doing. It's taking snapshots of all of the different images of this. Um, and it generates a nice report for you. Now look at that, even cost could be a factor that you could apply with this material and figure out how much it's gonna cost due to its weight and the material that you selected. And so there is a nice report. Now, when I worked in industry, um, we would actually, this is a great report, actually didn't used to produce them quite this nice um, in the software that I used to use, but we would actually do it Microsoft Word. And you could go ahead and you, take pictures just like you have there. We wouldn't give all those images, but we would take the ones that we could describe and with a paragraph put down what we're actually seeing, just like I was explaining to you um, reasons why for these things. Uh, some customers like that, especially if they didn't have the engineering background to interpret what they're reading here. You might need to help them on, but just be careful because if someone is hiring you to do this, make sure that they're not hiring you to be their insurance policy. So if it breaks, Again, there's liability involved. So just um, always keep that in mind. And that concludes this exercise. Welcome back. We're going to take a look at exercise eight. And as you can see up there, exercise eight with Inventor 2021. Now this is a boat that we're going to build. And it's not, it's, it's really just a shell of the boat. We're going to build the hull and then you can dress it up a little bit. I'll show you a little technique here. If you look at some of the earlier videos, um, I think I've made a couple here. One where I make a sailboat. So if you were to plug in E8 Inventor, I think it might have been 2014 or 2012, you could look up another way to make a boat other than this. This is like a cigarette boat here. So let's begin. First of all, the training guide is located at Bertani1.com. So if you Type in V-E-R-T-A-N as a Nancy UX1.com. Go to instructional manuals and the training guide is right under Autodesk Inventor. And you'll find right here the actual training guide. And this starts on page 80. And you can see um, I give some parameters as to uh, how we're going to generate this first. We're going to create the planes. And the reason we create planes is because this is actually a lofting feature that we're going to use. And a loft takes segments of the geometry. So for example, on the boat that we see here was actually generated via a series, like in the very back, you can see here, this is on the front plane. I sketched this um, profile. It's exactly one half of the boat hull. And then we go ahead and we uh, end up making a series of planes, like six inches based off of the first one, eight inches based off of that, and then one inch for the very tip. And we draw in those segments on each one of those areas. And then we're able to create what's called a loft. So let's begin. Go to new, standard IPT, hit create. Now go ahead and click on start 2D sketch and select the XY plane. Now in the training guide, I have you create all the planes first. It's up to you. You could go either route. Anyhow, so let's go ahead and I want you to find the line tool and hover right over here on the left, click and drag to the origin. Once you get the green dot, click, drag down. This first dimension is gonna be, if I recall correctly, two inches. So type in two. I could have done the other one as well. I'm going to go to the front view here. Let's take a look at the training guide. Yeah, it's supposed to be two inches vertical. And then there's the horizontal line, which is going to be two and a half. 
and I'm going to put this on my second screen and just work off of that from there. I'm going to hit escape or finish. I just hit OK there. Sorry, I just right clicked and I hit OK. All right, now I'm going to dimension that other one right here, this line. And that's going to be two and a half. And we could hit the front again. Oops. Hit escape to get out of the dimension tool and then lay these dimensions out so that you're going to be able to stagger them once you drop in the spline. Now go hit the little line underneath, hit the little arrow underneath line and find the spline. Now there's interpolation and control vertex. Again, we're going to use interpolation, so go ahead and select that. Get to this vertex when you get the green dot. Click, drag a little bit of a ways away. Like imagine you're going just diagonally across, and we're um, we want to do it with three steps. So here's the first one, right about there. Click, move it down about uh, two thirds of the way to the finish. Click, and then connect to this point when you get the green dot. Click again and hit the green check mark. Now you could hit escape a couple times. Let's go to dimension. I'd like you to dimension this first point right over here that's floating out there. And that needs to be positioned off the top edge. Go ahead and select this top edge, drag it right over here to the right, click, and that will be 1.25. Now click on this point here to the top edge, get between there, and that will be 1.5. Now let's, uh, click on this point over here again to the vertical line and this will be one point or actually this is only 0 0.5 0 0.5 and then this last point click here to the vertical line drag it right up here and this will be one and a half then hit escape and drag these out and the reason why I want you to stair step them like this is because it's going to make it easier for us to select them later because we're going to reuse this sketch rather than redraw it every time because we need to use it for two additional segments. We're just going to copy and paste it. So that's the geometry we're looking for for the back of the boat. We're going to work our way forward. It's going to get a little bit bigger, then it's going to get smaller and then just come to a point. So let's hit uh, finish sketch and click on the home button here to zoom out, maybe zoom out a little bit further. Now go to the little plus symbol next to origin over here on the model browser. And we need to select one time the XY plane and then go over here to the plane tools. And we've used offset before with exercise four. So this is nothing new. Just go to offset plane and you can see it's moving forward. The arrow's pointing forward. That's good. We want it to be six inches. So hit six and hit enter. Now select the sketch one from the model tree. Don't select it from the actual view screen. You can do that, but it doesn't bring over everything. So we want everything. So we're grabbing the whole sketch, or I should say the sketch as a whole from grabbing it in the mouse browser. Click on it and then hit control, hold control and hit C for copy. Select the edge of that new work plane that you created. And now hold control and hit V as in victory. And there it is. All right, we need to um, edit this sketch. So if you just um, double click on it, you'll get this little option right here, edit sketch. Okay, first of all, the one thing it didn't carry over, if you grab this upper right point corner with your mouse button, drag it, you'll see it didn't lock in that origin because it's offset. So we need to reassign that. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to project geometry and see this upper right corner here? Click on that so that it wakes it up. Now sometimes, man, I could have swore I've been able to lock this in before, but when I practice this again, it wasn't working. So that's why we're using project geometry. But now go to the coincident constraint. Select this corner in the upper right of the thing we moved away, the profile we moved away, and then click on that uh, projected geometry point that we added. And it should move it over and snap it in. Now go back and hit the front, I should say hit the uh, home button. And we're gonna make some changes here. So hit escape and it's gonna get wider. So this 2.5, double click on that, type in three, hit enter. The 1.5 is gonna be two inches. So this one right here, double click, 
make that two, and the 0 0.5, double click on that, and it's going to be 0.75. So you can see it's, it's getting bigger. Now, notice that I went from the largest dimensions to the smallest. So when you're expanding geometry, remember that little trick or piece of advice. That usually works pretty well. Well, we'll reverse that on the next one as we actually get smaller. But so this one, the two inch vertical needs to be 2.375. The 1.5 vertical, double click on that, that needs to be 1.75. And the 1.25 should be 1.375. Hit finish sketch when you're ready. Okay, click on that plane and let's go back to the plane tool and offset from plane. And this one's gonna be eight inches for this offset. So type in eight, hit the green check select the edge and it should stay in the memory buffer that copy and paste that you did so you should be able to hit control v as in victory and it should paste it if it doesn't go ahead and select from the model tree again sketch one control c to copy and then select that control v to paste now we're going to edit this one so click on this you don't have to double click on it i know i said double click earlier you don't have to do that by the way uh, go ahead and edit sketch and remember the trick, we have to pull that away, that corner. And let's go back to um, project geometry, select that upper right corner, and then go to coincident constraint, select this upper right corner to that point that we added. Now let's go to isometric, which is the home button. And now it's gonna get smaller here, hit escape. So we're going to start with the small dimensions first, changing them, working our way out to the larger ones. This is now we're on page uh, 80, like right in the middle there. So this is going to get really small. So the 0.5 that you have there, double click, that's going to be 0 0.2. The 1.5 horizontal dimension is going to be 0 0.5. And the 2.5 horizontal is going to be 0.675. Now let's work on the ones that are vertical. So the smallest one first, 1 1.25 will be 0.2. Oops. The 1.5, double click on that, that's going to be 0.375. And the two inch dimension will be 0.6. And hit finish sketch. So you can see it's got, it's getting Close to the tip, it's getting smaller. Now select the work plane, go to the plane tool, offset from plane, one, hit enter. Click on that work plane, create sketch. Now we could actually draw just a point if you just go to the point tool, and this one actually just snaps right in there. So you could click on that point, and now we've got a point. Hit finish sketch, and there you can see the little point just floating there. We're ready to loft. Find the loft tool. And now we're just gonna click on sections. Now it is important to click in proximity, like a break up the geometry into quadrants in your head. Like, and you wanna select the same quadrant if you can. So like this upper right or upper left quadrant right here, that's where you wanna start selecting. Now watch what happens if you don't. Now you might actually want this effect for a corkscrew or something, but not for this one. Watch if I click on this upper right quadrant now instead of the left. Oh, it actually didn't do it. I'm sorry. Uh, this one doesn't. Never mind. I'm thinking of something else. Continue selecting this one. Never mind what I just said. And finally, click on the point and go ahead and hit OK. Now we want to mirror that across. So let's go to the uh, mirror tool and the features. Go ahead and select the body of boat. Now click on this, on this button, mirror plane, and go over here and find the YZ plane. Click, and you'll see a little green preview. Hit OK. Now, for some reason, it doesn't preview or it doesn't even, it says, gives you an error message. You might not have aligned the vertical right sides of those different sketches. So go back in and, and like go to a front view orientation and just verify that they're all aligned. A lot of times I've seen students over the years, they've actually just had one misaligned. They might have missed a step or something. So that's how you could correct that. Now let's hide these other planes. Just right click on this one, go turn off visibility, right click on this one, 
visibility, right click on this one, visibility. Now to make that cigarette boat, um, what we want to do is probably make it longer. So we're going to lengthen this by about two inches. To do that, find the work plane one and double click. Now work plane one, you'll remember, was six inches. Let's increase that, type in eight, hit the green check, and now it's actually lengthened the boat. Now select the space, start a sketch, and we're going to add to this. So we could go to Project Geometry, select this face, and now you could go to Offset, click on the outer edge, and drag this in about 0.25. You could type in 0.25 if you like. Now I go to 3D Model, Extrude Boss, click on that inside profile. We only want it to go about 0.25 or 0.2. But then the taper, set it to about 45, uh, actually minus 45, or hit the flip switch right here. That gives us more of an aerodynamic look. You know, we could even shorten that. Let's make that only 0.1, hit enter. All right, now let's go ahead and select this face and create a sketch on that surface again. Take the line tool and right at this origin, click and drag this all the way across till right about there. And then we're going to click on that. And just so we know what it is, let's go to center line. So we change it to a center line and then click off of it and hit escape. Now let's go to the arc tools, find three point arc, and we're going to make the cockpit. So um, back here, actually the motor is going to have a little cover over it. So right about there, and again, we're just eyeballing it. We're just having a little fun here. So you can make it however you want. Again, I show you how to make a, a sailboat if you look at an older version of this exercise. Uh, you could go back to that. And so I'm gonna have this go about a half inch forward, click, and I'm gonna put a little bit of a bow in there, almost um, 10 inches, like nine and a half is pretty good. Click, hit escape. Now, Let's click on that, go to mirror and select uh, mirror line, select the center line, hit apply and done. Now let's go back to that three point arc and we'll put the windshield on. So with a blocker, click here. It's not really a windshield on this one. And we're gonna just dome that out, not dome it, but we're gonna give it a little bit of a radius there. Now let's do the same over here. Click on this point to this point and we'll just have it bow out a little bit just to give it some uh, curvature. All right, let's go to 3D model extrude. And notice I, I didn't add any dimensions. I'm just kind of just having a little bit of fun, like I said. Okay, click on those two profiles, drag this up. We're going to go about 1.25 ish. That's pretty good. And let's turn on the taper again, minus 45 degrees. Uh, that's pretty extreme. Let's go with instead, my, uh, let's go with 30 degrees. Yeah, I like that better. 30 degrees, looks 45 is a little bit extreme. Hit OK. Now go to the YZ plane and start a sketch. And we're going to uh, cut this out a little bit. So go to the line tool and right up here somewhere, determine where you want the, uh, the windshield or the windbreaker there down like that. And then we're going to go up here a little bit and add the engine compartment click. Now you can't see through it right yet. Remember we've looked at how to change that transparency on or so we can see through it. It's just under view and visual style. And you could go with shaded with edges, then you can see through it, but you don't really need that. I'm just going to go back to shade with edges. All right. Now I'm going to go to 3d model extrude mid plane and drag this out and then cut it. So we want to go to uh, right here, cut. All right, hit OK. All right, now we're going to add some fillets. Let's go to the fillet. Now we could have added these fillets in the sketch, but what happens when we extrude with, with draft, the fillet actually gets smaller as it gets higher. If that's your design intent, then by all means do it that way. But in this case, I'm just going to put this here and I'm going to squeeze that in a little bit. See a little arrow? I'm going to drag that in. Oh, I don't want it that much. Um, actually, I think I'm going to put 0.5. Yeah, 0.5 looks pretty good. And this one here. 
And we'll put one on the back and one there too. We could even put one here and here. All right, now we want to make the cockpit area with the seating. Uh, what we could do here, you could select this face if you want to go straight down or if you don't mind ha having it at an angle, whatever you want to do. I'm going to select this face here, start a sketch. I'm going to go to project, select this face. Now go, oh, make sure you click on it. Interesting, let's see if we can offset that. Okay, it doesn't like that geometry, and I think it might be because of the fill. Let me just check that again. Let's see. Project geometry. Okay, it does not like that. Um, so I'm going to turn off finish sketch here. Yours might think it's okay, and that's all right. Make it about 0.1 if it's working on yours. I'm going to disable that fill it. I'm going to go back to fill it here, right click, and edit feature and control select those two edges because I, I suspect that's what it's not liking. So let's try that. <clears throat> okay, now we can select that face, start a sketch, and we should be able to do our project. Okay, I'm going to cancel now. Instead here, let's um, finish sketch. Let's put it on the actual surface. Start a sketch on the surface that's angled. Um, now we could go to project, select that face, and there we go. Now it worked. Go to offset, click on that edge, bring it in, maybe 0.1. And now we could go to 3D model and extrude. Select that profile, and let's flip it. It went to cut, but we don't want it going that deep, so let's drag that up. Okay, and just make sure it doesn't bottom out and cut through the boat. Again, we're just making a visual appearance here. All right, now we could go ahead and put some additional fills, or we're going to put that little design on the surface. So select this face, start a sketch. And I went with kind of like a Cobra type of sketch. I used, and this is a good time to try the control point vertex. And just get on this edge, drag it out, and click. And what's really neat about this tool, just hit the green check, is you'll see the control vertices, those little points. You could add such a beautiful artistic shape to them. The handles really make it easier. Those of you who are like sculptors, I think will like and appreciate that. That's what's used most commonly in industry for industrial design. Uh, very rarely an industrial designer will use the spline and pulation. They might use it every once in a while. That used to be the only option, but uh, control vertex is much smoother. And we'll go with another one here. So I'm going to add one right about there. I'm going to lightly follow that geometry all the way down. And now I'm going to go to the three-point arc from this point to this point. Add a little bit of a archway. And then this one here isn't going to be exact, but we can fix that. We could actually grab those points and drag them onto the surface. We could actually, too, steal that edge and use it, but we don't really need to do that. But we're just having fun. All right, now I'm going to just draw a vertical line through there so I can use it as a mirror tool. I'm going to go to Mirror. I want this geometry right here to be mirrored. The mirror line is going to be that line there. Hit apply and done. Now I could go to 3D model, extrude, select those two profiles. And of course we don't want them that high, but let's put in 0 0.01 maybe. Maybe a little higher than that. But not that much. Um, I could have added more draft too, maybe 35 degrees. Let's see if that looks a little bit better. Let's see that this feature is created right there, extrusion three. So if I right click, I could edit the feature and let's put in, I'm going to put in 36. 
There we go. I like that better. And basically, <clears throat> you're just chiseling away and adding geometry as you go to create that boat. And remember, there's all the colors that you can tinker with here, too. So let's say we wanted this to be, um, let's go with like a cool white. And then we could select these surfaces here and here, add a little bit of accent color to them. And before you know it, you've got your boat going here. You could go to environment. I should say it. <clears throat> view, give it some perspective, visual style, realistic, turn, I don't like the default two lights. I really like how it looks. Go to ray tracing and add more colors to it and you have your boat. So that's that exercise, as you can see there, for dressing it up a little bit and just have a little fun. And that concludes exercise eight. Welcome back. My name is Chris Sikora, and I'm going to go through exercise nine today. And in exercise nine, remember, this is a SIM class, SIM, C-I-M, Computer Integrated Manufacturing course. So up until now, we've pretty much just been using Inventor for 3D modeling. And now with 3D models, remember, there's additive manufacturing and there's removal manufacturing. And basically, are subtractive manufacturing. And what we're going to look at today is subtractive manufacturing. Essentially, the three models come in handy because you could send them out to a 3D printer, build them, and that generally adds material. But here we're looking at how you would take a chunk of material and remove that shape from it and usually use a CNC, a computer numeric controlled machine. There's um, basically there's the lathe type and there's the milling machine. And then there's also hybrid machines that do actually um, multiple things like they uh, there's some that have additive manufacturing built into it and milling capability. Most of you uh, or all of you actually who have taken or who have gotten to this level in this class have had to have taken uh, IMT 103, 104, which uh, IMT 103 deals with learning the lathe, drills, uh, cut cutters and measuring instruments and all that, the safety as well. And then the 104, which is the milling capabilities. Well, here today, we're going to just look at milling. Next week, we're going to take a look at the lathe. But um, in our shop, we have multiple Haas milling machines. And basically, we're going to learn how to output a, um, a little program from a 3D model that we built inside Inventor, bring it over into a product called Mastercam. Now, Mastercam, you're going to have to download. You just go to Mastercam. Uh, just type in Mastercam. But, through search. So here you can type in Mastercam, M-A-S-T-E-R-C-A-M, and H-O-E for Home Learning Edition. And then you should see right here, you can actually download the demo today. So make sure you go to mastercam.com for this. So here's the Home Learning Edition. There's several links and it's free. Just use your uh, educational email address in order to access it. Just hit continue here. And on here, you'll see where you could actually uh, download it. Let's see, oh, here we go. Request Mastercam demo, H-O-E. Put in your name, your information, the uh, community college that I teach at here. Okay, and any additional information. And it should just give you a link right there. You download it. It's gonna, the link is gonna look, uh, just to show you here, it will be an uh, executable file. And let's see, downloads, there it is. Uh, Mastercam 2021 demo HLE. If, uh, we're, if 2022 is available, definitely try that one. But um, just double click on this and it will install. And the only thing it doesn't let you do, one of the biggest limitations is with the learning edition, is that you can't output the actual um, G code. So at the college, we actually have the full blown licenses where you can actually work on this from home, bring it in, and then we'll actually touch upon it. Now, with the uh, current COVID situation, we're 100% online. So we're going to try and do simulations instead for this class. This class isn't really focused on sitting in a CNC machine all day. That's the 222 class.
the 220 class. But anyhow, let's begin. First of all, we're going to model this up in an inventor. So I want you to go to New Standard I Part and hit Create. Now, in the training guide that we've been working on, it does go through all the parameters on here. I actually have a better drawing, and I want to put that up there so you all can see it. And so, like, here it is. This is the um, SOLIDWORKS basics. And I, I actually grabbed this out of my SOLIDWORKS training guide. But that's what it's going to look like. It's just going to be a, like a fixture, a very basic fixture with just some pockets and a couple of dr drilling processes. So we're going to learn how to do those. Um, so let's begin. With the new part, go to Start Sketch, select the X, Y plane. Now, some of you might wonder, like, well, isn't it going to be, like, how's that going to be when it gets on a CNC machine? Because remember, you have three axes, X, Y, and Z. Um, if we drop it on this X, Y plane, it will land on that surface, almost as if you're putting it on a table. Okay, so select that. You have the ability to transform or rotate it, so it's not a big deal, even if you get it on a different plane. It's very common, in fact. Go to rectangle. Now it's a four by four block, and it's one inch thick. So click in this corner, drag this out, type in four, hit tab on your keyboard, type in four again, hit enter, and now hit the front block here so it zooms to fit. Now we have another rectangle right up here. Just click in this corner, drag this out. This is 1.5, tab, 1.5, enter. Let's go to the circle tool and down here, click and drag out a circle and make that one inch. That's going to be a pocket now. That's not going to be a drilled hole. One inch diameter drill. No, we don't need that. Uh, this is actually a pocket. It's going to be flat at the bottom. Typically a drill has a, a tip, like 118 degree tip on it. This is not going to have that. So you're going to want to make this pocket. All right. Now let's go to the line tool and infer over here. Click and drag this out. Uh, don't put any dimensions in, drag this across. Oops, let me make sure I got a couple little fragments in there. You don't want fragments in, of your, in your geometry. I'm just going to delete that line and start over. There we go. And then basically you're making a triangle. And as we go to the drawing, you can see um, the rectangle, or the square actually needs to be a half inch off the top edge and a half inch off the left. So that's for positioning. This is 1.1, the hole here is 1.125 by 0.75. I'm just going to drag that over here. And so we can put these in. So go to the dimension tool, select this edge to this, and that's going to be 0.5. This edge to this top edge will be 0.5. Uh, you can hit escape. Now this needs to be aligned to that. So let's just go ahead and use this tool here, collinear constraint. Select this line here to that line. Now go back to dimension, dimension this edge to this edge, and again, 0.5. Don't worry that it's starting to intersect. You'll see we'll fix that shortly. Let's um, add a dimension from this corner to this edge, and that's going to be 1.78. And then from this corner to the bottom edge, these are actually going to be theoretical sharp corners. So 0 0.941, they're going to disappear, but the dimensions are clear on this. Okay, now um, let's go to the fillet tool, set the fillet radius to 0.25 and select all four of these corners and the three on the triangle. There we go. All right, go back to dimension and let's position this now. So select the center point to the bottom edge, drag that out. And we're going to lay these out a bit better in a second, 0.75. And then the center point to the right edge, click here, 1.125. Now hit escape and let's lay these out so that they're easily seen and interpreted. That's the whole idea when you make a drawing. You want to make sure that it's easy for someone to read who's going to sit down and look at this. Okay, that looks pretty decent. Now there's uh, two holes that are going to go in there, but let's get those later. Those are going to be actually we're going to use the, the hole tool inside the software. So now go to 3D model, go to extrude, and go to the home button. Now you're going to select the three 
the centers and then outside. Oh, um, actually, no, we don't want that. Uh, if you shift and rotate, actually hit escape. Escape a couple times. Let's try that again. Go to extrude. I'm sorry, we just want this. And this is supposed to be one inch thick. Go ahead and hit OK. Now go ahead and go to extrude, select this face. And we can just go to project, select the face. And now we could go to extrude again. So go to 3D model, extrude. And now we actually want to select those three. So I'm going to select this profile, that one, that one, and that one to fill it, and then drag it up. Now it's going to want to remove material. Make sure you get it to 0.5, but right now it's set to cutting material. So make sure you join it. And so now we've made our block because those are not through holes. Those are pockets. And go to isometric, which is the home button. Now we're going to add, a, there's a half inch hole that's 0.75 deep here and another a quarter inch hole that's 0.75 deep. We're going to use the hole tool. I'm just going to rotate this a little bit. We'll go with the, um, the half inch first. So go to hole. Now make sure it's set to simple hole. Make sure seat is none. And we have it set here to distance. Now these parameters, this first one will add 3 quarters 0.75 deep. And then it's actually 0.5. All right, now select right about here on this surface, and you'll see it's located. Now go to Sketch 3 up here, and this lets us position it. So we could go to the Dimension tool and click on this center to this edge, drag it down, and it's uh, 0.75 off that edge. And then click on that center again to the bottom edge, and that's 0.75, and hit Finish Sketch. And look at that, we have our hole. Now what's neat here, look at that, there's actually a cone, a, a 118 degree cone that you see on a drill. All right, now let's add the next hole. Go to hole. Uh, this next one is gonna be 0.25. We might actually see it here on the list. There it is, 0.25 and three quarters deep. Make sure the, it's hole and seed is none. And select right about there. Go to Sketch 4 and go to Dimension. Select this edge here to this edge, drag it down. That's going to be 1.25. And then select the center point to the bottom edge. And this is going to be 1.375. You could hit Finish. All right, our part is done. Let's save it. Go ahead and save it wherever you know you're going to be able to find it. This is going to be E9. Save. Now, after you've installed Mastercam, it uh, you start up. It takes a little bit of time, but it should look like this. Um, now, just to show you, our goal with Mastercam is this ultimately, where we could see uh, the process. And this is a simulation. Let's go all the way back and hit play, and you can see it's showing. There's the actual tool right there. It's an end mill. It's a quarter inch end mill, and it's milling out this pockets and it's finishing it. And then there were the two drill processes, which we set it to pack uh, for chip break. So it would actually break the chip off so we could go at very high speed. Now you'll see one of the reasons why simulation is so important. The AI built in the software, it does a darn good job, but from time to time, there's things like this fragments and you want to be able to fix those. Uh, we're not going to go into all the details. Again, this class is just scraping the surface, but some simple adjustments could actually improve that and fix that. If we have time, we'll go ahead and take a look. But that's our goal is to get that set up this way. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And you can see here's the tool paths and such. Let's go to open and find that part E9. There's my and I'm not going to say that last one. All right, it should come in like this. Now, the first thing we need to do is select the post or post processor. Where that's located, it's under machine. Now, what a post processor is, or you'll hear it out in the shop, we'll call it a post. A post is basically a little program that uh, adjusts the output for the specific machine. 
figure every machine, many of them work off of the Fanuc uh, language, uh, which was been around since the 70s, maybe even early, uh, late 60s. Um, I'm not entirely sure when it was uh, formed, but basically CNC machine, since the infancy of CNC machine. Now there's other types out there too, but pretty much Fanuc is uh, what we're gonna use. It's, we're gonna use a subset of that for our Haas. And so with that in mind, um, every, there's variations to it. Just like you have accents in different parts of a country, each machine has its own accent with its language and you have to inform the software to, so it knows to output it with that accent so it speaks the same language. Anyhow, uh, when you select machine, you get to select from a variety of machines. Here you go to mill. Now there's default and then there's manage list. If what you can do, whoever manufactured your machine, usually they'll have a post available or sometimes you could get it through your master cam reseller, either one, contact them if you need that specific post. We're gonna go with the default, which is basically very simple, the original language, okay? Now, you'll see once you select that, you'll get these options in the Toolpaths browser on the left. Hit the little plus little next to properties. And first thing we wanna do is set up our stock because right now we do have the stock, but this is after it's been finished. We wanna set up what type of block of material do we need? And we're gonna make this out of 6061. So uh, just like our uh, last exercise, let's go to stock setup, just click on it. Now right here, you'll see um, X, Y, and Z, and you can put in parameters. So if you have specific parameters, you're able to just plug them in. We're gonna just click on all solids and it's gonna look at our model and make it fit. Make, it'll make it to that exact size. Now be aware there's facing processes and things like that that you generally wanna go through, but we're gonna pretend that that was already done to this block. It's very accurate at four inches um, by one inch thick. Now we could type in and add a little bit of material onto it if we wanted, we're not gonna do that right now. Again, when you get into the 220 class, that's where they start going into a lot more of those details. We're focused pretty much on the simulation currently. All right, so we've hit that. Now let's go to tool settings. Now here's where basically you're setting up your tool and the material type that you're going to uh, approach. Now this is um, also what these softwares typically do. They have their own little algorithms built in that will give you some default um, feeds and speeds. Again, those of you who've taken 103, 104 know what feeds and speeds are. Uh, you could look them up in the machinery's handbook, depending upon material type. And it looks at your drill or your uh, tools, like if it's just tool steel or if it's actually uh, coated or what, whatever you're using, it can vary greatly. Um, of course, coated tools can go a lot faster in cutting. They have longer life expectancies than typical high-speed steel. But we're just gonna go ahead and uh, leave the tool alone but instead we're gonna specify material. So go to select and you'll see over here, you could go instead of mill current, go to mill library and they have a selection of materials. And you could, it's my understanding, you could purchase additional libraries and materials if this, this is all you have, or you can make your own. And we're gonna go with 6061 again. And we learned from exercise seven, a little bit about 6061, it's an aluminum. And it's pretty strong aluminum. Um, but anyhow, we're gonna go with that 6061 hit the green check. Now what it's gonna do is our, it's gonna give us some default settings for the feeds and speeds, like I said earlier. Now remember the feeds and speeds that typically you'll find in a CNC uh, or software like this, they're gonna be very conservative. When you're in the shop, there's other variables, like I said, different types of tooling and such. This does have a lot of technology that you could tinker with and put in your own database of technology. But just as a heads up, it's going to be very on the conservative side, whereas when you're in a production environment, you need to get that thing running fast. The whole idea is get these parts out as fast as possible without breaking tools with this little tool where you want to find that balance because that's, that's money. And you're going to make your boss really happy if you could get these things out. But remember, you don't want to be breaking tools all the time. All right, so let's uh, hit the green check. Now, we're looking to add, we'll first add the drill processes. So uh, you could go here or you could right click right over here and you'll see from milling, uh, machining, but let's just click on drill. 
Now, in this version, and I'm not sure if it's just the install that I have, um, or I might have a lot open and running because currently I am recording. Uh, it seems to be taking a long time, so just be patient. Don't don't click. It might just be this release. I know previous releases it seemed much faster when bringing up this information. So um, just give it a minute before you start clicking on things because I do believe it's just thinking here and I might actually pause it. Oh, there it goes. All right, didn't even have to pause it. It just took about 30 seconds or so. All right, so now here's where we get to select the entity. So we're going with the drill process and to rotate this, unlike Inventor, you remember Inventor was shift in the, the wheel. This is just the wheel, push it down, hold it, move your mouse left, right, up and down. You could rotate. Now go ahead and select this lower edge. Now be really careful when you look in this pocket, make sure this edge glows because that's what you're going to want to select. You don't want the upper edge or else it's just going to stop right at the top there. You want it to go all the way deep. So click on that. You'll get a little red cross and that's good. You could hit the green check mark here and that brings up the properties here for the. So we're set to drill. We're going to go to tool here. And now again, it's taking a while on my machine. I'm not sure why. If it's taking a while on yours, just sit back. I noticed if I click too much, you might escape out of something too early before it's finished. So um, I'm going to pause while this comes up. Okay. It took about 25 seconds, uh, I counted. So again, it just might be on my system. Now what we want to do, never go with the default tool that it gives you here. That's not what we're looking for. We're putting it on a half inch, so we need a half inch tool. So click on select library tool. Now there is a filter right here. You could click on filter and just so you don't have to see all the tools that are in there. And remember these are tools in their technology database. You may not have all these tools, so you could customize it to what you have. But in here I'm going to hit none, but then I'm just going to select, uh, let's see, drill right there. I'm going to hit the green check and that will only give me the drills. Now we have to look for a half inch and it goes in the increments as such. And so let's just scroll down here. We're getting, there it is. It's tool 162. So the half inch drill. Hit the green check. Now you could go to the holder. Now why do they have the holder? The reason they have holders is because when they do run these simulations. Sometimes they, you can actually run the whole machine inside the simulation to see if there's anything that's going to hit. Because remember, this is automation. These are um, basically um, machines that are moving and you don't want them to crash in each other. All right, but we're going to leave that alone. We're going to go with the default holder. Now I go to stock and select use stock for the define, uh, define stock from. We'll go with stock setup there. Now the cut parameters. Now here you see drill and counter bore. Go ahead and select chip break in this case. And this is going to plunge it at 100 thousandths and then bring it back up and then plunge a little bit more. So it actually, it'll, it'll, it's, it's going to pop it up 100 thousandths. And what that does is it breaks the chip. If you've ever seen when you're drilling sometimes, the chip is rather long. Doing this can actually break that up. So if you ever have problems with your drills breaking while you're drilling in the drilling process, try the chip break or pack. All right, now the uh, tool axis control, we're, uh, we're just leaving it in 3D axis format. Uh, limits, we don't need to set any limits here. Now let's go right to coolant. Now there is things like safety zone and things like that. We're not gonna go into that type of detail here, but go to coolant and you generally wanna run coolant to prolong tool life, allows you to run much faster uh, your process. Hit the green check. All right, so that's our first drill. Now let's do another one. Go ahead and click on drill again. And this time it came up much faster. It was obviously loaded. And now we're gonna select the bottom of that hole there. Click on that, and this is a quarter inch hole. Make sure that red cross is there. That looks good. Hit the green check. Now we're gonna go to tool. And again, uh, it's probably going to take about 25 to 30 seconds. And from here, I'm going to avoid hitting my pause button for some strange reason. Last time I hit pause it a couple times inside of the video, it actually um, 
change the sync on my as I talk. So, which is really annoying. So I'm going to wait. It's only a few seconds. Okay, now we'll go to select library tool and it should still remember with our filter the drill sizes and here we're looking for a quarter inch and it goes by size so there's an eighth so we know it's coming up pretty soon here. There it is, quarter and it, it's a tool 124. Go ahead and hit the green check and now Let's go back to uh, stock. You'll see it will remember from the last choice that we made. So that's good. Let's go to coolant and it remembered the coolant. It even uh, probably remembered the apachnium too. So go ahead and hit the green check mark and there's that. Now we could just simulate those two and see what happens. So up here at the top, click on select all operations. And let's go ahead and go to Verify Selected Operations. Now it's going to bring up this tool here and hit Play. Okay, and there you can see it's actually pecking. And it left us with our holes. I'm going to go ahead and close that. So now we want to go ahead and add some of the additional, the next thing. So if we go over here to 2D, now there's several, several strategies. Let's go to pocket. Let's, we're just going to keep it very simple. And again, we'll give this a minute. Again, it's taking about 30 seconds when I've counted 25 to 30 seconds. Yours might not be taking that long. Now notice while we're waiting, there's 3D. Now 3D gets a little bit more advanced. That's for contoured shapes and things like that. Can you do a pocket? Absolutely. There's more set, set up involved. Uh, as you become more advanced, you're, you'll find yourself using a lot of those tools. Okay, so right now we have it set to face. So select the floor of each one of those pockets. So there's one, two, and three. Make sure they turn yellow and hit the green check at the bottom. Now we have the toolpath type, we have it set to pocket, go to tool. And again, uh, it's gonna take a minute here. And as I was talking before, you have 3D and you have multi-axis. Uh, we will not get into those, those are pretty advanced for this class. Again, this is just a basics class, but those um, can do amazing things. Uh, those of you in our program may be aware that we actually have um, a seven axis machine and we have a trunnion on our Haas for four and five axis milling. So uh, while we're waiting for this, basically you have your typical one, two, three axes, um, if, you know, but um, this allows like, for example, articulation around and up and down like that. Okay, anyhow, so now we're gonna go back to select library tool and we wanna go to filter and turn off, turn on none. And then we're going to go with the uh, very first one, end mill flat. Hit the green check. And now we're going to go with quarter inch because our radiuses were a quarter inch. Um, we'll go with a little smaller. We could go even bigger, I suppose. Um, you know, we can maybe go three eighths. Let's try three eighths. Hit the green check. Have a little fun with things. Sometimes give it a try. See what is it? This is a simulation. It doesn't hurt anything. Okay. So now that I have that set up, um, oh, actually, I take that back. I don't want the three eighths because that was a quarter, the quarter inch radius uh, that won't fit. So let's scrap that. Hit select library tool and let's stick with the quarter inch. The green check. Okay. Now we could go to holder and you'll see similar holders you could choose from. Cutting parameters. Now you can see if you want it to climb or conventional, how you want it to mill out this pocket. You have standard facing. Um, again, we're not going to go into all these details. Now the stock to leave on the walls, 
that's for roughing. So uh, when you go over the finishing cut, there's a little bit of material on there. It can make a nice smooth surface. We're gonna cut in a little bit deeper. Let's go with uh, 10 thousandths. Uh, roughing, we have all these other options like step over distance, percentage. Um, and now notice you have high speed, parallel, constant, zigzag. Let's go to, um, we'll just leave it as is. And finishing, we could have, maybe if you want, we could put two passes in. Maybe you want to try and smooth it a little bit more. Depends on how fast you're going. Uh, machine finish passes only at final depth. You could adjust and override the feed rate. Now this actually is very important because like I said, when you get in the industry, these settings are a bit on the conservative side typically. Um, you might want to speed things up a bit. Your boss might want you to, and they usually will have ways to do that, but you yourself can, once you feel more comfortable, you can try this out. But um, anyhow, so let's go ahead and we'll turn coolant on. And there it is. Let's go ahead and simulate it now. Go to the top here, just select all operations, hit verify, select the operations, and I'll hit play, and it will do all of the operations. And you could even zoom up on this and see in detail what's going on. Now, when you want to output this program, you click on G1. And that's where you're going to see with this HLE edition, you can't do it. So you are able to save this though. You would basically save this. And those of you in this class, you could bring it up, uh, bring it to the school. And we actually have full blown licenses of the software with the proper post and you could output them. And the, the hope is once this COVID thing blows over, we could go in and actually run some of these things on machines. We're going to, there's more settings involved than this, by the way, but uh, this is just a, an overview. And that concludes exercise nine. Welcome back. I'm Chris Sikora, and I'm going to step you through exercise 10 inventor or SIM IM, uh, IMT 110 class. Uh, this uh, today's lesson is actually going to be involved with uh, modeling a very simple part, actually, and then preparing to have it cut on a CNC lathe. And we're going to use Mastercam once again. So last week we saw just scrape the surface of Mastercam milling, uh, we're going to take a look at a lathe project today. And so, uh, as you can see here, this is a cylindrical part, and that's perfect for the lathe. Um, the intent is we're going to model it up inside Inventor, and then we're going to bring it into Mastercam. Now, this isn't Mastercam. This is another product called SolidWorks, but basically I'm just using it as an example because I had this file already on here of a Haas, uh, TL1, basically a tool room lathe. And we have a, uh, two of these at the college that I work at. And so um, you can see this is the control panel right here. Uh, your USB, you could stick your USB stick in there with your programs and load it up. And there's the you know emergency stop and uh, all the settings and view screen that you might need, that you'll definitely need when running the part. But anyhow, as you can see here, here's the chuck, and we have uh, our part mounted in the three-jaw chuck, and I have a transparent version over it, what the stock is going to look like before we cut it. So, um, and the reason I have that is so you can see, you want to be very careful. You don't want to crash your tools into the stock before it's ready. So we're going to go in and make sure that when it does, it's going to chisel away, basically cutting away at this geometry layer after layer until we have this nice form that it creates. Now there's additional steps like cutoffs and things like that. I might actually have you do that part um, on your own, but for the most part, I'm gonna get you through the roughing and, and the finishing here. So let's begin. All right, the drawing, I'll either have it for you or I'll send it to you or I'll have it in the book, either, either way, it's gonna look like this. And so we can see it's uh, four and a half inches in, di uh, in length, three inch diameter. And then there's these little uh, features that are on here. So let's begin. Now, there's a couple ways you could build this. You could build this um, with sketches and a revolve, or you could actually build it um, 
with extrusions. So we're going to build it with the sketches because that's probably the easiest. So up in Inventor, just go to New, Standard Eye Part, and hit Create. Select Start 2D Sketch. Now, we want to work on the XY plane because with the lathe, you're primarily working on the XY. You're not really working on the Z unless you're in a multi-axis machine, which we don't we don't have that uh, on the two lathes that we have. Go to XY. And now we're going to go ahead and select the line tool. And the diameter is three inches. So we only want to go about one and a half inches up here. So I just zoomed out a little bit, got approximately there. Drew this across, this is about a half inch. And then it goes uh, down like this, across a little bit, maybe about an inch or so. And then uh, there's a taper on it. And then out another inch. And then just um, straight down. And then close it, get all the way over the other side. Now we're gonna go to the line tool again, make sure line is selected and draw a center line out here so that we could get diameter dimensions off of this for the lathe. So go to dimension, select that. Oh, make sure you turn off center line too. I always forget to do that on this. And oh, I'm gonna hit escape. Let's uh, make sure that's, oh, click on that, make sure it's activated. There we go. And then hit escape and then click on that to turn off. My apologies. Okay, go to dimension, the center line, to this line, you see we get the three inch diameter. Let's go back to our print and we can see a half inch and four and a half overall. So we could do this one right here. It's going to be 0.5. Zoom up from here to here. So be 4.5. And then we have 1.75 for this diameter from here to here. So dimension to your center line. 1.75 and then it's one inch for that post in the front so from here to the center line again and 30 degrees so let's go ahead and dimension here to the center line and now you see you're not going to get 30 degrees because it's only one half so just type in 15 hit enter And then back to the print, one and a half inches right here. Okay, now we have to put the fillets on. So the fillets are going to be a half inch there and one inch there. So go to this fillet tool, so type in 0.5, select that corner there. Type in one here and select this corner here. And you could hit finish sketch because we're ready to revolve it. So go to revolve boss and hit OK. Oh, and uh, we could put the chamfer in now. Go to chamfer and the chamfer is called on at 0.125 by 45. So we could just go ahead and select that edge. And there it is. Go ahead and go to file, save as, and let's save this as E10. Save it where you know you're going to be able to find it. Okay, and now we're going to bring it into MasterCam. Now, in MasterCam, this is what we're going to look to do. Once we have it in here, I just want to show you the simulation here. We're going to have MasterCam simulate it, cutting it down just like that. All right, so let me close that. Oops, here we go. And I'm gonna just go to open and make sure you're set to Autodesk Inventor Files. And go ahead and select your E10 and hit open. Okay, the first thing we need to do is set up the stock. Uh, well, actually first set the machine. So go up to machine and click on lathe and default. And I hit the little plus symbol next to the properties and click on stock setup. And from the stock setup, first of all, you can go to tool settings. 
Uh, let's go ahead and change our, let's go to select and no li uh, lathe library. Let's see what we have. We'll go with 6061 again. Hit the green check. And now go to stock setup. And right here, we're going to go with the left spindle and properties. And as far as this goes, um, we're going to go type in 3.25 because our stock we're estimated as, uh, well, the, the size that we're cutting this down to is going to be three inches. So our stock should be a little bit larger than that. Okay. And then the length, we're going to have a seven inch bar. And then we're just cutting off that four, first four and a half inches. We need that extra material on the, up, the end to hold in the chuck. And then the uh, position line Z at, or axis, just leave it as at the default. Okay. Hit the green check. And go ahead and hit it again, the green check. Now we can see our stock preview is that border there. Notice our parts out of it. Well, that's because we modeled to the right of the origin inside Inventor. And that's fine because there's a transform tool that's going to enable us to move this over. So if you find transform, find translate, and now select model and hit end selection. Then over here, go to move, because you don't want it to copy it. Um, and then the delta will be minus 4.5. So it's gonna, we're gonna move it towards that way. And just hit the green check mark up here. And now you can see it's within limits. Also, when we added that additional material, look at we have a little space there, additional material that we put in when we plugged in those numbers. Okay, <clears throat> now from here, we first have to face the front. Uh, facing basically means to cut it smooth. So to do that, go ahead and click right here next to this red arrow and then right click and go to lathe tool paths. And we're going to go ahead and find face. All right. And on the face tools, let's go with the uh, tool number 12 here. And we're going to, we could adjust some of these feed and speed rates um, for the so the uh, feed rate, we'll put that at 5 thousandths of an inch. The spindle speed, let's go ahead and make that 500. And the uh, max spindle speed, we'll put that 4,000. And then go ahead and turn your coolant on and make sure it's set to flood. OK, so from there, we could go now to phase parameters. And we could uh, set the entry amount at 20 thousandths. And that's where it's going to start above the part. And then turn on rough step over, turn off finish. And the rough step over, we'll go ahead and set that to 0.02. And the stock to leave, let's leave um, 5 thousandths of an inch for the finishing cut later. All right. And we could go ahead and hit the green check. And now you can actually see the toolpath, that little yellow line with the blue line. Now we're going to add another one here. Let's go to right click and lathe toolpath. So as you right click there, lathe toolpaths and go to can. And we talked a little bit about can cycles in one of the videos um, that I put a link to um, when we were talking about uh, hand programming. But let's go with can rough here. And now we'll just go ahead and select this, uh, zoom up, we'll select this edge. And the arrows, most of the arrows, the green and red arrows should be pointing up about 45 degrees in the upper left there. If they're not, this little switch over here could reverse them. But what you want to do is zoom out here. Uh, also, you could check on the view solids or show solids here just so you can see this. It might be a little easier to see that way. And see this red arrow forward? As long as those arrows are pointing, just like mine, hit forward one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And that should actually give you the whole path. So go ahead and hit the green check from there. So let's just go ahead and from here, we can now select the same tool. We'll use the same one. Once again, the number 12 tool that we had. Uh, that way we don't have to force a tool change, but basically we're not going to put that in the program. So leave that off. Let's set the uh, spindle speed. Let's bump that up to 500. 
and again uh, 4,000 for the max spindle speed. Now go ahead and hit can text. Um, uh, actually, that's, uh, sorry, that's not what we want. Yeah, actually what I meant to hit was the canned rough parameters. So make sure you hit that button. And then over here, we're going to go ahead and for the stock to leave, we'll leave um, 30 thousandths on that surf. Okay, and so basically as far as the stock to leave on the Z, we'll go ahead and add 15 thousandths there. And then the exit length, let's go ahead and put in five, uh, 50 thousandths on that as well. Notice the G71 output here. This is showing you a little preview of the code, just like we saw with hand, cal uh, hand developed calculations, G71. Um, if you go ahead and if you go ahead and hit the extend contour to stock, you could actually see it updates the X, that's the thickness of the stock, to a quarter inch there. And last but not least, go ahead and click on lead in and out. With the lead in, we're going to go ahead and um, we'll leave an extended amount of 0 0.1, 100 thousandths over. And the lead in, a lead out, I should say, we'll leave uh, 150. And go ahead and hit the green check and hit the green check. All right, and there's our path. So let's take a look at this. Now, um, you could rotate with the middle mouse button at this point and go ahead and click, uh, first of all, up at the top here, click on this little icon to select all operations. And now you could hit on verify selected operations. And let's rotate this down a little bit so we could, there's our tool. And we could go ahead and hit slow this down a little bit because it does go rather fast and hit play. There you can see the facing operation and then the rough cut. And you'll see how rough it is. It actually leaves little jagged edges there a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to move on to more of a finishing cut here. Um, so right click somewhere on the screen and go to top. Brings you back here. And let's go ahead and hide the, uh, first of all, go to select all operations and let's hide those uh, toolpaths just for right now. We can bring them back later when we want to see them. We'll move on to the next step here. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do the finish cut here. So right click on that little block right next to the red arrow again, go to lathe toolpaths and find finish. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to go back and select that, zoom up to it maybe, click on that. And as long as those arrows are pointing in the right direction, again, uh, I'm going to turn on show solid so we can see this and hit the little red arrow forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I know with the wireframe mode, there is a way to select the old one and the solid mode. I don't, I haven't figured that out yet here, but um, anyway, go ahead and hit the green check. And now let's say, um, you don't see the tool that you wanted to use for this particular operation. We could actually create custom tools at this point. You could right click on this and um, let's see, go to tool manager and then cl right click on this and find copy tool and right click and paste tool. And it's just going to give you a warning. That's all right. Just hit okay. And it's going to make a copy of that tool. So you can just double click on that. And now uh, we want one thirty second corner radius for the head or the nose. Uh, let's go over here to um, notice we could change the inserts and all those all the interesting stuff there. But uh, as far as the holder goes, let's go ahead and make this. Uh, I guess we could leave it all the same pretty much. Go to parameters, and at this point we're going to go ahead and set uh, the feed rate because it's a finish. Let's set it to 0 0.6 thousandths of an inch. And we'll go ahead and make sure our um, spindle speed, we'll go ahead and set that to 1,000 RPMs. Or see, because uh, All right, and this, let's see, and one, the spindle speed. Oh, you know what? Uh, I apologize. I'm putting this in the wrong area. So we actually want to cancel that. All right. 
Okay, so um, I could we could actually still add them in there, but just go ahead and hit the green check mark at this point. And what we can do over here is find that copy and notice it. You'll find it. It says copy slot one. Let's change the tool number to tool number eleven so it doesn't uh, get confused when we apply this inside our program. So change the uh, tool number, station number, offset number to eleven. And the feed rate, um, if you didn't change it already in the last one, go ahead and change the 0.006, the spindle speed at 500. And we'll, again, we'll go 4,000 for the max spindle speed. Go ahead and hit the green check. And so now we'll go ahead and we'll simulate that. So go up here to the simulation, verify selected operations. Oh, uh, cancel that for a second. We want to see everything. So go ahead and click on select all operations. Now go ahead and you can click on that little icon up there. And if you want to rotate this so you get a better vantage point and hit play. And now we can see the, all the different processes, including that cut. And there it is. Now there's other things like cutting, uh, using the cutoff tool at this point, and um, we're gonna cover that in another class period, but that concludes exercise 10.